Hello, a very good morning to you. It's Sunday morning. Um, so we've got five hours of sewing this morning. And in fact, we've got more than just sewing this morning. We've got lighting, as you can see, and some new net exclusives too. Um, so, oh, and we've got new machines coming up later on as well. And then right in the middle, you've got two hours of me. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't prepped anything at all. So if you've got any ideas, come and let me know. So where in the world are you? What are you up to? Are you in bed still? Really? And I haven't, I haven't, this happens every time, doesn't it? And I, I do, I do look like a little bit of an, a, a technical numpty on a Sunday morning. Is Morag here? Morning, Morag. You're not on call today then. So if I go, she's on, oh, she's always on calls. Oh, she's had Christmas Day cancelled on Wednesday. You're working all over Christmas as well then, Morag. Oh, um, I've, I've, just, I've got just blank page now. Every week we do this. Well, I, do, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I, I was told two minutes and we'd be live and I get a notification and I've got, I've got nothing. If, if, I put, if I put it down over here somewhere and we talk about the early bird and I actually do my job instead of chatting, um, then the, um, the, the Facebook fairies come and fix it for me. It's, it's brilliant here. Morning, Pauline. Nice to have your company this morning. Look at our early bird. It's a bird. It's an actual early bird. It's the it's le needle bird. I don't know what's le needle bird. I think that it should, should be la needle bird. Um, but you've got a little hummingbird, which is a needle threader, and it's a thread snipper. And talking about thread snippers, we've also got some little squeezers for you as well. Um, these are really useful if you're embroidering, if you've got a, a few loose ends to snip off, if you want to get very, very close to your work. But they're nice and easy to use as well. I think you find with, with scissors or little snips, the difficult bit is opening them, isn't it? but these already kind of spring open for you. They're only £4.98. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. £4.98 and £3.95 postage, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, would you? Ridiculous. Um, but if you come back and order anything else throughout the course of the whole day, with you know, a sewing machine or a light, then we're not going to charge you any extra at all. Morning, Nora. I told you the Facebook fairies come. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, you're not a Facebook fairy, really. We have Joe, we have Kat in my ear, we have Claire here in just a second. Uh, oh, Pauline's off to work today. Morning, Sally. Um, who else have we got? Don't want to miss anybody. So, oh, it's Anne there as well. And Teresa and Pauline and Jackie. We've got Nora. And I'm... I'm I'm s I was just about to say that working's against the rule on a Sunday morning, but there again, you wouldn't be washing anything, would you? So uh, working's okay, that's got to be done, but just no housework, okay? That, remember, that, that is the Boris rule. Particularly now, when things are getting a little bit tighter, we're really tightening up on the housework restrictions. So you can't be any more, this is what Boris says, you can't be any more than five metres from a household appliance on a Saturday and Sunday morning. That's it, that's the rule. That's... Uncle Boris, not, not the Prime Minister. Yeah. Um, sewing machines are excluded from that. And, and washing machines, if you're washing fabric, I suppose. So th there, are, there are exceptions to the rule. Anyway, oh, morning, Hayley, as well. So what's the weather like where you are? What, is, what are your sewing challenges? Have you got any questions? I tell you what, have you got any of your native lighting? Because we want to know where you're using it. Send in pictures, if you like. And um, yeah, it, it is native. Like, I did tell you last week, didn't I, that we were going to d be doing some naked sewing because I got the word wrong. I know. So, so we're, we are true to form. We have naked lighting, lights with no clothes on. There you go. That's as close as it gets. Let me show you our brand new and exclusive. Do you know, seriously, the thing I love about these, it's, it's like, because I, I use native lighting, um, and when I first got it home, it's like I'd been wearing sunglasses to sew in. And you lift off the sunglasses, I can actually see everything. Um, but with these goosenecks, you can position them wherever you want them to be. So relaxing on the eye, 
don't take up too, take up too much space because you know it's the second in line to your fabric of course um, and it's got different settings on here as well so you can adjust it Claire's the expert so she'll take you through all of the whys and the wherefores and which one maybe you should be going for um, and we do have a little bit of a competition going on today or a prize draw I should say because one of you who orders a lamp today is going to receive a free light how's that <laughs> we, we do have a pretty graphic for you there you go well done joe um you can win the native lighting reverse lamp and brighten up 2021 with native lighting so if you buy any native lighting product today and that's whether you're ordering online or on the phone or after the show or whenever one of you lucky people will be in with a chance of winning that Oh, we're busy this morning, aren't we? Oh, it's lovely to have you with us. Um, we're busy on the early bird this morning as well. And a lot of you are buying multiples of these, and I don't blame you. Um, really affordable, little gift for yourself, how's that? Something useful, something to just keep in your sewing box um, or in your handbag, maybe, if you're sewing on the go. Um, but just really useful. Um, I've seen needle threaders before. I've not seen a bird one before, which is, which is quite cute. Um, shall I open it up? I want to show you what, what you're getting, don't I? Might you'll have to buy it then. I've, I've got a really big bill, big bill building up here. Fabric that I've been cutting into and the like. <laughs> right. Come here. Honestly, packaging. Glue. So, that's a needle thread alert. So that little hook there literally goes through the eye of your needle and then just like a needle thread on a sewing machine, then you wrap that around and then pull it through. You see, if I'd have prepped properly, I'd have had a needle and thread to show you how to do it. Um, and that covers over as well, So that's because that, that's quite spiky. And then that little bit in the neck is a blade. So then you can snip off your thread there and you could put a little, uh, a little lanyard or something through the end of it so you're not going to lose it or maybe a, a keychain or something like that. So remember you're getting the both of those for your £4.98. Right, that's, that's enough, I think, from me for a little while. Coffee about to go cold. Shovel was coming up for the rest of the day today. Okay, here we go then. So, in this hour, we have Native Lighting with Claire. Fabri oh, we've got some new fabrics. I've been busy. Um, fabrics at 9 o'clock this morning. We have sewing room tools at, uh, at 10 o'clock. And then Jane will be in the building at 11 and 12 o'clock. <laughs> we hope uh, with the Elna 680 back in stock the 580 not seen that one before really excited about a new machine that's an exclusive to Sewing Street and the 320 um, and then we've got more Elna coming up at 12 o'clock today as well so again if you've uh, if you've got any sewing machine questions or oh, everything's on pre-order as well so you can get in there ahead of the game before we go live with those shows and order that way if you will Oh, now then, uh, we haven't got it in the show, and I shouldn't, shouldn't really say, but the 570 is back in stock as well. Have a look on the website. I'll be having one of those. Oh, won't we busy today? Oh, got Liz and Rita and Andy and Susan and Sarah and Jenny and Lindsay and Michelle and Jan and Sandra and Pam and everybody's watching this morning. Um, Jackie's getting new glasses today. Congrats, Jackie. Be able to see us properly then, won't you? <laughs> okay, welcome along this morning <laughs> claire good morning <laughs> so, so i know you've been with us for an hour or so already <laughs> um before we talk about all the different lights that we have tell us a little bit about yourself and native lighting what's what's your history well i've been in the lighting industry for the last 10 years um so i've been in, in task lighting magnification also commercial lighting and in the last 18 months i launched native lighting and I've worked in lots of different sectors in the beauty sector, low vision, industrial, art and craft, but I've always had a real love for the craft sector. Yeah. And I always felt it was a little bit neglected in lighting and, and not very many new lights have been designed lately with all the new technology and the new look and design and different colors as well. So Native Lighting was launched and I took a lot of the knowledge that I'd had from customers that I'd met at exhibitions. And one of the big thing that they used to say to me was nothing ever had a long enough reach. So as you'll see as we go through, there's a lot of very long reach on a lot of the products that we've got here today. I love the look of them. Um, I've always 
I've always used oh. some kind of daylight lighting in my sewing area um, because it's in my home. So you've just yeah. got the standard wall lights, ceiling lights, you know, something very special. But they've been quite cumbersome. My, my, my first floor lamp, um, the, the stand was about that thick and then it had a big head on it. Yeah. These are so elegant. It's the floor lamp that I've got at the moment, um, but discreet as well. Because yes. on, on my sewing tape, I want my machine, I want my fabric. I, I don't want a big bulky light on there as well, but I do want the benefits of a light. Exactly. And that's really the whole um, new technology of LED has allowed the lights to be so much smaller because you don't obviously have to encase a bulb or anything yeah. like that now. So obviously the LEDs mean that, you know, we can go into much smaller housing for the lighting as well. And when we design the lights, we take into account the ergonomics of the lighting as well and how somebody's going to use a light, how they're going to be positioning it. Are they going to be able to clamp it? Do they need a desk? lamp? Do they need it on the floor? So sort of taking in, into account where somebody's going to be working and making sure that we've got the right lighting that works for, for, for people that they need really. And we've, we've got a, actually a small selection of what you actually have available. Um, talk us around our brand new and exclusive today. Okay so that one you've got there Debbie is called the Slim Lamp white because we do do it in different colors as well um, so this one is as you say very flexible so it's yeah. brilliant for putting around a sewing machine because you just wrap it around the machine so you can either have the light behind where you're working or in front of where you're working wherever you need to flood flood the light and it's a it's a, a squeezy clamp so rather than like the screw on clamps that one i don't know if you can maybe so you can see there so you just obviously open the, open the mouth up and then clamp it onto the side of the table or the desk wherever ever you're working and on the end there you've got the on and off button if you just touch that there and then if you keep your finger on it you've got the dimmer so then it dims up and down as well <laughs> so sleek um, I, I did ask Claire earlier on as well because I was actually playing with this it's quite um, <laughs> Therapeutic. It's quite relaxing, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not going to break anything inside here, am I? No, I'm they're all goosenecks. Around. And so obviously there's a very sort of stiff metal inside there as well. And then they're obviously all covered with the, with the plastic as well. So yeah. so yeah, no, you can, you can bend it to your heart's content into the position that you want it in. Now, exclusive to us until the end of January. So you're not going to find this one anywhere else. So if you want to get hold of it, I would be, would be rather quick with this one. Um, and it's £49.99, which I think, I'm right, this is the most affordable, one of our lowest prices. I mean, there it? is other, other ones that, that you have on the website, but the ones that we're showing today, that is actually the most affordable yeah. one. It's also USB, so you can obviously plug it into all the different options as well. So you've got um, a battery pack that you can plug it into, or you can plug it into just a, a normal plug that's obviously got the USB connection there you can also if it's you've got a sewing machine that's got a USB connection you can put it into that okay. or you can also plug it into a laptop so I know lots of people that are maybe sewers but also working from home you can use it to put over your laptop while you're working or your PC as well so it gives you more than just being a craft lamp that's yeah. another thing with a lot of our lights as well they're not just craft lights and we've made them look so they can be used in the home and they can stay out all the time so they can then obviously blend into the home decor as well so as you were saying before they you know always looked a bit clumbersome yeah. and, and big and bulky so that was another thing that we took into account when we were designing them is to make them not look like oh that's just my craft lamp over there I've got a lamp that can fit into the room and it gives me the purpose that I need as well and how long will the, the, the bulbs actually last for? Will, will they ever So with an LED light, you can't replace bulbs. And they say that it will last up to 40,000 hours. So if you used your lamp for about eight hours a day, that gives you about round about 20 years use. So <laughs> I think probably the designs will change a little bit in that time and people will want to I'll move on. I'll still be here in 20 years' time. <laughs> No, I love the design. I think it's, I think it's very clever. Um, I love the way that it's discreet. And even though you've got this very, very slim light, it really does make a difference. And, and like I said before, it's any kind of crafting. It's not just sewing. No. Um, and I, I, I love the way that you can have this anywhere you want on your sewing machine. I like to have mine over my shoulder. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm lighting up the areas my fabric's going in. Um, you can have it on the opposite side of the table, the side of the table, right over the top. It, it, really doesn't matter and with it being so portable as well mm. you don't it's not restricted just to the area that you have your sewing machine if no you a bit of hand sewing in the living room you can just 
clip yeah. it to the coffee table. And a, when a lot of ladies used to say to me at the exhibitions that, you know, sometimes when they'd go to a hotel or they'd go in a caravan or sometimes to somebody's house and their lighting just wasn't good enough, it meant that they could still take a lamp with them and still just have their little battery pack and sit there and still be able to do their work and still have a light as well. Do you know, that is such a good idea, not just for, for doing your work, but putting your makeup on in the morning. Yeah. Hotel lighting isn't generally not, very good. Not good, no. I mean, if you're on a plane for a long time, obviously not at the moment, but when we can travel again, you know, if you're going on a long haul plane and you want to be able to still carry on with your crafting, you can just have your little light with your little battery pack and then obviously you can, st you can still craft while, while you're on or the plane. Or if you're in the back of the car on a long yeah, journey. Yeah, in the car, on a train. So we've thought of everything. <laughs> <laughs> So it's slim and it's portable, and that would probably go inside a handbag, wouldn't it? Yes. If you've got a big <laughs> handbag, easily. most people have quite a oh, big handbag. Oh, we've got big handbags. It will fit perfectly in a craft caddy, or if you, I mean, yes. even with your, if you have a sewing machine bag, you have little slots on the sides and things where you could pop it into one of those because it is really compact. Yeah. Oh, if, you, if you've got a, a, a craft stand when we're allowed to do that kind of thing again as well. Yeah. You, have you, you can clamp so it onto your that. Batteries. Yeah. So you, your, your stand could be illuminated better than all the rest in the, uh, yeah, in the I mean, exhibition. You get those wooden um, cross-stitch stands as well. Yeah. So that clamp would obviously clamp really, really well onto those as well. And then just obviously bend the light over the area that you're working on. Yeah. And with the daylight technology, a lot of our lamps have got all different colours. So they've got warm light, cool light and daylight. But daylight is what you need if you're colour matching. Okay. So many people think that black is black and navy is navy. And, you know, you, you may have used, you know, quite a poor light one day and you may be making some cross stitch. And then the next day when you wake up and see it in the daylight, you haven't used the same colours. And then, yeah. you know, you're quite upset that that's happened as well. So if you have a lamp that gives you the daylight technology, then there's no need to worry about your colour matching. because it, it, it does make it. You're right with the blacks and the navies as well. I can remember going into um, a, a quilting shop a few years ago, massive big place, and I couldn't believe the amount of black fabric they had, different yeah. black fabrics. Yeah. And they do all look the same and, until you light them properly. So if you've got two different manufacturers of fabric and you put them together and they look the same, chances are when you wake up in the morning, they, they don't. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, we, we do that with, with daylight, don't we? How many times yeah. do you go into a, a fashion store and um, pick something up and take it to the window yes. to see what colour yes, it is? Yes, exactly. So it's like having you know the window open right over the area yeah. that you're sewing. Yeah. And you know, dark nights, dark mornings, we don't see very much daylight these days, so it's, no. it's quite nice to have it in your home. And the thing is, with, us with, using, with using a lamp, is you can craft for much longer in more comfort. As we know, a lot of crafters you know, can sometimes be working till the early hour of the morning and not know what the time is. Yeah. But it just helps to have a good light and it, and it helps your eyes to be much more comfortable. Yeah. I think you, you find it a, a lot more relaxing. Less yeah. You know what it's like if, you, if you've been reading or um, you're doing a crossword puzzle or a, a, a jigsaw or you can't quite see the small print properly, it can, it can feel quite draining yeah. after a while, can't yeah, it? Yeah, um, So g give it a try. I, I think you'll be amazed at the difference the correct lighting can make for you. So only launched today, first time you've ever seen this. It's £49.99. Again, if you've already got your um, native lighting, and or even if you took me on, on on what I was saying last week in your naked sewing today, then you know come and let us know this morning. Be interesting. Um, but let's let's have some of the feedback from you. There's hundreds of you have already bought some form of native lighting, so we'd like to like to know how you're getting on. Okay, next up. We're going to have a look at the magnifying lamp. Do you want to show us around the one that you have over there? Because they're yeah. the same, just different yes. colours, aren't they? Yes, we've got a white one and a black one. Again, this is another exclusive to, to Sewing Street till the, till the end of January. Okay. So this is um, one of the smaller magnifiers. We do, we do lots of different types of magnifiers, but this is actually one of the smaller ones, which, again, as you were saying, Debbie, not wanting to take up too much space on your, sew, on your sewing table. So this one, we've got, it's got 1.75 magnification on right. this one and if i just twist that round that you can see that you could the head is, is very flexible you can position it to wherever wherever you you need the controls are on the side panel here so you've got your on and off button there so you've got it on there then you've got your daylight warm light and cool light on there as well so you've got you range through the different colors and then there's a brightness level on each on each setting as well. Okay. So you go up to the brightest there, and then come down. So it's got a reach on it here as well. 
Magnification is 1.75 times. We have some that are three times, some that are 1.75 times, so just depending on, on what you need. But if you're working on really intricate work or details, also you can angle it at the sewing machine. If you're finding that you're struggling a little bit with seeing what's under the sewing machine, you can sort of angle it in front of you and so that you can then obviously put the sewing underneath you as well. Or if you don't have a needle threader on your machine, it's yes. going to be invaluable, isn't it? So be able to help with that. And so this clamps to the desk. So you've got a clamp here, but it's got you've got quite a deep clamp, so you can take probably about that that much of a depth onto the table but it will go to very small as well so if okay. you if the surface of your table is very small and it also has um, little pads on it so that it won't harm your furniture if you need to use it on like your dining table or anything like that as well okay and we can show you actually <laughs> I was told these would be all over the place <laughs> um, if you are beading um, these are tiny, aren't they? Um, not, not something that I do, to be honest, but I would imagine you've got a very slim needle and very slim thread, and I certainly can't see the holes in the middle of those beads. So that's where I think your, um, your magnification is going to be perfect. There you go, can you see those? <laughs> it has got a hole in the middle of it. Um, I'll tell you what else I struggle with as well, is the small print and instructions. Do you ever find yourself squinting um, when you're trying to read something? Oh, that is so much better, isn't it? <laughs> oh. So, because you tend to skip by a lot of things like this if you can't actually see them. So, yes, that's an awful lot better. Thank you very much. Um, I'll tell you what else, because I, I, I've got a magnifying lamp at home. Mine's a lot more cumbersome than this one with a like, big silver top on it. Um, and it really does get in the way. But I use it for painting my nails. Yeah. It, yeah. Does, it gets to the stage where you think you're ever so neat. And then when you do look, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the only thing. It does show up things sometimes. And you think, oh, really? I thought they looked OK until yeah. they went under the magnifier. <laughs> Um, but again, for colour uh, color matching, for an embroidery, yeah. um, uh, if you're doing any fine work, my, my dad used to have um, a model railway um, and he would paint the LNE or whatever it was down the side of the trains with a paintbrush that was like two hairs thick yeah. to get very, very fine lines underneath. Well, it was a magnifying glass that he had there to get it, to get it perfect. So there's a lot of reasons why with this one. And we've got the white and the black choices. Yes, again. got it in white and black. That's another thing with native lighting that a lot of people said everything's always white, so we do have quite a selection of products that are in black as yeah. well. So, and we have yeah. some other aluminium ones as well. So, we're trying to just make them look a little bit more sleek, and yes. we're sort of following like the Scandinavian design, really, to try and be sort of like slimmer, sleeker, but obviously give you the, the features that you need. And, and the black actually has been the most popular colour in, in in previous shows. It's fourth fourth show now, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's all yeah. The black has been. We sold out of the black, and um, so we had to get some more in for that. And this is a USB. Again, this one's USB, but it does come with a plug as well. This okay. one. So. So again, is, is this a lamp that you've already got? What are you using it for? Where are you going to find that magnification? Um, says <laughs> beads everywhere, uh, useful, maybe something that you've come up with and you use at your lamp for that, that we haven't even thought about yet, then do come and let us know. Okay, um, we have the Luminas coming up next. So the floor lamp is the one that I've got at home. I've got the black version. Um, but this is why. Now, I, I have it on... Uh, I went for one on the floor because I didn't want to take up any room on my sewing table whatsoever. And I have it behind me um, and either over my sewing machine or over the overlocker because you can move it around. These aren't heavy lamps at all. Um, so I do move it around the room. I, I should go for two really, shouldn't I? Yeah. Um, but it just means that if you prefer to light your machine from the front, you can have that light wherever you want it to be. I normally light mine around the back so I can bend this around so again I can have that lamp wherever. I want that to be and then you can kind of put it out the way if you don't want it there at all it doesn't I mean you, you could just stand it in a corner <laughs> it takes up no space whatsoever <laughs> and it comes with the remote control this one it doesn't does it? yes so we, we have the different light settings on this don't we we do so on this one it's actually got five uh, light settings so you've got got your standard cool light warm light and your daylight and then there's obviously some other lights in between and then each color has five brightness levels so there's 25 different color settings on this light oh 
Oh, so how do you know which one to choose? So it's really whatever you find works best for your eyes. You know, some people obviously maybe have some conditions with their eyes and sometimes the daylight is a little bit too much for them. So what they then tend to do is sort of keep, you know, going through all the lights until they find the one that is comfortable for them and works for them. So with 25 settings, you're always going to find a, a light that, that yeah. works with your eyes, really. And it may be that you need daylight at some stage of the day because it's ve it's very dull and you are colour matching but maybe it's you know it is nicer and brighter outside but you still just can't see where you're working so you can go for, for the warmer light but you just yeah. need light on the area so the beauty of the luminas is you've got all those different choices and you might not want to be using it for your craft but maybe have it in your lounge and just have some ambient lighting so then you can put it down to to, to the warm light so it, which is what you'd normally get like in, in sort of like your lounge lighting and it's quite directional isn't it so you know if, if it's getting on in the in the evening time or night time or the early in the morning time um, and you don't want to disturb anybody else in yes. the room yes. so as as the light goes down and it's getting dark but you still want to work I'm just lighting up the area that I want to light up <laughs> <laughs> and as you said you can change the light settings on the side there as well or with your remote control and something that a lot of people the feedback we got was that a lot of ladies used to say that their husbands used to complain that they'd have a light on and it was affecting the television yeah. um, and with this you can obviously bend it right down just to your lap if you're working in a chair on a lap so that nobody else is being disturbed by the light so you as you said it's very directional and you've got that light just down by where you where you're working so in that instance i'd get rid of the telly <laughs> 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 the light is affecting the telly, the telly's got to go. <laughs> but you can see again just how you can have this directed at any area that you want to have it. Um, and as I, I said before, I just love the look of them. I think they look so very, very stylish. So 25 light settings. Yes, So because you've got five colours, five brightness settings, so then obviously you've got one of each, and then yeah, so you get mm -hmm. the 25. And they've got sturdy bases, haven't they? They have. They're, they're yeah. not heavy lights. Yeah, they're not. They're not heavy, but obviously there has to be a bit of weight in the base to make sure they don't get knocked over or, or fall over and that. But you know, they come in a really quite a small box yeah. as well, and the surprised. base is obviously quite. You know, it, it's obviously bolted in when that comes, and you just un unbolt the base. Um, but yeah, so like if people you know want to move, say from the kitchen table to the lounge, it, it's not too difficult to just to just move them around from room to room, really. Yeah. So that's. Um that's important but it's also very slim as well so yes. I, I'm not going to fall over the base no no I'm it's very slim it's probably it. it's probably a couple of centimeters yeah. actually yeah. so it would probably even slide under a sofa if you know that if you wanted to keep it out the way a bit so that it wasn't sticking out that much yeah. as well yeah so I mean if, if you do want to move it out of the way if it is portable for you um, oh we've got so many of you here this morning I want to hear from those oh lots of you um, I want to hear from those of you who've already got your lights so where have you got it? So those of you that have already got your lights at home, where do you actually use it? What benefits have you found from it? Is it everything that you were expecting it to be or more so? Were you quite surprised at the difference that it makes when you are crafting or, again, reading? It's not just about the crafting, is it? Um, so do come and let us know. Um, we have a warranty with the lights, don't we? Yep, all the lights have a two-year warranty. Okay, and if you do want any more information about any of the lights, you can go to the Native Lighting website. Yes. Which is? Which is, um, so it's native-lighting.com. Okay. Don't. And also, if you don't want to do it that way, you can send any questions into the studio and they'll pass them on to me so that okay. I can then answer any questions. An important thing with the lights when you're deciding which one to buy is to think about where you're going to use it. That's yeah. really important because if sometimes you work on a table and sometimes you want to sit in a chair, then go for a floor lamp because you can obviously use that at both but if you're always going to be working in a table then go for a lamp that clamps onto the table yeah okay and and would you recommend all of the light settings or a single light setting or or, or does it, that's just personal choice it's it really personal matter, choice it? I mean daylight's obviously um, a very good one because that gives you natural daylight as if you were outside at 12 o'clock on a sunny day it gives you that same scenario so that's obviously what a lot of people use but as we were saying before sometimes that doesn't suit some eyes so that's why we've yeah. got all the other other colors for people to choose from so the desk version is that the same as, as I got to it's exactly well? the same got the remote control got all the controls on on the lamp as well it's just not not got the floor base and it clamps on with the table clamp 
and we have it available in black and of course we've got the white here for you as well. Now, I like the, the idea of the remote control as well um, because a lot of us aren't very mobile. So you may think, you know, it's a bit lazy having a remote control to switch a light on and off, but if you can't physically turn around yeah. or move or get to the light, it's just a press of a button. Yeah, and it's got lots of different lots of different things on, on there as well. So you've got, um, turn it around actually that way. So you've, you've got a 60 second timer, a 10 minute oh, okay. timer. You've got the um, the night light there, so you, the moon on there. So then that just lights the outside of the light, just if you needed to be able to sort of like see where the light is. You've got your dimmer settings here, 20%, 50%, 100%. Then all your, your colour mixes, your warm, your cool, and a mix of them. So, you know, if you sometimes think, oh, I don't really know which, which, which one to go through, but what you can do is you can then just um, obviously use the remote control and that will give you a few of the settings. I like the timer idea as well. Yes. If, um, if you think maybe you're, you're going to have a little bit of a nod off, then you're not going to be leaving the light on. Um, they don't take up very much power either, do they? LED no, they, they don't. They don't. They're, they're, the, the luminas are nine, nine watts. And also they don't really use, um, they're not high in energy and they don't generate a lot of heat. So um, LEDs don't generate the heat like the old fluorescent lights yeah. used to generate. Sometimes, you know, you'd be working under, under the bulb and you'd be sweating from the heat of, yeah. of the bulbs as well. I've so. burnt myself on bulbs before Have you? now on table lamps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I did, um, I melted the, uh, the side of one of my monitors because I had a, you know, the old fashioned spotlights yeah. with, with a metal top, got a little bit too close to my monitor and just melted it. Melted it, it. oh yeah. gosh. <laughs> Could have been dangerous, couldn't it? None of that with these lights. And these are plug-in again, aren't they? Yes, the um, Luminas are all mains operated. Mains operated, yeah. lovely, okay. Um, so, we've got one more light to show you that I'm actually very interested in. We've got a ring light. I've only seen ring lights before now in a studio. In a studio, yeah, and they have been used a lot in the past, I think, for, for makeup and for hair and things mm. like that. But with a lot more people working from home now um, and a lot of people doing much more online, so like bloggers, YouTubers, people wanting to do demonstrations and things like that, they are becoming a lot, lot better. I actually just use it in my office at home because it gives such a glow to the whole of the room. Yeah. So rather than actually having it on my uh, laptop or over my laptop, I just have it on the daylight setting and the room just is, is so, so lit up. It's lovely. And then... Obviously, I, I use it for my makeup as well. Now. <laughs> so. But if you do do any kind of, um, uh, say, blogging or YouTube or, or that kind of thing, yeah, a ring light is the most flattering on your skin. Definitely, you, you'll see a, a lot of the times in magazines, um, you can see the reflection of the rings in people's eyes. Yes, yes. So it's something that professional photographers have been using for donkey's years. And actually, that's, a, that's another point: is um, if people are making products that they're going to then sell, it's it's brilliant for photography as well. So yes. it's got lots of different uses so this is a lamp that can be can be used for for photography for f for filming because we'll go through in a minute all the apps and everything that you've got with it but there's so many uses for this and it they, has become they don't create shadow do they no they don't create shadow either so so depending on if you feel like you want to look a bit tanned or if you want it to look as you actually <laughs> do then you pick the, the color light can that I, you can want I look to 30 yeah <laughs> You do anyway, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> um, so how, how does it actually work then? How does it work? It. Okay, so you've got here you've got the um, on and off, on and off button there. And here is where you've got your different colours. So you've got your warm, oh, sun tan. Kill, yeah, <laughs> and, and your daylight there as well. And you've got brightness levels on each one. So you can dim it up and then dim it back down as well. You see here where you've got the mobile phone connected, you get three little holders. So if people who aren't wanting to do different types of filming and bits on one phone and mixing and matching when it gets a bit more sort of technical. So you can have actually three devices in there recording. Well, a, a lot of people will do a live Facebook at the same time as a live Instagram and you need two um, two phones for that. Two do phones you? for that. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, so, that, so that would obviously work, work with that. So you also get um, a remote control with it. So what this little remote control here does, um, it works the phone. 
so you don't have to worry about stretching your arm across to start the recording. It works the phone. Yeah, it Brilliant. works the phone. <laughs> so what you do is you download an app on yeah. on the phone. Is that and then, free? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. when you get when you purchase one of these, you get all the information um, telling you what to download, how to pair it, and how it all works. So you so you download that, and then you pair this remote control to your phone. So when you're ready to start, you'll just hit the button, and then that will either start your video or take the photos for you. Amazing. So you don't have to sort of worry about keep getting up and starting it, stopping it. <laughs> and it means it's less editing because you don't have to then obviously worry about all of that side of things as well. So it's really quite movable as well. And if people are sort of like maybe doing a craft demonstration, then you can actually use it for actually bringing, bringing the whole light down. So you just got a wing nut on here and then you bring it down like that. And so obviously you've, you'd have your phone the other way around. I've just got my phone in that way. And then you would use the remote control to, to start the recording. And then you can record whatever you're doing underneath. Brilliant. So even if you don't use it for recording, you can use the light like this because it gives such a big spread of light. Yeah. Just, just bend the light down and whatever you're working on, it just completely lights the whole area as well. It's also height adjustable. So um, let's put that back up there. Is, is, is that the stand creaking or your knees? It, <laughs> yeah, it's the button. It's, it's this button to make sure obviously it's tight. And so, yeah, I mean, even if you wanted to not actually have it as a floor lamp, it does go down quite a long way, even further than that, because there's another nut, nut further down. So you can have it on the desk as well, yeah. as low as you like. So you can have it as, as, as a floor, floor light or even just have it really low and then you can have it on the table, table so as well. So is this still daylight? At the moment, it's on daylight. daylight so um, I'm thinking as well, you know, not, not everybody's going to be doing filming and no. demonstrations and things like that. But you've got, because I've got a ring light in my sewing room. Have you? Um, it just gives a really lovely, like, blanket yes. lightness to the whole room. Like I said, with, with no shadows or few shadows. No, it does. It just lights up the whole room. Yeah. And, you know, when you walk in, sometimes you think, because mine's in the corner, I'm like, what time of day is it? Yeah. <laughs> because it just feels like you're walking in to, to a room which is like outside, like I said, at 12 o'clock on a sunny day. And it yeah. does just, just light the room up really well. And I, I tell you where else I've seen these um, quite a few times when, when I used to get my nails done when we were allowed um, in the beautician's yes. section where they do, uh, I don't know, eyebrows and waxing. I don't know what they're doing there. Yeah. Um, but they've got a whole load of, they're, they're just ring lights because obviously they think it's the best yeah. lighting to, to be able to concentrate. Yes, definitely. So there is other um, ring lights on the market. This one's the Eclipse ring light, but sometimes um, with other ones, you have to actually take the whole light apart and put different LEDs in to get all the different colors. So with this one, you just obviously, you just hit the button here and you, and you, and you go through all the different lights. So no need to actually take it all apart and change the LEDs. And it looks so professional as well, doesn't it? If you, um, when, when we are allowed to have people back into our premises again, if you have people coming around to your place, maybe you're sewing and selling, then it, it looks professional, doesn't it? And I'm, I'm thinking that all of these lights pointing at me, I bet you can't <laughs> see any of my wrinkles, can you? I want to take you back again to our brand new today and exclusive and most popular from the show as well. I'm not surprised at all. It's the most affordable light that we actually have on the show today. And it's exclusive with us at Sewing Street until um, the end of January. Um, I, I, love, I just love the bendiness. So you can, wherever you want to. <laughs> um, so if you are sewing, this is gonna squeak, so excuse, um, around the back or over the top or around the side or wherever you want the light to be, wherever's most convenient. Um, and it's quite um, sturdy. Yeah, so it's a gooseneck. It so doesn't feel it's flimsy though. No, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good strong wire in there yes. and obviously that, that's covered with the, 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 the plastic latex. And you know that this is the kind of pe um, the kind of thing that people want because you, you speak to them, don't yes, you? Yes. When I've we used to do fairs. When we used to do fairs all those years. Yeah, it's been quite sad this year because obviously, you know, feedback's key for, you know, listen to what the customers want. And as I said earlier in the show that it's been the long reach, you know, that people have said, I bought this lamp, but it doesn't reach where I want it to go. Mm. And that's why, you know, even if you don't need that long reach, you can put them in a knot so that you can yeah. you know have them have them you know or bend them down or, or sort of like create create the light where you need it really because you get spotlights 
that point in the general direction of where you want the light to go. Mm. But here you, you can have it, you know, exactly where if I, I'm cleaning out my sewing machine and I just need a light right down there so I can see what's going on inside and get all of the fluff out. Mm. You can see exactly where that needs to be. I think that's such a great idea. So again, oh, really busy for this one. Check out your baskets if you're ordering this one. And don't forget, one of you today that's ordering a native lighting project, product is going to win the reverse light. Now, these are available on the website. Those, uh, I think, so far have been our most popular light from native lighting. Um, so if you wanted to order one, then you can do. We need to go to sewingstreet.com to do that. Um, but one of you, again, is going to be the lucky winner of one of those. Um, Jane's messaged in and she wants to know if our new light would be good for her dad who does jigsaws. Yes, definitely. So again, just think about where he does his jigsaws and um, is he, does he going to be doing them on a table or does he sit on a chair with a lap with, with a sort of a tray and just think about which one. But yes, absolutely brilliant for jigsaws. Not only does it make the sort of pictures jump out if they use a daylight setting, but also it just, you know, shows that there's no shadows on that. So it's easier to match the pieces yeah. as well. Yeah. So, so does that mean you can do jigsaws quicker? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> My mum used to do jigsaws. She had them um, like, like on a mat that rolled up so she could put them away when they weren't quite finished yet. Yeah. Um, and infuriating when one piece is missing, is it? She used to get them from the library. And not, not always with the pieces. There. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, but it's, you know, we're a sewing channel. These are so much more than, than just sewing. I mean, there's so many people who sew and knit and embroider and bead and paper craft all together anyway mm. um, but I love the portability um, and the way that the light is directed at where you want to be directed not like a spotlight no um, it gives you it gives you that so obviously depending on which lights you go for some lights have got a wider spread of light than yeah. others so it's lots of things to think about when when you know you just like but if you know that you've got a sewing machine and an area that you just need the sewing machine the Lumina or the slim lamp is, are, the, are, the, are the best yeah. ones for that so I went for the um, the freestanding one purely because my, my I've got quite a big sewing table and it's completely taken up and I use all of the area. So no matter where I clip this, it's going to be in the way. Um, but with the standard, I can I can move it up to have over my shoulder yeah. um, as if I'm shining a torch exactly where I want it to be or around the side of the machine. Um, and I can move it as well. So I can go from my sewing machine table to my overlocker table. Here we are, look. That's on my overlocker table. <laughs> but again, I can point, if I'm threading, and I mean, I've, I've got an air threader, so it's easy anyway. Um, but if you're threading an overlocker, then again, you can get that like right in there and see exactly where you're going to be putting those threads. Um, but even, you know, behind the sofa, behind the bed, when, uh, it, when you're just reading in an evening time, it's, mm. it's, the, it's the daylight aspect for me. I find it so much easier on the eye and so much clearer. If you're embroidering and you want to make sure you've got exactly the right embroidery thread, or you're cross-stitching or something like that. Um, but with the luminar, luminar lights, yeah. um, having so many settings, like you said before, there is, there is a light setting for everybody. Yes. Um, and obviously, um, as you're sometimes getting a bit older, you have eye conditions and sometimes people find that the, the daylight is a little bit too harsh for them. So that's why having the cool light, the warm light and, and some lights in between as well. Then people can go through and decide which one works best for them, yeah. really, as yeah. well. Whereas a lot of the products tend to just have some, some of them on the market, just have the, um, the daylight setting. Um, some of us do just have the daylight setting, but then obviously we've, we've gone for some that have got all the colours as well. So it's providing a service for absolutely everybody. Um, Christine has asked for the length of the clip light. Would you like it in inches or centimetres, Christine? You're getting it in inches. <laughs> Unless you know. I, I can know. There's so many of them. It's trying to remember <laughs> which one okay. is which. It's... 34 and a half inches from the very tip down to the clip. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be any height you want it to be, basically. If you, if you want it to be six inches tall, there you go. Just squish it down. <laughs> now, with this lump, we're down to single figures. OK, so it's make your mind up time. Brand new for us today. When we sell out, we'll be able to get any more of these in. <laughs> 
Um, not for a while. <laughs> All right, OK. Well, there you go. I think, it, well, the whole point of bringing it to Sewing Street was to see if we thought it was something that was going to be popular. I think we I already think know. Popular. And also, we can get it in black going forward. Oh, okay. So that might be something that we will look at doing as well. So, so again, if, if you want to order, then check out your baskets for this one, please. Um, and don't forget, with every single order, you're going to be in with a chance of winning with the reverse light as well. So you don't have to do anything, you just have to pre uh, place an order. Um, and you can brighten up 2021 with native lighting. If oh. you turn that round, Debbie, you can show how the colours change. So we do have these available on the website. Um, if you wanted one, we just weren't featuring them in the show. Um, but why, why does this happen? Why does the, why does the light change? Again, so this is so that you can have a, a light that's quite versatile for use for other things as well. So people use them as bedside lights, um, they use them as children's night lights. If you have a power cut, you've got them charged up and then you can just use them for things like that. People use them outside in the garden. Um, so many different things that you, could, you, that you can use them for. But so if you switch it over, you get warm light and you switch it back, you get daylight. So you can use it for crafting as well. You can use it if you're working from home by your laptop. And you can adjust the lighting as well. Yeah, so you just run your finger along the top for your um, for dimming. And where's the handle? It's got a handle somewhere, hasn't it? There we go. It's got a little, little handle as well, look. So, um, oh, now that has so far been our most popular lamp. It may be overtaken today by a, a brand new and exclusive. Um, but I, I love the idea of a nice light that you can have outside. Yes. So obviously not to leave outside, but if you're outside yeah. on, on a nice um, evening and uh, in fact we were outside last night in our hot tub and we had them around, <laughs> which we hired for Christmas, which I'm really pleased we did now. <laughs> so, and yes, then lovely little lanterns to have outside as well. What a lovely, and I like the way you can hang them up as well. Yes. Yes, we've got them hanging on our marquee bit just as, as oh. at the side. So. That's um, such a good idea. It's our only rechargeable one, actually. That is such a good idea for those of us that, you know, when we are uh, able to have more people around in the garden and you've got to, you'll have to have a heater out there in the winter, yeah. but at, yeah. least, at least you can have some nice light outside there. Um, so that's one, 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 look, can't talk. One lucky person is going to win one of these. 63.99's worth. All you need to do is to make a purchase. There you go. So, oh, so if you if you purchased a lamp at forty nine ninety nine, with the chance of winning a lamp worth sixty three ninety nine, you don't don't hear that very often, do you? Morning dawn. Oh, is it the Lumina we're supposed to be measuring? <laughs> the floor one or the desk one? <laughs> oh, both. <laughs> Honestly, you lot. Right, full length like that. Or just the, oh, just the gooseneck. Oh, okay. Who wants to know this? Right. That, that thirty-seven inches down to the down to the switch. Right. So this is probably the same. It's probably the it? same. Yeah. So, but, but, but we'll, if you want it measuring, you get it measured. Right. Let me know what else you'd like measuring. Thirty-seven inches. There we go. Honestly. Very demanding, our <laughs> audience, this morning. <laughs> um, oh, we've had a message on Facebook from Isabel, have we? Um, can't see you, Isabel. She'd like to know, she still enjoys her embroidery, but she's got slightly fading eyesight, so which lamp do you think would be best for her? It depends if she sits in a table or if she sits in the chair. So right. um, if she sits at a table, I would suggest either this ma the, this magnifier or another one that's on the, on the website, which is called the Chameleon Desk Magnifier, because that's got three times magnification. So that's okay. quite a high magnification. But if she is, or she could use that new, this new slim one that you've got there. But if she's in a chair, then go for the floor version. Okay. 
Um, so it depends. If you want, if you wanted magnification as well, then it's going to be a desk lamp. Yeah. Um, the what was it? One point seven five. This one. Yes, but then there's also the chameleon desk magnifier on the website for Sewing which Street, is which is three times magnification. And with with all of the lamps, whether you're going to go for the standard or the um, the magnifying lamp, um, you've got the different settings of light on those as yes. well, haven't you? Yes. So if she is struggling with her eyesight, then it's good probably to go for one of the ones with all the different light settings to obviously find one that suits her. OK, so just have a think about where you're going to use it, table or floor. And then it really doesn't matter which one you want. Do you want a magnifier or do you not want a magnifier? So you've got lots of choice. Um, Joe's asked for the charge time on the reverse lamp. Do so, we know? Yeah, so if you have it, so when how long it lasts once it's charged, I assume yes. she means by that. So if you have it on the highest setting, it will last for four hours. But if you have it dimmed down, then you, you're going to have double that, so you get eight hours. OK. So I'm just, I'm just, just purely playing there. <laughs> um, any more questions? Come and ask them. We've only got about 10 minutes left on the show. So do you know when you're back again? Uh, 29th. Oh, OK. So I said um, if anybody gets money for Christmas <laughs> and they'd like to get themselves a nice lamp that they've been thinking about. So, yeah, back on the 29th. Um, well, the new and exclusive, um, you, you won't be bringing that one back. Cause has it actually sold or is it about? So we've got one left. Um, so if you want it, you need to check out pretty quickly for that one. Oh, well done for you. If you haven't used daylight lighting before now, honestly, it makes such a difference to the way that you work. You'll find it more relaxing on your eyes, you'll find it more relaxing on your head, and you'll be able to see what you're doing better. Um, it's something I, I, I really do feel very strongly about. If, if you sew as much as I do, which is like every day of my life, um, can't do much about your neck ache, I'm afraid, um, but certainly eye ache. I find it, it really makes such a difference. Where are you sewing at the moment? Where are you crafting? Where are you reading? And what's your lighting like? Because we've, we've got very pretty wall lights and they've, they've got nice little shell shaped lampshades. And oh, we've got, we've got, <laughs> yeah. Um, have you got fluorescent lights? Have you got, have you got a chandelier? Rubbish for sewing. <laughs> Looks amazing. Rubbish for sewing. Um, just, just give it a try and see what a difference it's going to make to you. I mean, you've been working in lighting for ten years. You must get some amazing feedback from people. Yes, definitely. I mean, people sort of a lot. A lot of ladies have said to me, "I thought I had to give up my sewing because I just oh. couldn't see anymore." And they've said, "You know, since I've had one of your lights, I, I can do it again." And yeah. so it's nice to get that type of feedback from people. Yeah, and I, I think also people will be thinking, "Well, I've got a table lamp. That'll do." Yeah. You know, it's only 30 quid and it's right next to my sewing machine and it'll be fine. It's the colour, isn't it? It's yes. the whole daylight thing to me that it really does make a difference. I can see things better. Definitely. You can, you can see things better and you, can, and you can see them more clearly. They're much more crisp as yeah. well. And, yeah. and it makes it a little bit more enjoyable, I think. So sometimes I think people are like struggling with their eyes and it's like, you know, what? Oh, just, just, oh, I'll give up. I can't do it. And then people have said, you know, it, I can carry on for much longer in yeah. more comfort as well. Yeah. Oh. Um, Isabel says thank you. It's a pleasure, Isabel. No, any, any questions that you have, come and ask them. And in fact, if you've got any questions after the end of the show, Claire, you were saying that if people still want to email in, we'll pass those yes, questions definitely. on Yes, definitely. Any questions. Or if not, you can send them directly to the Native Lighting website as well, and that they'll be answered there as well. OK, and again, there's, there's more information for you there on that website as well, if you need any. Oh, Jenny. Oh, come on. It's, it's almost nine o'clock. It's about time you got up, really. How long have you been awake? About th three hours? Oh, mind you, you've got a coffee, so you're OK with the coffee. Get, get Alex to make you breakfast in bed this morning. You deserve it. Um, yeah, we, we did warn Claire, because it's the first time you've done a Sunday, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, we, <laughs> people watch in bed. Uh, yeah, that, that's what they do nice. on a Sunday morning. <laughs> so, yeah, with, with their... Um, Negligees and nightgowns and pajamas and frou frou slippers. That's that's our that's our audience. That's what we're <laughs> <laughs> all sitting there hoping for a bit of naked lighting this morning. <laughs> right, um, the ring light. Quickly before we finish, with um, th this one. If I mean, do you do you do social media and stuff? Are you filming? Are you demonstrating? Lots of us are these days. Um, we're down to single figures for this one as well now. Okay. 
So yeah, give us a, a brief a, talk a, around. A, a brief just talk just around this yeah. one. Okay, so so you've got all your controls along here. So you've got your on and off button there, and then you've got your different light settings here. So you you scroll through your warm, your cool, your daylight as well. Brightness levels for each setting as well. And it is movable, so the head can come down. So if you want to light an area that you're working on, then you can light that area as well. And if you want to maybe record a tutorial or anything like that, so you obviously have your phone in here, do the recording. And what you do is you have a little remote control that you pair with your phone. So you download an app on your phone and then the remote control operates your phone. So you don't have to keep worrying about sticking the hands in the way and anything like that. So it's all inside the packaging, what you need to download and how you pair it all. And But it's great, um, you know, when we get back to all being able to have our families together, it's great for selfies. Nobody has their arms stuck oh, out yes. anymore as well. <laughs> so um, it's easy enough just to sort of like move the head up and up and down. So you just undo the nut and then tighten it back up. And it's also height adjustable as well. You've got another wing nut here and you can just obviously drop it down. It does go down a bit further than that as well and you know down to quite low where you could actually have it on a table as, as well as having it on the floor but it's great for just lighting up a room yeah. um, as we said earlier that you know the daylight technology gives you the feeling that you're outside at 12 o'clock on a sunny day and it just makes you feel better um, yes. instead of being in a dark dreary room as well it makes oh, you how many times if, if you're an, anything like even yesterday um, we went and taught the we have to take our dog for very short walks. She's had an operation on the leg. Um, and we were about to go out for a second walk. And Gara said, it's getting a bit dark now, isn't it? This Maybe we'll leave it till tomorrow. It was two o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And the number of times that, oh, I'm really tired. It's five o'clock. It's, it's quite deceiving, isn't it? it? It makes you feel tired as soon as it starts getting dark. Yeah, definitely. So to have the daylight in your own home. Yes, definitely. Stay awake for longer. Um, Ellen's asking if you can attach an actual camera to the ring light. It depends on the size. Um, it, it will take the weight because it's quite a strong one here. Um, but some cameras are quite large. But if it's one of the smaller ones, then 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 it will. But the actual sizes are on the website of what it what it will oh, take. Okay. I think. Yeah. And will you need a Bluetooth connectivity on the camera? Um, so yeah, because if, if there's Bluetooth on the camera, then you'll be able to, to pair the remote control to the camera. Okay. But if not, you could still use it just without the yeah. remote control. Yeah. And it's great for photography. You know, if people are making things that they're selling, you know, the way it lights everything up, no shadows on the yeah. photography as well. So. Um, Chris is asking what the best light is for hand sewing. I think, again, it depends where you're hand sewing, doesn't it? Yeah, just, just, just think about if you're going to be sitting in a chair or if you're working at a table. Um, so the Luminas are probably the, the go-to. Um, then obviously floor for, for chair, table version for, for at a table. But then obviously if you want to go for a slightly cheaper version, then obviously at, if it's at a table, then we've got the Slim Lamp, which mm. is the special we've got today. That's gone there. Ah, okay. We've sold out of that one. Floor lamp, I'd say. That's the one that I've got. I'd definitely go for floor lamp. Um, oh, now, lots of, oh gosh, lots of messages on Facebook as well. Um, I'm not getting all these messages. I've got lots, lots of people are watching you, but I've not actually got messages. Well, Andrea's ordered the ring light anyway. Um, hopefully it's going to solve her lighting issue. I hope so. She says, thank you for bringing these to air. Oh, you're very welcome. I enjoyed coming um, to Sewing Street. Which, oh, which clamp would be best to clip onto a sofa? I'd go for a floor lamp. I wouldn't clip on a... Unless there is an actual area. If there's an area that she can can clamp onto, then I'd probably say the slim lamp would, would work for that. Oh, very nice. Ah. Oh. <laughs> There could well be there could well be some more. I think we just need to check how many you had on your system because there could be some oh, okay. more that might not have been checked in. So so if if we take your arm and kind of do that with yeah. it, yeah, okay, yeah. we may have some more. <laughs> so that'll be the 29th if it's yeah. back again. Lovely. So just in time for your New Year's resolutions, then, isn't it? Mm? Um, 
Well, thank you for this hour. Thank That's you for having me. So quickly, hasn't it? Has. it? <laughs> yeah, it's gone and really quick. Got a really bit of a rush going on at the end here. So again, go through to place your, place your order and go through to check out as quickly as you can to make sure that you don't miss out. Um, if you do come through with any more questions, then we will pass those on to Claire after the show, so she'll get back to you at some point. But well done if you've got one of your lamps today. If you haven't ordered yet, maybe you're just you know watching a bit later on, um, you will be in with a chance. Any time that you order any of the native lighting lights today, you'll be in with a chance of winning one of the reverse lights, which is worth £63 something. So that's worth it, isn't it? Right, we have fabrics coming up in the next hour. We've got workroom tools coming up after that. And then we've got two hours with back in stocks and brand new sewing machines coming up later on as well. So go and put the kettle up. I'll see you again in a couple of minutes. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, my name's Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. Okay, I got into sewing through my grandma. I used to sit and watch her. Um, she was a dressmaker and I started off making toys and then I was dressmaking myself. And from then I've done homeware and children's wear and all sorts of different things in between. Um, I would say my top tip is to be kind to yourself. It's only fabric at the end of the day, and if things do go wrong, then you've always got your quick on pick. My claim to fame is that in 2012, I was a VIP driver with the Olympics, and I met some really interesting people who were very nice, and I'm hoping that I'll meet some very interesting and nice people on Sewing Street too. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, my name's Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. 
Okay, I got into sewing through my grandma. I used to sit and watch her. Um, she was a dressmaker. And I started off making toys and then I was dressmaking myself. And from then I've done homeware and children's wear and all sorts of different things in between. Um, I would say my top tip is to be kind to yourself. It's only fabric at the end of the day. And if things do go wrong, then you've always got your quick on pick. My claim to fame is that in 2012, I was a VIP driver with the Olympics and I met some really interesting people who were very nice. And I'm hoping that I'll meet some very interesting and nice people on Sewing Street too. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Right, welcome back again. Now we've got a couple of hours of me. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of sewing. If you have any requests, then come and let me know. Um, and so we've got lots of fabrics and books in this hour. And then in the next one, we'll have some tools as well. So we, we could carry on sewing into the next hour, if you like. Um, I've got your messages now, yes. Jen, what have I told you about household appliances on a Sunday morning? Naughty corner. Uh, more rag, your husband can go near the machine, that's fine. It's just, it's just you. It's just us sewers that aren't allowed anywhere near household appliances. Um, shall we have a look at something brand new? And we've got a whole bundle with everything in it. I've, I've got mine at home. I didn't have time to do any more than I have done, but I love working with this fabric. So let's shimmy over here a bit. And I'm going to show you the panels first, because this is the bundle including panels. Now then, this one I used for the pockets on my pinny, pinny pockets. Because they're actually quite a nice size, you know, I can, I can get stuff in there. Uh, it's nice, isn't it? Because well, I was given the fabrics and, and, and asked, can you make something? And I had, to be honest, I had lots of big ideas, but not a lot of time. So, but I was thinking, garden. Um, I've, <laughs> I've put my hanging baskets in bags. Why do they do those frost bags in white? I look like I've got big snowballs all around the house. They should be green. Um, so I know we're not going to be in the gardening at the moment, but we can be all prepared and ready for a designer garden in the springtime. Um, so I've made aprons. It could be a gardening apron. I was thinking about doing... Um, um, a, knee, a kneeling cushion for the garden, um, storage boxes, caddies to keep my tools in. And these are all seed packets. Um, so if you're going to give the gift of seeds, wouldn't that be a lovely idea? If you've got a birthday or something coming up for the gardener, make little gift pouches with, um, with little gardening tools and things like that in. So, oh, Patricia got soaked this morning. Where are you, Patricia? She had hailstones this morning. Oh, in the Isle of Wight. Oh, gosh. Oh, keep it down there. 
Now the panels are available on their own, so I'll take you through that later on, but this is for the complete bundle for everything, okay? Now this is the second panel, and this you're going to hang up on your wall. It's a big one. There we go. So I would recommend that you get a little bit of wadding to go um, as uh, behind it and a um, bit of backing fabric and maybe a pole to hang it up with. And what it says, fill a bag for five, this is uh, five dollars, isn't it, that one? Carrots, peppers, beets, potatoes, cabbage, beans and squash. And then we've got, oh, it's nice. I love the colours on these as well. And sunflowers. Um, it's down the bottom. Bucket full of corn. And then you've got the three squares on the top as well. So I think a really very simple wall hanging, a very simple little quilt project there. So that would be, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, there you go. <laughs> oh, I'm having, I'm having a fully calf coffee. I get through a lot of coffee, but it's normally the decaf, so I can't guarantee what it's going to be like for the rest of the day. Right. Um, these are also by the half metre. So if you wanted to make... Um, oh, what about caravans? I just love the colours of these. They look so summery. Um, so little curtains, I'm thinking half curtains would look really nice. Um, Tablecloths, things for the garden little tomatoes, onions, there's loads of details in there. Um, or little, little curtains for your Wendy house, for your she shed or your he shed in the garden. But even kitcheny type of things, you know, your oven gloves and baking things, I think they look so nice. Um, so that's that one, let's have a look at this one. These are lovely as well, it's like, um, like you've gone to market for all your fresh veg. But aren't the colours happy and uplifting and gorgeous? We've got peppers and oh, kale and artichokes and thank you. <laughs> Coffee's arrived. Don't know why I whispered. Thanks for the coffee, Joe. No don't, don't know why I'm whispering. You could hear me anyway. Um, this one I love as well. This is one that I made the apron out of because um, you've got a smaller design on there. And then similarly, move you out of the way. Um, we have this one. But a larger print on this one. They all go so well together. So yeah, garden Neela would be nice. Is that on Facebook? Because I've seemed to have frozen again. I've got my last message from Chris. Oh, it's my iPad, isn't it? It's not, not working properly. The Facebook fairies come to the rescue again. Um, this is the final fabric. These are all again available by the half metre as well as in the bundle that we see there. What am I doing there then? Swipe down. Swipe so down. Closes it up right. Up the edge. Okay. And then divide so it. That, mm, all right. No. no. Bear, bear with. Look at this lovely fabric. <laughs> <laughs> I've frozen Facebook completely. Oh, I sit and down there and then pressing that and then, oh, here we go. Thank you. Oh, changeable out there, Alex. It's one day it's pouring, next time it's blue skies. Um, garden Neela, lovely. Yes, I think that would be a nice idea as well. I like to keep up with your messages. I'm sorry about that. Um, so we have the one, two, three, four, five fabrics and two panels for £57.99 or you can go just for the panels on their own at 9 99 those are and we do have all of those fabrics available by the half meter so if you are making something larger out of this then um, then they they kind of come all joined up um, if you just want to go for the fabric we have a two and a half meter bundle so that's all these five pieces but without the panels so if you prefer to do that then that's all of those for your £37.99. Oh, I just love the colours on these. It's been so grey and dull, both in the, in the weather and the news at the moment. Um, nice to put a little bit of colour into our life, isn't it? Mm. 
gardening tool bag. Still, still not doing it. There we go. Under there. Do that. Doing just as instructed. Yeah, garden tool belt, cushions for garden furniture. Be nice to get out out into the garden again, wouldn't it? Okay, so those are all new for you today. Um, now, last week when I was sat here sewing on my Todd, um, we had a bit of a challenge, and one of the challenges was a reversible tote bag, which I got round to cutting out, but we ran out of time before I got round to sewing it. So I'm kind of thinking that um, we'll carry on and do a reversible tote bag with, with these fabrics in a bit, but we've got more to show you first. Um, now then, w one thing I would say about all of these, if you're going to go for the bundle, all together they're very much the same kind of colour, they're the same kind of print. So that can look very confusing, can't it? So we've also put together a mixer bundle for you. They're all, oh sorry, by, they're by the half metre, um, but now you can choose which fabric you're going to use to break this up a little bit. So you can put tangerine in between two very complicated patterns and it just breaks it up a little bit. And if you wanted two metres, you can go for two metres, you just need to order four. Uh, not four metres, four half metres. These are by the half metres, so they come all joined up if you wanted to go for larger pieces. And honestly, I think any of these would go. So the yellow, this is the sunshine, and they're all textured blenders as well, so it's not just a plain colour. That goes so well with, oh, particularly bananas. That goes really well, doesn't it? Really picks on that out with any of the fabrics, just goes so well. So again, if you're putting two prints together that look quite confusing, put a plain fabric in the middle of them and then both of your pr prints are going to stand out. We have chartreuse, which again, there's so many colours in this fabric goes with any of them. You don't have to order this with the fabric, by the way. I'm just thinking that if you are going for the whole bundle, I think it needs something to break it up just a little bit. If you wanted to order these on their own, then of course you can do. They're only £3.99 and buy the half metre. Buy the half metre. Oh, that's a nice one. Doesn't that look lovely with the blue? That really brings out the blue in the sky on the seed packets, doesn't it? That goes really well. So that one we're calling Sky. Again, they're £3.99 over half a metre. Or how about the pink? Brand new one, this one. That's Fuchsia. It's really lovely quality as well, 100% cotton. And it is 112 centimetres wide. And then onto the lilac. See, oh, it's, um, it picks out your beats, doesn't it? This one. Hmm. Every single colour, I mean, cats specifically pick these colours out to go with every single colour. You can really see the shading on this as well, can't, can't you? Hmm? So cat producer has been in the warehouse going through all of the colour samples, meticulously picking out every single colour that she found in here and then finding you another colour to go with it. Now maybe it's a standing out look. That's nice. So I'm, not, I'm really, I'm really disappointed in Facebook today. It's taken ages to get your messages. Janet says the material is gorgeous. I think it is as well. I think it's, it's really lovely. That's, um, that's magenta. Um, do you know, if I was going to go for another fabric, I think I'd go for this one. Mm. But, oh, we've only got three metres of that one left. So if, if you, next person to order six, it's all gone. Oh, get that one, that one quickly. If you're going for the bundle, go for that one as well because they go really well together. Um, right, let's show you some more. Are you ready for this? Were you around in the 1960s? This is what it was like in 1960. That's what our life was like. But it, it was a little bit more like that. Do you remember that? <laughs> Look at the colours in here. Now, you do need to go for some planes to dilute this down a little bit. But isn't that amazing? It reminds me of butterflies somehow. Oh, no, oyster shells. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, what are you going to use this one for? Oh, I think small doses. 
with this one. I'd maybe have it as a, a, a centerpiece on a, on a cushion, but then have a nice thick planar border around it, and then maybe use it again for uh, some binding or to make a flange around the edge of the cushion. I think that would look really nice. So if you've got a plain room and you just wanted to add a little bit of a, a pop of colour into it, um, then this is going to be ideal. It doesn't come much more colourful than this one, does it? Gosh, that is gorgeous. And it's only £5.99, that's for half a metre, and by the half a metre, of course, means that um, you can get as much as you like in one long piece. Oh, imagine curtains made out of this. Oh, a shirt. Yeah, John, John Scott. A John Scott type of shirt with this one, definitely. <gasps> so pretty um, Amanda's message hi Amanda she's morning and everyone <coughs> excuse me she says, loves the beautiful fabrics mm. I'm glad you're liking them um, should we do some sewing should we do that I'll fold those up later on okay that and that that and that that and see I've got to refresh this every time that's really annoying oh the magic eye pictures remember those yes definitely <laughs> Jenny's well, your eyes are funny anyway Jenny so no no change there <laughs> right let's do this I do know Jenny I'm not just insulting random people on Facebook although I do sometimes um, oh, now the Mega Bundle, we are very limited in stock. <laughs> We've got four left. But you can still buy these individually. So I don't know which ones to go for. I haven't got very much of that. Can I use a plane to go with this? No, it's reversible, so I want patterns. So I'm talking to myself now. Um, I think that one, because then this is very different to the other side so I mean it's going to be reversible you don't want two bags that look the same do you so and I think we'll have quite a soft bag I'm not going to use any um, fusible fleeces with this one because then maybe we could make it a bag that you roll up and put inside a pocket and that could be one of the pockets that's a good idea isn't it right okay so that's going to be that and then <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We've got a little bit of this fabric left, so I'm going to make the handles out of that. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> oh, right. <coughs> Are we having a busy day today? <laughs> I'm just getting the iron out now. <laughs> just, I'm just going to plug this in can't plug it in I've got no space I'll finger crease this <laughs> oh yeah plugs are right next to me down here love the way they put the plugs on the floor and then I'll need something to iron on as well won't I <laughs> Okay, so I've already cut out this, like it was planned. Um, while I'm just waiting for that to heat up, let's cut out a couple of handles from this one. Because I'll need to iron those as well. <laughs> Ironing mat was right next to me where it should be. Right. Oh, it's going, it's going so well today, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay, so. Would you like measurements? Oh, the mega bundle of these are sold out now. Uh, but I'm using... Oh. <laughs> All over veggie tossed on white. Okay, so that's four inches wide and 21 inches long. That's just for the handle. The actual bag I am going to make let me chop this selvage off and see how big we can make it. So let's make this. And square this up at the bottom. Oh, 
Oh, look, we need a new blade on that one. Right. So that's these are all going down there for now. And then I think we'll have this about that big. So widthways, there we go, we'll have it that big. I'll measure it in a minute. Scenic Veggie Garden, this one. And so that one is 13 and a half inches that way, and I think we'll have it 16 inches this way, which is there, because I think that's like quite a nice size bag. Oh, <laughs> four times lucky. Right, so we've got that, we've got that. Then we need to put the pocket on the front. So I'm just going to put that onto one side. So top of that we can double over twice. So, in fact, we'll do the side bits first because that's neater. So I'm just going to fold those in once. And this one. And across the bottom. So this, I mean, I, I, think, I think I might line pockets. Now the panel's nine pounds ninety nine. You've actually got a fourteen pocket, a fourteen fourteen pocket potential. <laughs> um, let's fold that over there. A lot of you buying multiples of these as well. Now with the panels, I'm assuming the panels come as single panels, not on. So if you buy two panels, you'll get two panels, not one piece of fabric, which is the length of two panels, if that makes sense. Right. Then while we're here, I'll iron the straps, so I'm not picking the iron up every five minutes. So that goes to the centre, fold down the middle, like so. Then long edges to the centre again. If you're just making um, a reversible bag, then I, I might put a little bit of interfacing or something to make it a little bit firmer. But if you're making something that folds away, then it um, needs to be quite soft, else it's not, it's not going to fit inside the pocket. Um. Oh, Sarah's asked for the code for the seed packet fabric. It is on your screens right now, Sarah. All right. Is that the panel? Oh no, that's the fabric, isn't it? Sorry. That's that. And fold in half. Tossed meaning that when the designers are coming up with the designs, um, they when they've got them on screen, they literally toss the print so it goes all over the place. If you see a print that's tossed, it's non-directional. All right, let's move these. Right, so there. And then in half again. And then to the centre again. And then I'm going to sew down both sides. Right, so I think that'll do for the ironing at the moment. So I better put that somewhere where I'm not burning a carpet. Because I'm never hearing the last of that one. <laughs> Move that out of the way. So I'm going to sew down both sides. Using the 680 which 
would work an awful lot better if it was plugged in. So, <laughs> um, am I being a diva? <laughs> because, because when the needle came over, uh, when the needle, when the machine came over to me, I couldn't figure out why the needle thread wasn't working on it. It's because there wasn't a needle in it. So I've had a needle, and that's all I'm going to get today. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, well, we can talk about sewing a lot then, can't we? We just can't, just can't do any. Um, let's refresh this one. Carol loves all the fabrics. What are you going to make, Carol? Um, five by seven. That's probably about right, Alex. So we should double check on that one. Uh, how did you know that? It's exactly five by seven. Um, back again. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Honestly. Um, we have a, a bundle of the five fabrics by the half metre, so we've sold out of the mega bundle. Remember, the mega bundle inc <laughs> included um, the two panels. If you just wanted to go for the fabric without the panels, we do have a bundle of, um, of those uh, that you can go for if you like. Or, of course, if you wanted the panels, you can go for the panels on their own as well. Can we tell me what you're going to make with them? I, I immediately thought apron. I just thought that was really sweet. Um, so kitcheny things or um, anything for the garden. Maybe it's going to be something like um, kitchen, a kitchen, uh, garden seat furniture. That would be nice. I'll put some stabiliser behind there. We can see your bum cat. <laughs> <laughs> two metres, two metres. <laughs> um, or curtains. Maybe a conservatory you're going to decorate. That would be a nice idea as well. We're very professional here at South Street. We know <laughs> <laughs> so this is Kat, our producer, <laughs> who's very kindly supplied us with a, a plug and a foot pedal. <laughs> Just know where to plug them in. Um, <laughs> can I unplug this light? Excuse me while I just unplugged the light. Oh, I've unplugged the tree. Oh, I've unplugged. Oh, okay then. Right, should we do a bit of sewing? Yes. I've got a foot pedal and everything now. So I'm just going to sew down each side of the strap. If you remember, we're making a bag. If you haven't lost the wheel yet. So good job this is a quick sewing machine. Um, Jane's going to be with us um, for the final two hours as well, so she'll be demonstrating this machine and talking about some of the other machines that we have for you as well, which is amazing. Have you tried looking for sewing machines these days? So many people are just selling out of sewing machines at the moment. So if you're, and if you look on our website at the moment, we're very limited to what we actually have. But we do have the 570 back in stock. Um, so this is a back in stock as well, the 680. And we've got an exclusive with the 580 coming up later on as well. Have a look on the website because they're all there now anyway. So, but if your New Year's resolution is to maybe make your own wardrobe this year, or you're, you just want to upgrade, just take your sewing seriously. Get hold of a, a really good sewing machine that's going to last you for years. So a lot of people are going to be taking up new crafts in the new year from what we're hearing. So if sewing's one of yours, I'm sure at the moment we've got something for you. All right. So. <laughs> Pocket on first here, so that's going to go on the plainer side of the fabric, just on one side, and normally these type of bags, the pocket's very close to the top, and it's so I'm just going to sew across the top of here, um, but I'm going to put it down a little bit further so it is actually purposeful, not just a pocket to put your bag in. You're loving the seat panel as well. I think it's a nice idea to give a gift of seeds, particularly to children. 
Um, oh, yes, Kat's just saying that uh, she's seen greetings cards that you can actually plant. Um, I bought my granddaughter one for her birthday um, in May. Um, and I thought it was a really l lovely idea. I, I can't remember what, what seeds they were, but yeah, the, literally the whole card goes into a pot and you, you plant them. I think that's a lovely idea. Right. Oh, and we've, we've, got, um, we've got recycled stuff coming up in the next hour. Well, toy filler. Which again is something... Let me just snip those threads off here. That's it. With my squizzers. Today's early bird is still available. It's been very busy there, and a lot of have been multi-ordering that as well. So we'll go backwards at the top of here before we go forwards, just to make that nice and secure. Fold the bottom under there. Down to the bottom. So panels on your screens at the moment. I did to go for these. Oh, we we could have um, we could have seed packet bunting. For, oh yes, for the village fair, you know when you're going to take um, take your marrow and enter it in the competition. All right, that'll do. Oops. So there's the pocket. Snip off my little end. I don't like loose threads. That's that. Then we will have the handles on next. And I'm going to pop those just to each side of the pocket because I think that looks aesthetically pleasing. And I'm just sewing within the seam allowance. Oh, I'm not using any particular seam allowance on this. It's just kind of the edge of the foot because it doesn't really matter. Make sure that that's not twisted. And this is going to line up with the opposite side of the pocket there. This would make really nice um, bags to take to the supermarket, wouldn't they? You know, to put your fresh veg and things like that in if you're conscientious. So let's do this. See, it's nice to have a, a fun tote bag. I know we've a lot of supermarkets have their own reusable ones, but um, I don't want to advertise them. So nice to have something that's a little bit more personal, isn't it? And these are so quick to make. So I'm just putting the opposite side of the handle on here, making sure again that that's not twisted. And then we'll sew across this one. Just to hold that in place. Like this. Love these prints. I wish this is the kind of view that we had when we looked out of the window now. After yesterday was quite sunny, wasn't it? So that's that. And then we'll have the back. I'm just going to sew these together across the top. So that's the, the inside. So, I do like a quick sewing machine, I don't know about you. I like a little bit of speedy sewing. So straight over the handles. If you wanted to make this stronger, or the handles stronger, when you get to the handle bit, you could just reverse back and then go over again. And then we'll do the same with the opposite side. If you've got any questions, by the way, let me know. If you've got any sewing-related questions, if you've got some UFOs and you're not sure what to do with them. Um, Di sent a picture in, which is rather nice. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, with the black. That looks amazing, Di. She says, I thought you might like to see a bag I've made out of the, the tuku tuku. Is that what we're calling it? I'd, why? Is it called tuku tuku? A silly name. Um, but yeah, that looks really lovely. I love the hardware and I love your flying geese down the sands. What a lovely bag. Oh, well done. Right, over again. So again, just so straight across the top. 
To make this truly reversible, there may be a little bit of hand sewing required, but um, I might skip that section here because I might get around to making something else, you never know. Got two hours on my own, we could do another bit of sewing if you like. So, I'm going to sew the two pieces together. Um, make sure I've got the two pieces together. So I'm going to move the handles out of the way. I don't want to sew over those. And literally sew all the way around the edge, but I will need to leave a turning gap somewhere or other. So I'll leave it in the bottom of one of the sides so I can turn it the right side out. So I'm just lining up the seams on the end here because that's the bit that you're going to see if the seams don't match. And then we'll sew not worried about pressing seams open and all that kind of stuff on bags. So are we all ready for Christmas? What are you going to be doing? Has the recent news affected you? It has me. So you're not going to be seeing um, friends and family that you thought you might do? You're going to be on your own? John's going to be here with you from 8 o'clock till 12 o'clock on, on Friday, so if you want a bit of company. And then come and join John and Jules this Christmas. Okay, it's straight across the bottom. So I should be spending the day sewing for a change. I don't know what I'm going to be sewing, but that's my intention. Might take the dog for a walk if it's uh, if it's a nice day. Or for a limp around the block anyway, I don't know about a walk yet. So it's a lot of straight line sewing at the moment, but it'll be a nice project when I finish it. Um, bright red thread, which is a really nice colour. Mind I, I could have used any colour thread with this one. I'm just putting all the seams facing in the same direction as I go over there. And then handle is out of the way again. I don't tend to pin when I'm doing things like this, but if you prefer, then that's fine. So right down into the corner. Oh, Teddy's... Oh, Teddy is having to skip his annual Christmas treat of having the house to himself. Well, the treat is having your house to yourself. Well, it's mine, actually. Right, so I need to leave a gap in the bottom here. <gasps> yeah, so what's it like being locked down with your family for weeks and weeks on end? It's no different for me, to be honest. <laughs> there anyway. Right, back down the final side. Like so. We're almost done. Right. Then we'll turn the whole thing the right side out. Just see if we've got any uh, any more comments because I don't want to ignore you. Um, oh, Sue's at home for Christmas. Already decided before the new measures. Um, could this bag be a Christmas giveaway, said Janet? No, I'm keeping it. Um, I think we're up to date there. Oh, Alex noted the grid on the cutting marks. I just thought you had measuring eyes. Oh, well, that's seven by five. <laughs> so let's turn it the right side out. I'm not snipping off the corners. And because the print's so busy, I think we can get away with a little bit of machine stitching across the bottom without noticing it. So I'm just going to pull the two sides away from each other of the gap that I left and fold the edges over. And I'm just going to put a little row of stitches straight across the top of that. There we go. Do you play games at Christmas? What's your favourite Christmas game? I'm not a fan of, of games, to be honest, 
but I do quite enjoy, have you seen Heads Up? Ah, that's so funny. We only do the simple ones, like animals. And <laughs> but I love that one. Um, so we have, where's my snips? Here. And let's snip these threads off. I like to be neat with my little snips, my squizzers, these are called. <laughs> That'll do. And then we'll push the line, I hope this works, um, push the lining inside. And then we're going to do some top stitching just around the top of the bag. So push that all the way down to the bottom. Come on out. Like so. So I'm just, just going to top stitch around the top because I think it looks nice. And it helps to keep the two pieces of fabric nice and neat and together. So I'm just turning this so that the seam's on the top. And so all the way around, could have lengthened the stitch a little bit there. It's a nice thing about a pattern fabric like this as well, if your stitches are a little bit wobbly, then you don't notice it. Just keep turning that. You could press this first if it's easier. There we go. Oh, hi, Susan. Oh, she ordered the 570A yesterday. Um, she's had the same machine for a lot of years, but she liked the look of the new one. Um, I've got um, I've got the 570 at the moment purely because I borrowed it off my daughter, um, but she's going to want it back again at some point, so I'm going to buy myself another one. So I've got my big Janome, which I'm not going to get rid of at all because I love it, but I've got uh, I've got a little studio, and I can't carry that thing down the garden every five minutes. So you want to see what I'm doing? So let's see, if, let's see if it's reversible first of all, which it, I mean it should be. Um, so let's turn this the other way through. So that's the other side. So yes, it's reversible. You don't notice the stitches at the bottom too much, but now we need to see if it's a fold away as well. This is the bit where I'm not sure whether it's going to work or not. <laughs> they don't always go right, do they? Um, so let's fold this that way. Handles down. That that way. That can go there. That there. That there. And then the whole thing can go inside the pocket. Oh, it's not going to be very pretty on the inside. There you go. So, <laughs> um, because you've got so many panels, in retrospect, I put a, should have put another side on that, shouldn't I? Um, but that's easy enough to do. So next, next time we'll do that. But you've got the whole bag that's gone into a little pocket there, so that's going to sit nicely inside your handbag. And then when you're at the supermarket, no more 10p bags for you. You can just simply take out your bag and you've got a nice, sizeable shopping bag there. That will do, won't it? So I was using, what was I using on this one? The Scenic Veggie Garden, which is this one. These are all in the bundle, but you can go for them on their own as well if you want to. And then on the inside, I used that one, which is, no, that's not, that's not a tossed one, is it? Let's have a look for that one. So you've got the, the veggies in the boxes, veg vegetated, veggie cases, veggie veggie cases as in cases of veggies for that one. 
and then for the hand, oh, and then I used a pocket uh, from the panel, made a pocket from the panel. So that's available on its own as well. That's £9.99. And then the handles were from this one. That's a tossed one. We've got um, red onions, white onions, Spanish onions, we've got courgettes, we've got carrots, we've got peas, we've got mushrooms. Oh, I'm not sure about those mushrooms. They look a bit dodgy. Um, we've got tomatoes, we've got cabbage or kale and beetroot and artichoke. Got lots of stuff on there. Now, again, all of those fabrics are available by the half metre if you wanted to, or you can go for them in the complete bundle so you get half a metre of each one of those. Um, I did run out of time last week. Last week, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Lisa, but we don't forget. So at least we've got around to finishing something today. Uh, Bernadette's going to be alone again as usual. I get a lunch from a local group on Christmas Day. Blackburn Horse. So many thanks to them. Um, very grateful as I'm going to be able to use a cooker. Not allowed. Oh, so me and three cats now. Happiness is what you make when you're enjoying your day. What a lovely saying. So I'm glad you like the bag. Um, yeah, I think we'll just say. Um, now we do have another panel, which was in the big bundle that we sold out of, but we do have it available on its own now as well, which is this one, which I think makes a really lovely wall hanging or a decoration for a kitchen. Um, or a, do you know what you could do if you've got some of those extra, the extra panel, you could put some pockets on the front to make a wall hanging out of this one. And then you could keep your seeds in it, couldn't you? Okay, so we've got some more fabrics for you. I'm going to, going to pop that over there because it matches her apron. Now I'm going to be in trouble. Those, those baubles cost a fortune. <laughs> Leaves, bugs on leaves, look at these. Actually, they, they, go, re they go really well um, with, the, um, with the gardening fabric, don't they? <laughs> um, so £5.99 for half a metre for this one. Um, this would make nice little gift bags for birthday presents and things like that, wouldn't it? Um, or again, if you want some bunting, a lovely bright colour for a nursery maybe, or a child's bedroom. A shirt, oh, a little, little shirt to look lovely out of this, or a, a bug dress. Um, again, that's £5.99 and 99p. Buy the half a metre. Then we have the bubbly one. So polka dots, this one. It is unusual though, isn't it? It's, it's so bright and fun. Imagine a quilt made out of this. That'd look amazing. Or if you Backing a quilt, Roman blinds, I think that would look lovely. Or again, brightly coloured shirts, love the stripes as well, I think they go really well together actually, the stripes and the spots, well all of them do, it's all the same collection but I kind of like stripes and spots. Um, so if you didn't want bugs on them. So all your primary colours, lots you can mix and match with, I think maybe a black in the background would look good with that one. And then finally, in this little collection, we've got the squares. And again, with the, with the stripes on them, doesn't that go really well with the stripey fabric? Hmm. Um, so that, again, is £5.99 for half a metre. We also have a bundle of books. We've got a, a couple of bundles of books. So these are some of my half yard books. Um, so we have half yard kids, half yard Christmas. Oh, half yard Christmas is sold out at the at our publishers. Um, so a bit late to start making things for this year, but they're not actually getting this book in again until the end of January. Uh, even I can't get hold of them. It's my book. I haven't got any. And then we've got the half yard gifts as well for twenty one pounds for £21.98. So this is a 9 99 book, this is a 12 99 book, this is a 9 99 book. Mm. 
So you're saving £9.99 today. Woo. Um, half your gifts, the gifts of the whole family, I think, with this one. And um, there's lots of techniques in here as well for you to learn and to use. I love this. This is making a chenille trim um, around the cushion cover. And what else have we got? Oh, look, look, just small things, you know, things that... Oh, this is another a fabric slashing. I love fabric slashing. And again, it's a, a chenille type of thing. That's my niece. And um, scissor keepers. So and everything's made with less than half a yard of fabric. And there aren't any patterns in the book, so it's all about the measurements. But there are lots of different techniques, like free motion embroidery. Um, we've got um, the tool apron, putting binding on things. See, there's a gardener's kneeling pad. You could make that out of the, the gardener's, the gardening fabric. Um, or if you didn't want to use it as a kneeling pad, leave the handle off it and then you've got a box cushion. I must quite a lot about box cushions. That's actually a doorstop, that handbag. And then for the kitchen, we've got oven mitts and um, the door tide is quite a nice one too. So it's, it's taking up space that we don't normally bother with. So we've got tablet cover. So I think, I think there's something for everybody. So that's Half Yard Gifts. Half Yard Christmas is a bigger book and it's chaptered into different Christmassy themes. So we have a, so you've got all of your tools, techniques and things like that that I always put in my books anyway. Um, there's a rustic Christmas, of course you can use different fabrics for these and make them look different. There is the Scandinavian Christmas with little Christmas cones and gnomes and wreaths, stockings. Um, this is more traditional, only because of the type of fabric that's been used. Love that cushion, I use that a lot. Um, there's tree skirt and then monochrome because I've used black and white fabric. Actually it looks like the shots are in black and white but they're not, they are colour, it's just all black and white fabric. And then we have the, the kids Christmas. So things that they can make as well, so some Santa things for your chairs and little Robin bunting and Santa hats. And then we have a contemporary Christmas because I just thought this had a very modern feel and there's a lot of free motion embroidery involved in that one too. And then Half Yard Kids, um, you're getting all of these. Half Yard Kids is um, projects made for children. So this isn't a book teaching kids how to sew. It's projects that you can make for your kids, um, like the Pajama Eater and Monkey Skittle. I love making this book. It is one of my favourite ones. Um, and the kids that we, we booked to do the shoot with, I don't think they even realised they were working. They just, they just came to the house and played all day. Um, so there's some practical things as well as some fun, like the, the backpack with the case that opens at the front so you can keep all of your pencils nice and handy. Um, fun things like monkey skittles. There's some educational little bits and bobs as well, as in games to play. Storage on your seat, something to keep your bedroom tidy. And a couple of pencil cases, decorations. There we go. So that's the three books for £21.98. So you've got a big saving. That's like a third off, isn't it? Ooh. And the second book bundle are three of the Love to Sew books. So we have buntings, stockings and cakes and candies. That's not a, that's not a baking book. They're cakes and candies made out of fabric. Um, these are normally £7.99 each. So it's like you buy three and you're getting one for free. Um, but what a fun idea, isn't it? I think I'll be using most of these for pink cushions. So very simply explained, very easy projects in all of these Love to Sew books. So this is going to be great for a beginner or those of you, again, that are starting a New Year's resolution. In January, you want to start sewing. They look so real. Um, and you don't know where to start. So a, a lot of incentive and ideas in these books, I'm thinking. So this is Crazy Garlings and Bunting. And look at the tutus. Oh, my granddaughters would love that. Um, rain or shine. I love the toadstool ones as well. I've got records. Probably half the population don't know what those are. Mind you, didn't they make a, a bit of a resurgence recently, didn't they? Um, and then we've got stockings. So you can start on next year's Christmas stockings right now. Do you know, you don't have to wait till Christmas for Christmas stockings, do you? Why don't we, why don't we have Easter stockings this year? Because we might be a little bit back to normal by Easter time. So I think, I think we should, should we do that? Should we have Easter stockings and make the most of Easter? How easy would it be to insert a zippered pocket into the tote bag 
Um, very easy. I haven't got time to do it now, Sandra, but that would be a very easy thing to do. Um, right, OK, then we're going to take a quick break and we've got some tools coming up for you in the next hour. So I'll see you again in a couple of minutes. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hello there and welcome back again. Now in this show we've got lots of tools for you. Um, and we're going to start straight away. Actually it's not a tool in effect, but something that was proving very popular when we first launched it here on Sewing Street. And it's toy filler that's been made from recycled bottles. Um, so we're being conscientious here as well. So I used to be a plastic bottle, don't you know? Um, uh, and it's, it's quite surprising, but this is incredibly soft. I don't know if you've ever seen or felt fabrics um, or wadding that have been made from recycled bottles, but it, it is an incredibly soft fibre. Um, I've used recycled bottled denim before now, and it's, it's just a, a pleasure to work with. How they get their softness from a bottle, I've no idea. Um, importantly for me, with toy filler, because I make quite a lot of things with toy filler, whether it's unusual, unusual shape cushion covers or um, toys, of course, is its springiness. And this is actually made from coils. I don't know if you can see there. Actual coils and spring. So it's, it's really quite bouncy. Sometimes with, um, with toy filler, it can clump. It can feel like something that you'd wash saucepans with. Um, this isn't. It's a really lovely quality. And that's really important, particularly if you're making toys for youngsters, because it's going to feel softer when you're using it. Um, I'd go for a couple of these if you make a lot of toys because it scrumples down to very, very little. 
um, but again, incredibly soft. Um, a few tips for you. If you're making things with very skinny legs, so maybe you're thinking Tilda dolls or Luna Lapa, um, small pieces, tear it off and use a pair of tweezers to poke them down very small pieces at a time um, so that it doesn't clump up. And if you're, if you're making things like elephants and you wanted to put these into the, the trunk um, or dolls, um, rag dolls that have fingers, very small amounts and push that in individually. Because you will find sometimes, imagine you're pushing fibres into fingers, when you get to the hand bit, it tends to draw it back out of the fingers again, the fine areas. So tiny, tiny little bits. So just peel it away and stuff it in there individually. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's really hard work and a lifestyle to be so conscientious and, you know, everything recycled and sustainable but it's that small step isn't it it's making the first step that can make a big difference so when things are available to you like this i think it's important that we use it it's only four pounds 99 um, and this is something again you, you, it's not going to be thrown away is it so it's going to be inside your toys or whatever it is you're making for a long long time um, so i think it's quite nice it eases your conscience doesn't it and what a great price that is. So we're over the moon to have this, actually, to be able to bring it to you. Um, it is washable. I was just looking for temp or 30 degree washable, this one. And it's manufactured in the UK as well. So we don't have a, a carbon footprint with it either. Well, it depends where the bottles come from. Can't make a sweeping statement like that, can we? Um, so again, £4.99. Multi-order those as many as you like. You're only going to pay that one postage of £3.99. Uh, 95 pence and uh, again something to stock up on if you are making a lot of toys so if that's going to be one of your new year's resolutions maybe to help the planet a little bit be eco-friendly and um, and make a, a small little step uh, statement a small step um, small steps end up as being large strides don't they so again that's four pounds 99 pence um, lots of you are ordering multiples of this one well, well done to you even if you order 10 of those, you're not going to pay any extra PMP. Or if you've already ordered something already today, you're not going to pay anything for PMP. Um, so it's, it's, it's well worth placing that on your order, I think. Okay, so that was that. We've got one of my favourite books, and it's uh, not one that I wrote. And I wish I had. Um, I know you've seen this book before. When I first bought it, I was really disappointed when I got it home. I don't like the pictures. I don't like the ring binder. It's not full of inspiration and projects. This is the most interesting sewing machine reference book I have ever seen. There's so much information in here um, about, well, it gives you an understanding of how your sewing machine works and therefore how you can look after it and how you can maintain it. But it really is quite an eye opener. I've, I've learned a lot from this book. Um, Bernie, who is the author, has been a sewing machine repairman for 44 years now. He works um, and lives in the States. And him and his wife actually own a quilting company as well. He actually started off working for a publishers um, 40 odd years ago. And his, um, the, the guy who owned the shop next door was in, I'll see if I can remember this, he was in um, sewing machine repairs and Bernie actually thought the sewing machine repairs looked a little bit more interesting as a job than it did in the publishers so he approached the next door neighbour and said can I come and work for you, which he did and isn't it funny how things come full circle and then he actually becomes an author so he's back in publishing again. Um, a thoroughly nice chap but this is what I love about it. It's, it's got pie dishes to explain what a tension is. That made sense to me. You don't very often see the tension inside a sewing machine or understand exactly what it does. But the way that he describes it, you just part them and, and close them. And that's as simple as the tension is on your sewing machine. Um, his, and he shows you, look, he sh he's worked on practically every sewing machine you can imagine. And he thinks he's done something like 50,000 repairs over the years. How often does this happen? Now that's using the right bobbin. Oh, we'll have a chat about that in just a minute. Um, but if this is happening to you, uh, to be honest, checking the size of the bobbin. I was talking to my daughter about this the other day. Um, checking the size of the bobbin isn't something that you instantly think, oh, I'll check I've got the right bobbin. You'll be pulling this thread around here, just in your tension like mud, and wondering why things aren't working. But you see what I mean about this being such an interesting book? You know, what, what is the tension? What, what can go wrong? What other things could affect tension? And then he's got some really 
um, very basic, like blocks of wooden string, but to show you where the stitches should be, it made sense to me. I understand so much more about my sewing machine after reading this book. And it can be any sewing machine. It can be a front-loading bobbin, it can be a drop-in bobbin, it can be um, an electronic machine, it can be computerised. And, you know, understanding the way that it works, you can understand what needs to be done for you to maintain your machine and for you to um, make any corrections on there. So even this, the way that a stitch actually works. <laughs> I'd love him to come into the studio with all of these props, you know, it really does make sense. Um, needles change size, needle change lengths. Why do they change length? All explained in here. So all of your different types of needles explained, why you need the, um, the right needle for the job. Um, machine threaders, how they work. It's quite refreshing listening to him as well, for me personally, um, because I've said so many times before that needle threaders break or bend more often than anything because um, the needle isn't in the right position. And it's so, so nice to hear an expert like this saying, oh yeah, the needle needs to be in the right position. Um, this was interesting as well, the way that you approach a very thick seam and what a seam lifter will actually do to help. Because, you know, you, you can buy seam, lif seam lifters, you may not understand why they work like that. Or on a lot of modern machines, you know, the little black button that's on the side of the foot works in the same way. Um, so when you're approaching a thick seam, th if you press this button in and hold it, it locks the position of the foot. So you're not going to approach the seam at an angle like this, you're going to approach it flat like that, in which case you're not going to get jumped stitches as you come in up, up, to, the, up to the seam. So yes, from what turned out for me to be a disappointing, oh is that it, little book, um, it's, it's, it's the most interesting sewing machine book I've ever bought. And it's a reference, you know, I, I did sit down and read it, I couldn't, um, I mean, how often does that happen? Um, I couldn't, I just couldn't put it down. But then you've got a reference there, so that when things do go wrong, or you need to maintain your sewing machine, I mean, how far can you go maintaining a machine before it's out of your hands and you need to go to um, a service uh, repair place? Hmm. Now, our machines all come to you with a two-year warranty, but you can help things along as well. Or at least if things do go wrong and you can identify what it is that's gone wrong, maybe you can correct it without having to take it back to um, a service repairer or even, um, even use a warranty. Some things are really, really simple. Let's have a look at tensions to start with. We, oh, we get, I get asked so many times about tension. My thread's doing this, what tension do I need to be on? And it's not always tension. So things that may affect the tension, um, you may choose to use different threads made of different fibres, sometimes they can argue together. Um, it might be because you're using different weights of thread, top and bottom. Decorative threads have different properties from those you used in the collaboration, so you may need to adjust the tension there. Um, what else have we got tension-wise? Um, heavier t thread on top. Normally a heavier thread is less supple than a lighter one, so that can affect it. Um, monofilament or plastic threads, they can create extra tension. Different brands of the same weight of thread, that can create tension. Different colours, oh, different colours. Sometimes you might want to use a different colour from the top thread in the bottom, in this case, depending on the thickness of the fabric. When you look in the needle hole, you might see thread from the opposite side show through. In all these situations, you can balance the tension properly by using your upper tension control. And then goes on to explain to you how to do that as well. And I want, if he agrees with me on that one as well, it's hardly ever the tension. <laughs> and I've said it before, poor old tension. Gets the blame for everything, not necessarily the tension's fault. Hmm. So if it is the tension fault, then he'll explain how to do that. But if it's not tension's fault, there's lots of other things that could be involved, like your bobbin case and your... Um, and your hook, missing the take up, oh my machine does that. Um, if I'm sewing fresh air, as in off the edge of my fabric, my thread just jumps out the take up, leave it, but I can't see it inside the machine, so I just end up with a big knot of thread underneath there. Got quite used to it now, so I know what it's up to. Wrong size of thread stopper. Oh, having your thread come off in the right direction. And this, 
I know, that can really affect the tension, or what you think is tension anyway. So who likes a ring-bound book? That was Linda. Yes, I say what you mean, Linda, because you can open the page. They stay open when you're using them, and um, you don't have to break the spine of a book, which is sacrilege, isn't it? Never break the spine of a book. Um, lovely. OK. £19.49 could maybe save you £19.49, I'm thinking, if you, can, if you can look after the machine itself. Um, we are in single figures for this book now. Always sells out. I say it's something that I'd, I'd probably walk straight past if I saw this in a shop. Um, but it's a really good investment, so I can't recommend it enough, seriously. And I did buy the book. I wasn't given it. So just, just to let you know, <laughs> I don't get given things. Um, now then, we did mention bobbins earlier on. We have an extra red bobbins. Get us. This is an exclusive red bobbins in a box. Um, there are 25 bobbins in here, and these are suitable for Elna and Janome sewing machines. Um, and it is important to have the right size. A, a lot of um, sewing machine brands do actually cross over, so they'll use the same size, but it can cause an issue if you're using the wrong size of bobbin. So uh, it's always recommended that you have the right size. If, if you're using a wrong size of bobbin and it creates a problem with your sewing machine, it could invalidate the warranty. I'm not sure about that with Elness. I can check with Jane when she's in later. Um, but always, always, always recommended that you have exactly um, the right size. And they do come in different sizes. They, they, they might look different. Uh, they might look the same, sorry. But bobbins are in different sizes. Um, and they're red. And you've got loads of, it's 25 in here. So, do you know, winding a bobbin up to me, it's, that, that's, the, that's the only thing I don't like about it. So it's a chore. And it always happens at the wrong time. It's like putting Petra in the car. It's like, oh, I've got to get out of the car now and it's freezing. Um, it's, that, that's my mentality of bobbins. It's like putting fuel in the thing. and it's oh. So to have lots and lots of bobbins already pre-wound, particularly in the colours that you're going to use most of all. So, you know, if you could have a, a two or three black, two or three white, two or three grey, two or three beige, two or three red, um, then it's, it's seconds to change it rather than having to fill them up. That sounded a bit lazy, didn't it? And I'm not lazy at all, but I just don't enjoy winding bobbins up. Well, they always run out at the wrong point, don't they? Um, so £15 for all of those, all the right size, and in the case as well, so you can keep yourself all nicely organised. And it's a clear perspex uh, case, so you can see what colours you've got in there as well. And um, yes, stack them all on top of each other if you need more than 25. I think I'd need more than 25. I like to keep bobbins and threads all the same. So if I've, if I've got a different coloured fabric, I know that I've got the bobbin and I've got the, the spool and they match already without then having to go and wind up the bobbin. The only thing I don't like about sewing is winding up the bobbin. Hmm. Um, we've got some bobbin mates. This is keeping you organised. Look at these. So this is exactly the kind of thing I like to do. So this sticks in the end of your thread and then you can keep your bobbin in there. And if you get 12 of them, I'd go for more than that personally. I'd go for, I'd go for a couple of them at least. Um, and it just means that every single thread has, um, has its matching bobbin. And do you know what I like as well? It's just, look, just looking in the bottom. Um, they, the ones that I've got go all the way down to the bottom of the spool so I can't then pop it on my I've got some of those um the June Taylor um the wooden things with the post sticking up to put all my threads on and I can't put them on when I've got my bobbin mate in there but you can with these because they're not so deep that's a great idea um then I get only one pounds 99 so stick it on your order while we've got some stock We've got threads for you today as well. We've got the big box of threads. It's getting cold. Um, I could, I can may maybe have another one when Jane's here because I'll let her do some talking while I have a coffee. <laughs> they don't do that on any other channel, you know. You're not allowed coffee in the studio. Oh no. That's why I'm here. Look at that, now look at that, as a gift. Um, I mean, obviously not Christmas now, but 
as a gift. Um, I said, oh, yes, please. Because inside here, it's, it's, it's the whole look of the thing. Look, you've got a gorgeous tin. And inside there, look, it's 48 Gutemann threads. Um, that's £1.24 a thread. I would happily pay 2 99 for each one of those. Um, so that's incredible value. I love having a rainbow of colour of threads. I, mean, I, I do have hundreds. Um, but it just means that you don't have to make do. So for instance, if I wanted to find a thread to match with my veggie panel and I want a red. Now, if that's the only red that I had at home, that's the only red that I'd use because I'm not rushing out to buy more thread and it'll do. But when you've got a choice, then you're going to find a colour I'm sure that's going to match better. So, I mean, even with the yellows, if that's the only yellow you've got, that's the only yellow that you're going to use. But when you've got such a wide choice, you're going to find something that matches perfectly. Um, there's a couple of whites in there because they're going to be the colours that you use more, more than anything. Um, a lot of you quilters are going to be using the neutral colours and the greys and the off whites So you've got all of those. But then for top stitching or maybe a little bit of free motion embroidery, then you've got all of these as well. And they're all in the tin. I love the tin. 100% polyester, all of these. But um, I tend to go for polyester, to be honest even when I'm using cotton. Um, quilters maybe not, but certainly for dressmaking and running the projects I make, then I do like a, like a polyester. Um, and it's not, polyester's not like it used to be. You know, it's not shiny, it's matte. You wouldn't know the difference between polyester and cotton. Um, polyester tends to be a little bit stronger. So particularly if you're working with stretch fabric, then those are going to be ideal for you. But isn't that a lovely gift? So I'll have one of those, please. And I'll have one of those so I can get them pre-wound. I might need two of those, actually. How many have we got in there? 48. Yeah, I'll need a couple of those. And I've got a couple of spare bobbins as well. And then I'd like some bobbin mates as well, please. And that will make me a very happy Debbie. <laughs> All I want. Fabric, thread. I don't want diamonds. I'm not fussed about that. Um, sewing machine reference book has now sold out well done for getting hold of that you are really going to enjoy that book when you get it home um oh something else that always seems to sell out is the turning tool who were we talking to about these the other week um when when you're kind of in your little sewing world i don't know about you i don't really take very much notice of what anybody else does i just kind of get on with stuff um and for turning through um bag handles or or the likes thin tubes of anything straps maybe i would be there either sewing a piece of ribbon into the end so i can pull the whole thing through i thought that was a very clever idea um or i would be using a knitting needle to poke it out um and i'd be getting quite frustrated with it and it was actually john scott that introduced me to these at um, sewing quarter when I was I think I brought my knitting needle in to turn something through and he said why don't you use a turning tool because I've never heard of one before honestly where have they been all my life let me show you let me show you how this works so um I did have to put that there we go oh no can I use those better, better not some in some in the drawer some in the furthest drawer away from me Oh, no, I can't get that. So I'll use my rotary cutter. And I'll cut a strip. Thank you. Don't cut the table. I've already ruined the carpet. Um, is that folded? Yeah, I know that's wasting a little bit, but be quicker. So let's make a tube, say an inch and a half wide. What you will have to do, even if you don't want the end of your tube sewn over, you'll have to sew over it to use with these. So let's sew that into a tube. So this could be um, maybe like the apron straps on the apron behind me. Oh. <laughs> you have to be able to do yoga to use the machines in this place. Pedals over there, chairs over here. Um, so I'm going to sew straight across the end. And then down the side, just overshot that a little bit. So I've got a long, thin tube. The thing with the knitting needles as well, I, I have gone through the end of the seam before now. 
So just when you think you're being all efficient and effective, it doesn't necessarily work. So do this and chop. And then we'll open up this packet. And then I'll have to buy this as well. Um, should we go for, I think we can do the biggest one with this one. It's a very neat job of opening that, never mind. Come here, right, you're open. Oop. <laughs> We're going to take the end here and you just need to get the end bit folded in a little bit. Drop the tube inside, all the way down to the bottom. And then you just kind of need to get the end folded in. You've got a, a pointy bit and a flat bit. I'm going to use the flat bit and literally push it through the tube. And out it comes at the other end. Genius, look at that. Absolute genius, love it. There's three different sizes in here as well. The very small one has got um, a metal bit inside. That's because it's very thin. So if it was wood, you're gonna snap that really easily. Um, these two are wooden. Um, I did have to buy a second lot of these because my granddaughters decided these are magic wands or swords. No idea where they are. So again, push the tube down. This goes into the end, so the tube's inside there. Push that inside and just keep threading it over till it comes out the other end. Look, left the wood inside it. There we go. So easy. Oh, do you know, it's, it's such an ingenious, it's one of those things that you wish you'd have invented yourself. I think that is such a good idea. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, we do tend to sell out of this lots of times. So if you want to get hold of one, look at that. I mean, it's just, just a nice game to play, isn't it? Okay, so that's that. Whoops. <laughs> These are going to get lost now, aren't they? Ruin the packaging on those. There. And I'll, I'll leave the tube there for next time then, so I don't have to make another one. That's, a, that's a, not a problem. Oh, what should we look at next? Should we, should we refresh? What's up with Facebook today? Morning, Alan. Wonder where you were. Um, right. So we, we've got a little craft bag here. Look. Let's have a look at this one. I'm starting to look messy, aren't I? Don't, I don't like mess. So, £19.99 for this one. Isn't that stylish? Look, it's got bunting printed all over it. Um, wooden handlers on this one. And then we've got pockets on the one side as well with Velcro fastening. Um, so that's going to help keep it closed and nice and neat. And it's a really good sturdy bag. So that's what we like on the inside. Look, we're all quilted and uh, professional looking, bound on the outside. And I just, that, that I think that's gonna be really useful. And not just for your sewing bits and bobs either. That could be overnight, overnight bag, could be your knitting bag, um, a storage bag. It's got the zip across the top as well. But I just think it's a, really, it's a really lovely bag. Fill that up with something for a gift. So my threads will fit in there. My bobbin mates will fit in there. <laughs> Oh, a bottle of wine would be nice as well, wouldn't it? That would fit in there very well. Mulled wine for Christmas. Mm. Oh, it has actually been stitched around. Oh, no, it has. What a clever print. Looks like the, um, the bunting's applique, but it's not. It's all part of the print. That's such a clever idea. So, again, £19.99 is your price there. But that's just for storage, wouldn't it? Just nice and stylish. Um, we have a couple of storage boxes for you too. Come on, come here, come on, come here. A 
could stand up. Right. I love storage. Um, this is a horizontal thread container. Oh, that's never going to get back on again, is it? So this has got elastic fastening. So just keep it nice and organised and horizontal meaning they go in that away. You could fit loads in there. So maybe just store your um, store your bobbins. <laughs> Isn't that a, that was a great demo, wasn't it? Huh? Um, but not not just for your threads. Um, you could be keeping ribbons in here. Um, maybe a smaller tool. So your little snips that we had as your one day special. Uh, your one day special. Look at me. Um, your early bird. You can keep your hand sanitizer in there. We could have maybe a few clips in here and then you can pop the lid on. The lid is slightly transparent as well so you can see through there and then wrap the elastic round and there, there you are stored. Um, I do like lots and lots of storage. It keeps you organised. Ultimately it can save you more money because you're not going out and doubling up on something that you've already got because you can't find it. But for smaller items as well, I just think it's... I'll put those back later. Um, <laughs> means that you're not going to lose things as well. I've got through so many... I think that one's mine, isn't it? Um, we've got through so many clips. I'm having that, but you're not having, not having a big clip. Um, smaller items like that. I have got through quite a lot of clips, actually, because I just put them down and I don't know where I put them. Obviously, I'll leave them here. Um, but maybe it's a beads and sequins and trims and things like that. So keep yourself organised. Maybe that's another New Year's resolution for you. Being organised in 2021. Um, we do have a smaller storage. I'll do that in a minute. have a smaller storage box as well, uh, which is this one. I shan't take it out because that will never, ever go back in again. So it works in the same way, but it's like, like a pincushion. It's got a pincushion in the bottom of it. Um, so inside here is like a, a sponge. So you can stick pins in like so, and then more so as well. Um, so that's really handy. And again, if you go for more than one of those, you can stack them on top of one another too. I love that area of a sewing room where we just reach over and you know exactly what you've got there. Sorry, that's what I'm, I'm looking at it and you can't see it, can you? <laughs> a nice organised, clean storing, a storage area where you know where everything is. For £7.89, pence, really useful. Oh, now we also have one of our favourite products. George and Franklin apparently loves these. Electric scissors. These are incredibly powerful electric scissors. Um, I have had, um, I've bought electric scissors before now, they've been around for a long time, but sometimes with the more powerful, um, the thicker fabrics, they struggle to cut through. Um, these are rechargeable. They do come with you, I think there's two batteries in there and you can still use them while one of them's being charged because you've got a mains adapter with it too. Um, but they just, they just cut through anything. So fabrics, no problem. Cutting through, is this the actual bottom? Oh, sorry. Oh dear. Oh well. Um, you can cut through. Have you ever used corrugated cardboard for a project? Because if you're cutting this with a pair of scissors, it tends to bend. Oh, I can't use that now, it's bent. Um, but with your scissors, because they just glide along, you can actually cut through without anything bending. I've cut up carpets with this before now, so if you're cutting up packaging, if you're recycling, these are perfect. Um, if you are upcycling fabrics and garments like denim jeans, um, this will easily go through um, the, like the, the really thick seam where there's about six layers of fabric on there to cut them out. If you're cutting um, fine fabrics, this is perfect. Um, and if you're cutting anything off the roll, so you've got big long strips of fabric. If you're not very good at doing this with your hands, if that aches a little bit, just do that left or right handed, it's really, really easy. And the blades aren't sharp. The cutting point is actually where the two blades meet and you'd have to make a really big effort to get your finger all the way down there. Um, so they're safe as well. The points here aren't actually pointed, they're, they're rounded. So do get two blades with this as well. There's an A blade and a B blade. Um, 
I think it's going to take you so long to get through one, you're ne never going to reach the other ones. But it's about the quality and the thicknesses of fabric that you can cut with this. Now, it is available on split payments as well, because you're spending over £150. You can split this into three payments of £56.66. And £66. But you know, even with rotary cutters, I love my rotary cutter. I use my Alpha all the time. Um, but it's pressure. There's pressure on your wrist, there's pressure on your shoulder, particularly when you're cutting through lots of layers or thicker fabric. Um, so if you are of the, that kind of ilk where that's a problem for you, this is just like a one touch, very simple. Press it with the finger, just squeeze it, and it'll cut really, really simply. But it's, you know, it's not just about thick fabrics, it's about accuracy as well. So no reason why you couldn't cut out a, a pattern with this. So you could, you know, if you're cutter cutting, if it's a plique, all I'm doing really is just pointing at the pattern. So no effort from me whatsoever. So you can cut through your paper patterns as it's pinned to your dressmaking fabric. But if you're cutting out anything that already has wadding on the back, then you can cut through the wadding or interfacing all at the same time. You know, if you're cutting something like um, a really heavy bag interfacing, like the Decaville that feels like rubbery leather, it'll cut through those, no problem whatsoever. But it cuts quickly as well. So again, if you are cutting off the bolt off a roll, look how quick that is compared to, I know these aren't the right scissors, but. See what I mean? You still with me? That or that. And the charge lasts for a long time on these as well. So it's an investment. Um, it's like when you, when you go into your toolbox and you've got your, I don't know, your electric screwdriver and your drill and you go for the very best you possibly can because you know you're going to get more performance out of it and it's going to be able to cope. You know, with your drill, you've probably got a hammer action on your drill um, so that you can go through brickwork and stone and things like that. It's the same kind of, no, not, not brickwork and stone with the scissors, Kat. <laughs> but you would go for the most expensive tool or the, with the most features of the best quality if you're doing any kind of work around your home and it's no different when you're ordering tools like this one because this isn't just about sewing and dressmaking this is about um, anything that you need to cut around the home so it's re they're reliable they're sturdy they're incredibly strong um, a lot of them, I mean, th there's a lot of similar looking things on the marketplace as well that are a, a lot more affordable, but this really is one of those cases that you get what you pay for. So that is a, a real investment for you. I know the, the first time we launched that, they sold out completely, didn't they? So what do you think? There's hundreds of you got these at home already. Why did you buy them? What are you going to use them for? What have you used them for? Come and let me know. And again, everything that you need in there, you've got your plug and you've got your uh, charger. There's even a little screwdriver in there as well. And of course, your instructions and warranty and everything else in the box. Yours will become very nicely packaged in there, in a box that doesn't have a piece missing. Right, underneath my um, Elna Exalinx 680, we have the slip reduction mat here as well. Um, turning tools where yeah absolutely slip reduction now this is this is this is really lovely man um, do you know what it reminds me of as I'm going back in time we tend to go back in time a lot on a Sunday morning don't we there's swimming caps 1960s swimming caps that look like that with all bubbles all over them they look like seaweed and you wanted to pop them that's what it reminds me of um, but it, this is cushioned it's not just cushioned um, it's non-slip as well um, which is really important um, 
for lots of reasons. So you're going to cut down on vibration, which means you're going to cut down on noise. Um, your machine's not going to move all over the table. It's going to stay absolutely still. So it's not going to move away from you as you're sewing. It's a really good size on here as well. The 680 is quite a large sewing machine and you've still got plenty of room as well. Um, but it just helps again with, uh, the, the most important thing for me is the noise reduction. If you've got a sewing machine on a, on a wooden or even a glass table, the vibrations can just make it sound so noisy. Not, it makes, it kind of, I don't know, makes the sound of the machine echo, make it sound really loud. So I would always have some kind of um, sewing machine mat underneath my sewing machine. But this being non-slip is just such a, a, a benefit as well. So that's £15 and £99. That's something else I need to put on the order with my Gutemann thread and my bobbins. This is coming up in the next hour, by the way. Jane is in the building and uh, two new machines for us. So she's terribly excited this morning. Um, we're going to have a look at the, the 320 and then the 580. Oh, and then the 680 is going to be in the 12 o'clock hour. That's, that's going to be in the last hour. So we're, we're building up to excellence, shall we say. Oh, we've got loads of time left, haven't we? Um, shall we have a look at some rulers? All right, these are Janome rulers. One's metric and one's imperial. So the choice is yours. So standard size, um, probably the largest size rule you can actually buy, which is six inches by 24 inches or centimetre wise. They're both inches. Well, how's that? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't think we'll talk about that one at the moment. That's a different one. Um, so this one is your, um, <laughs> thank you, um, your Janome Imperial ruler. And it's in pink and black, so the colours will stand out against most colours of fabric. So if I just pop this behind here... So you've got lots of different coloured fabrics. Depending on the colour, um, either the black skin stand out or the pink will stand out or sometimes even both. We have quarter inch in increments and eighth of an inch increments and also, let me find something plainer. Let's stick it on there. That works. Um, we've got the 30 degree angle, 45 degree angle and 60 degree angles, which is perfect if you're cutting bias binding or maybe you're cutting 60 degree diamonds or 30 degree triangles. 30 degree triangles? No, 60 degree triangles. Well, you know what I mean. Um, so you can use these as guidelines along with your cutting mat. Go for a, you need a cutting mat as well. Uh, and of course, you're going to need a rotary cutter too. So that is the intras. That's your imperial. And then we have the same size of ruler, but this time in centimetres, which is 60 centimetres by 14 centimetres. And again, you've got those 60, 45 and 30 degree markings on there as well. So, yeah, really, really useful. And the width of these as well um, is the perfect size if you're buying fabric that comes off a bolt because when your fabric's folded in half, it will be 22 inches wide. These are 24 inches, so you've got a little gap at each end, so you get yourself a nice big cutting mat. You don't have to fold the fabric again when you cut it. You can just cut all the way across as you're cutting out your pieces. But I use these for everything. I'll use them if I'm doing curtain making. Um, I actually use a ruler of this size if I want to cut an inch square. It's just habit now, I think. I just use these size rulers for everything. Um, and they're twelve ninety nine. I paid about thirty pounds for my ruler. Hmm. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, not not all of us have got thirty pounds spare, have we? Um, so if you've not used rulers before, this is a great way. And actually, there's all of the same markings on here as the one that I paid thirty pounds for. Maybe spitting a few feathers there. <laughs> um, so whether you prefer inches or wh whether you prefer the centimetres, we've got one of each of those for you with your rulers. Now mention the Alpha rotary cutter. This is the one that I use. Which is this one. Um, 
if you've not used rot rotary cutter before, then 45 millimeters is the most used size. So this is a good one to go for. Um, I just like it. I've, I've always used Alpha, so you know I'm not knocking anything else. I've, I've got Friskers and all kinds of different rotary cutters, but this is the one that I like to use. Uh, it's ergonomic. I find it easy to lock and unlock, and that's really important. These blades are in incredibly sharp. Even when they're too blunt to cut fabric with, they are incredibly sharp, so it's important to lock it. So I find just pressing the button easier than the ones that have a guard that go over them personally. It is right or left-handed. You'll need to unscrew the blade from here. So it's very easy to do. All of that gubbins comes off there. That goes out there. Then new blade will go on the other side and we've got a blade box that's a little oh yes so this is where oops i like to keep old blades until it's full up and then the whole thing gets thrown away um do that with um needles and pins as well we, we had this chat last week didn't we about what to do with with things um so that can stay there Give that a bit of a wipe because it will have fluff inside it. And then you put the blade, if you're going to make this left-handed, you simply put the blade on the other side. It's as easy as that. So simple to use, squeeze it down, use it, lock it, and then that's going to keep it nice and safe as well. Um, so that's how it's going to come to you. You can get different styles of blades with these as well. Um, so I'm not putting that one back in again because it's actually blunt. Um, so you can get pinking and you can get wavy edges as well. So if, if you want, in fact, we've got some of those on the website, haven't we? The different styles of blades that come with it. Um, but Alpha are going to give you a quality. You know, when you talk about big brands, big brand sewing machines, big brands, um, oops, uh, threads, reliability, quality. That's what you're going to get with your rotary cutter as well. I've, I don't think I've ever replaced a rotary cutter. Replace the blade. Oh, with blades now then. Um, don't go over pins with them and if you've used um, um, a, a glue particularly something like your HT2 glue or glue from a hot glue gun on your cutting mat make sure you, you scrape that off before you go over it because you can get tiny little nicks on the blade and it just means that when you're cutting you end up perforating your fabric instead of making a clean cut so let me just put these I'll put these all back together again even though there's no blade in it so we don't lose them and then we'll get a new blade at some point. Like that. Well, that's going to be confusing, isn't it, if I just leave this for the next guest to use. There you go, use that blade. £19.99, um, and again, 45 mil, and it's all far. So, I, do you know, I think I've only got two rotary cutters. One in my sewing room, I, I, I do quite a bit of sewing. So I've got, um, I have a sewing area and I've got a cutting area, so I have, I've got one in each. So I replace the blades quite a lot, but uh, the actual cutter, they just never need replacing. Yeah. Um, you don't need your ruler, you do need a mat. So if you wanted to freehand cut, have a bit of a practice with that first. Um, lots of dressmakers use rotary cutters. I, I do, my daughter does. Um, because when you're cutting, you don't, with scissors, you have to lift the pattern up to get the scissors underneath. So if you're cutting around anything intricate or you've got the, the dark legs and things like that that you're cutting around, you're actually lifting the fabric and the pattern up away from the table. Whereas when you're using a rotary cutter, you're just almost like drawing around the edge. So you don't necessarily need to use a ruler. Um, I wouldn't say they'd replace your scissors, but um, they replace a lot of things that your scissors can do. But remember to lock it. If you drop that on your foot, you'll be one short of a full set of toes. <laughs> Right, what else we got? We have 404s and grippy sprays from Odif. So these are the same people that bring you the 505 temporary sprays and D606 sprays as well. So this one is your 404 spray and this one is uh, primarily for paper. Um, so you can use these to put patterns on walls as they have got nowhere else to lay my pattern out you can spray the back of the pattern stick it to the wall and it won't leave any residue on there as well um, so although you um, although you're spraying onto something it it, it doesn't it, it makes it a little bit tacky but it doesn't transfer onto anything else 
Um, so you, you can use this for patterns as well if you don't want to pin. Um, but it's a, um, it is repositionable, but the 404 doesn't actually leave the fabric or the paper or whatever you're making. With 505, even if you don't wash the glue out, it will eventually, after a few days, kind of disappear because that's temporary. So this is the same kind of thing, but it's a little bit more permanent. So you've got ideas on the back there. So it is repositionable, like 505, but the glue doesn't disappear. That's not the idea with this one. And that's £7.99 is your price there. And then we have Grippy Spray. Now this one you're going to use with rulers like this. Um, so if you've got any of the Creative Grids rulers with the non-stick bits on the back, you don't need it. But if you've got a ruler like this one, or if you're using acrylic templates, if you're um, patchworking or if you are appliqueing and you've got templates to templates templates to uh, to hold down you put the grippy spray onto one side and it will stop it from slipping um, if you uh, it'll stay there as well it's not going to disappear but you can refresh it or if it attracts any kind of dust just give it a wipe over the baby wipe or a damp cloth and it'll kind of reignite the stickiness on there and so instead of having you know the little um, buds that you stick to the back of your ruler that are non-stick then use your grippy spray it's um it's a lot more um efficient so it's it's plastic it's paper you can use it on glass, I don't know why you would, but you can do if you want to. And that's just £6.99B. We have Fisker scissors. And these are they. I love a new pair of scissors. Um, these are shears, so they have the angled handles. They are right-handed I'm afraid sorry about that I think we've got some left-handed ones on the website 24 centimeters in length and sharp all the way down to the point um, and that is that's really important to me um, I don't want a pair of scissors where I'm only cutting using that bit and that happens quite a lot I want a pair of scissors that will utilize the whole length of the blade all the way down to the bottom and then I don't have to do this action with my hands quite so often they're comfortable as well so they've got a really ergonomic um, handle on them and at £14.99 for a pair of shears that is going to last you for years and years and years is a really good price. So, this is what I mean. One nice big long cut I want from my shears all the way down to the point. So I don't have to do kind of that motion all the way down is what I want and something that I can make tiny little snips into my fabric if I want to as well so I'm sniffing into sniffing <laughs> if I'm sniffing my curve oh that's a smelly curve um, if I'm snipping into curves I don't have to worry about getting my tiny little scissors out I can use the big scissors for smaller things as well fabulous quality and at £14.99 again that is an amazing price for such a quality pair of scissors and Fiskars have been around since 1649 so they've got a long history in the cutting industry and they, I mean, normally Fiskars are orange that's the, the recognisable colour isn't it but um, they they weren't meant to be orange apparently when they were um, experimenting with the scissors and, and developing them um, they were going to be was it red red or green or was it red or black something like that um, but whoever was actually putting the um, the dye into the plastics machine um, cleaned out what they were using previously which was orange and it came out as an orange pair of scissors so Mr Fiskus thought oh I like I like orange we'll go for orange then and that's how it came about okay £14.99 Oh, now we've got a bit of fabric for you to finish off. These are the ones that I did the Japanese knot bag in, aren't they? Oh, I love the colours on this one. This is so delicate. And I love the lilac colours in here as well, the little flowers and the blossom in the background. And it's quite a heavy um, cotton as well. There's a lot of foiling on it, which I think gives the, the cotton a little bit of extra weight. Um, but for home wares, I think that would be absolutely gorgeous. So again, £6.99 is your price for that one. Trying to make things look tidy. It's not working. 
Then we have um, clamshells, this one, isn't it? With those cool gold, cr gold crescent bits. That's, that says clamshells to me, I don't know about you. Um, but all of them are printed in different designs, which is quite nice as well. Um, then we've got, oh, the cranes. Oh, the cranes. This is on the purple background. This is very elegant. And again, non-directional. Non so you can use this any way around, really make the most of your fabric. Very elegant though. And again, you've got this just a little touch of foiling on there as well. So as, a, as an elegance to your fabric, methinks. And then oh, we've got the navy background as well. Really stands out. It is navy. It might look black on your TV set, but it is, it is navy in the background. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Because you wanted black anyway, didn't you? Did you want a black? There you go, we've got a black one. So same design, but this time with a black background. So we aim to please. 6 99 for half a metre. If you need more, they will come to you all joined up. Oh, Kat suggested a lampshade made out of that. would look very nice. With matching um, cushion covers. Nice. Oh, with gold tassels, apparently. And then finally, same design again, but with the red background. Gorgeous. It's a very different look, isn't it, with different colours of fabrics. Okay, each of those at £6.99. We've got loads more we haven't shown you. Have a look on the website on, um, on sewingastreet.com. You can have a look at everything else that we've kind of missed. Um, or now then, if you weren't watching at 8 o'clock this morning, we had... Claire here with us from Native Lighting and we're doing a little bit of a, a, a giveaway, a prize draw if you will. Anybody that buys anything from Native Lighting throughout the course of the day today is going to be entered into a prize draw. One of you is going to win um, the reverse lamp and that's worth £63 something. So you can brighten up 2021 with Native Lighting. So you haven't necessarily missed out. We did launch a brand new exclusive for you this morning and that's sold out. Um, but do have a look on the website because there's lots more of these lights. These have got um, 25 different settings on them, so definitely, and I love the gooseneck, look at that. Um, so definitely going to have a light setting for you. Clearer, easier sewing to, as, as we said, literally lighten up your life in 2021. I'll see you in a minute. Hi there. My name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello everyone, my name's Cara Ackman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire 
then went down to Hampshire, and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those, I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance, and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles, so embroidery, cross-stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new, and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it, and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. I'm troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it, you spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business, it was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike and they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hello, welcome back again. I know we've got something new and exciting for you in this hour because we've got a brand new sewing machine and we have exclusives purely to Sewing Street because we're very special. Uh, we're very demanding, actually, that's, that's why we do it. So Jane's going to be with us in just a second. Um, 
And you know, with sewing machines, they, they're they so difficult to get hold of at the moment. It's so wonderful wonderful to be able to have a worldwide launch to start with, exclusivity for another one, great prices for another one, and three in the show, which is, is amazing. Um, as I said, Jane's with me, so I think we should, should pop over straight away. Hello, good morning. Is it morning still just, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah. Oh, we've got think, another hour yeah, of morning. Just morning, yes. yes. Good morning. Yeah, it's lovely to be back with actually some sewing machines I for know, change. I know, yes. I was saying earlier on, mm. that you can't get hold of sewing machines. You can't. Moment. It's been an absolute nightmare, yeah. and, and all the supplies are delayed everything so it has been so we're lucky we've got some um yeah. the 720 i know is back in because i know some ladies have already bought it <laughs> so i wouldn't leave it too long because we haven't got that many of them well thanks for bringing them to yeah. us yeah you know you must have the choice of any retailer across the country that mm -hmm. are desperate to get hold of sewing machines at the they moment. are especially the new one here this little one yeah so tell us all about it let's dive this in this one is the elna it's a 320 it's a mechanical machine right. i was sewing on it last night and it sews beautifully it's a really nice machine 21 stitches that's including the four step buttonhole um it comes with a hard case as well which is quite unusual that's for a, a machine new, at this some level some of the really expensive machines don't even have a no. hard case no Right. So it comes with a hard case. You can drop the feed on the back. Lovely. Um, so it's got a drop-in top, top bobbin on it. The feet you can switch about. Um, if you've got a, you know, an ordinary mechanical machine, you can oh, switch okay. the feet over. So yeah. So yeah. So this is going to be a great entry level machine, isn't it's it? It's a brilliant machine for somebody who's just thinking, oh, I just want to have a go and see yeah. how I go, and just starting off. And I mean, I know we're all still sewing face masks, like there's no tomorrow, <laughs> and things like that. And it's just a brilliant entry level machine for somebody to start with. But what, what I like about Elna, um, particularly, if it, th there's a lot of what you would consider to be entry level machines on the market, particularly around Christmas, mm. and you can go to supermarkets and buy them for 50 quid, and maybe that'll get you started, but after a couple of weeks of sewing, you won't be a beginner anymore. So I, I'd always advise somebody to go for a machine that's got that little bit more than you think you actually need to get yes, started. Yes, definitely. So if I, because you, you might not know what you want to do, where, where do you want your journey to start? Are you going to start making a cushion cover or a bag? then I bet before long you think, actually, I'd love to do a bit of dressmaking. You can with this because it's got all the stretch stitches on yeah. it. And also it's the quality of the machine. All our machines have got a metal subframe. A lot of the cheap machines that you can buy this time of the year don't. They're all plastic inside. So yeah. it's just, yeah. It, it, it is. I was going to say it is a case of you get what you pay for with this. It is, yes. I, I think you get more than you pay yeah, for with you this Yeah, you do. One. It is a lovely machine. This. Has it still got a two-year warranty with it? Yes. Yeah. Even all for that machines. price? Yep. And we can split yeah. the payments for you as well. So you only pay one Ooh. payment this year. Season so one. if you are thinking, right, in the new year, going to get myself sewing, I'm going to get started, I'm going to start making face masks, I'm going to start making scrubs or, you know, helping out at the local charity shop. I'm going to start recycling. I want to upcycle. Is it recycle, repurposing, upcycling? All the same thing, isn't it? Um, and take things that I've already got and change them instead of buying new, if that's something that you're really conscious of. You can't do a fat lot without a sewing machine. But... Like the quality, it, quality is really, really important. You're investing in something that's going to last you for years. Because you know, I think even my very first proper sewing machine, mm. my very own that my mum bought me when I was 16, I was, I was something like there. 30 years old before I replaced it. <laughs> yeah, they can, I've got a really time. old, it's a little L on a 620, which I've had for 10, 15 years. Yeah. And when I, when I used to work away, I used to take it with me. Yeah. And it was great to use and it's yeah. still going strong now. Yeah, my daughter use it, but this is a really nice machine. It's got a lovely, a nice, concise instruction manual with it again, as as you always expect with Elna. So that comes with it, and you've also got some extra feet, which is nice. So we've got the over edge foot, the sorry, the blind hem foot, the satin stitch foot, and the zip foot with it. The standard. So everything that you need. To so get they going, come with really? it to get started. Yeah, you've, you've got three, got four an, bobbins. You've got another spool there, so can I do twin needle sewing as well? Yeah. Yeah, you can twin needle with any machine. Spool pin, the spare one, it just pops in the top here. Lovely. Like and I've so. got spare needles and... You've got some spare needles to start you off. Bulbs. You've got the cleaning brush, the essential seam ripper, <laughs> <laughs> screwdriver, the little felt which pops on this one, and another spool cap. So you do. I, I was, so just backtracking a bit, I was really surprised that you said you could drop the feed dogs on these. It drops on the back as well. So you just slide it across straight on the back and so it's down. So many yeah. computerised machines even don't have that mm. facility. Some of them don't, no. Um, and it's normally a cost thing, isn't it? So it's yes. an extra expense that... Yeah, that the manufacturer's to got to yeah. build in with the engineering. No, they do. And you've got stitch width and a stitch length on it as well. So you've Fabulous. really got everything. So what stitches have we got? You said there were 21. We have got... Um, 
they're all on the top here. So you've got your straight stitch, you've got a needle to the left, you've got a standard zigzag, elastic zigzag, you've got blind hems, you can do a little bit of decorative as well. And then, as with a lot of these, you can turn the bottom dial. This is the stitch length here. So normally you'd be on about two, two and a half to three, it would be a standard. Um, that's for the buttonhole around there. But if you take it round to SS on the bottom here, then you can see all the dark blue stitches come into play then. Cat producer says, does SS stand for Sewing Street? Oh, it could do, yes, mm. we'll rename mm. it. It does actually stretch stitch, but we'll have <laughs> Sewing Street. I'll go for that one, it's Christopher. <laughs> well, it is exclusive. It is. This one isn't exclusive to Sewing Street. The other oh, one is, the next one is. Okay. This one isn't, no. Right. But we've secured a reasonable amount of stock for you. Good. So Good. that's the main thing. But on the bottom, you've got your stretch stitches then as well and your over edge stitches. So you have got a good basic range of stitches on here. It, and that that's kind of depicts what the machine has been designed to do, to do, doesn't it? So if you've got a stretch stitch, you're going to be talking probably garments. Yes. Um, it may be um, polo shirts for school or doing repairs on mm. things like that, certainly. Yeah. You've got a blind hem stitch on there. You've got a little one up here. Looks so like again, we're talking yeah. garments or yeah. curtain I'm making. Gonna, I'm going to open the manual. That one. And see. But there are, it's, it's a good range that, um, so you've got all the, everything's in here. So you've got your basic zigzag, your over edging, your stretch stitching, three step zigzags, um, everything like that's on here. So it's all in the manual for you. Has it got a free arm as well? Yes, that will pop off. Actually, there's a little accessory oh, box. My machine hasn't got a free arm. I do miss that. <laughs> that's a little accessory box. The oh, bo yeah. Hey, the, um, the button foot's in there that back in but it does free arm as well fabulous so that will come off and you drop the feed there's a little switch on the back there to drop the feed so if i want to do some free motion embroidery i'd need to buy a foot you I? need to buy a foot for it yeah just make sure you get the right category foot for these say so they're so new i haven't got any spec sheets for them yet so <laughs> i will have to find that out what a lovely machine i'm, I'm actually and really it's, I was when i picked up i thinking oh that's solid it's really is a yeah. solid machine that's really it's a really nice though. machine yeah Oh, should, should we see it in action? We can. I'm going to pop that out and put these out of the way. I'm going to have to turn it round to thread up. Oh, You're and the right. other thing is we do have a needle threader on this as no. well. No. Yes, which is essential when you get past a certain You've got age. a foot pressure dial on the side as well. You have, yes. Yep, so your top foot pressure. There's a lot of It's a lot of machine. That you don't yes. expect. There's a, there's a huge amount of machine on here um, for, what, um, for the cost of it. So, and it's threading up. It's quite straightforward. All the same. Let's just take these up through the side. Press the foot down. I've got a bobbin in already. As I say, I was sewing on it last night, and it's the needle threader that we take through, and that's it. Pull that through, and again, done. And that's it. So it's very straightforward to thread up. Yeah, I'm just looking at the price on the screen. Then two hundred and forty-nine pounds. Yeah. And £83 over three months, so there's no interest charge for that. So you get it home as soon as we can get it dispatched um, mm -hmm. for £83. £83 on this day in January and then £83 in, um, in February. Yeah. And then it's paid for. That's amazing. It's price. really solid, solid machine. Yeah. It's a lovely machine, so let's get this on. I'm going to pop this back onto here and take it back. And again, it's a dial turn for it. Your, I don't know if we can see if I turn it round again for you. So you've got the width dial here, five being the widest, down to one, which I'm trying to do back to front. Yep. Um, and it's things like you can do a really nice satin stitch with these and bits and pieces like that. Yes. That you can really, it's just getting to know your machine. I mean, I think this is, I know I certainly started off with a machine that didn't even have as much as this on it. No. Mine basically had a zigzag and a straight stitch. Yeah. And that was it. Oh, do you remember? Um, Mine had a buttonhole foot, but it was like a, a big grey clumpy thing with a dial on the top. Oh, well, mine wasn't that posh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think it was posh. Mine wasn't that posh. <laughs> In fact, I actually burnt it out. I was sewing along on it one day many years ago. Oh, my foot's a bit warm. There's all smoke coming out of Ooh. everything. So that wasn't very good, but it was rather old at that point. But, you know, have, have a shop around. Um, do, do it quite quickly if you plan to go for this one, because I think it's going to be a really popular machine. Mm. But put into the search bar the features that I think are extra on this machine. Drop yeah. in the feed dogs. Brilliant. Not, not, not on this level of no. machine. You don't Top normally foot pressure. Get. Yes. Is another one, and also the hard case. The hard case, yeah. definitely. Um, and the the needle threader. 
Yeah. No, not, not all, most machines will have a needle threader, no. but not all of them. And no, then even the stitch selection. You know, I've, I've seen machines of this kind of price before now that have got yeah. like four stitches. We've got 21 yeah. here, including the, the four-step buttonhole. I know. I'm just having a quick look at this because I didn't really, I didn't get these till last minute. And I just want to have a look on the page. I just want to have a look at the buttonholes, just out of curiosity. No, 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 it isn't. It's all right. It's all right. I'm curiously okay. satisfied, yeah. <laughs> the thing with the, um, the four-step buttonhole there, one-step buttonholes are great. You know, you just press a button and the, your, your, your buttonhole's pre-measured mm. and everything. But you can do endless buttonholes. You can do a six-inch buttonhole with these yes. if you want to, which yeah. a lot of people use the big, chunky buttons now. Yes. And you can get extra, there's an, there is an extra, an extra large buttonhole foot that goes with some of the bigger machines, but it's very expensive. Is it? Yeah. So you can do it yourself, you yeah. just gauge the size of the buttonhole yeah. that you want. So if you're using buttonholes maybe as a decorative feature to thread ribbon through yeah. on, a, on a cushion cover or something. Or if you're making a coat and you've got some quite big chunky buttons yeah. going on it, you yeah. can do it that way. Yeah, yeah. so there, there, are, there are bonuses for there just are. having the full so, step button. And again, right? for winding the bobbin, it's just pretty standard. That comes across and just pop, pop the end out. And, and that disengages the gears, does, doesn't yeah, it? Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm back in, I'm back in. It's so easy. Oh, uh, but you know, impressive as well. If they, if we ever do get chance to go to workshops and classes next year, and you turn up with an Elna, yeah, who's going to think you've only spent two hundred and fifty quid on there? Not for something with this many features no, on it. No, no, not at all. It's got some fabulous features. So, is it quiet? It is. Let me just find where have we gone. I know I have a foot pedal somewhere. It's probably in Coventry. They, they tend to. They tend to sort of <laughs> slide to around on here. So I'm just going to pop that round a little bit if I can, just so I am. Um, I'm going to pop. The that in to start. We're on one, we're on stitch length. We'll put it up to about two and a half. Oh so we are. So again, in because you don't have the needle up down on, on these on these machines, but I think it's Oh that's nice, Jane. Something you get used to. It does, it does some lovely, it's really, really quiet. That's quick. Yep. Wow, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lovely machine. Yeah, somewhere out. This is up, and we've got the cutter on the side as per usual. But it is a really nice machine. Yeah. It's quiet. It's very easy to use. It's quite. It's say for if you're beginning, or if you want thinking, oh, I want a workshop machine. Yeah. Say when we can get back to doing workshops, or you're buying it for, I don't know, a daughter, a, a friend, anybody who's just starting. It's yeah. absolutely ideal. Yeah. And for teaching um, kids to sew as well. Yeah. You know, maybe. <laughs> Maybe like, like me as grandma, I've got a rather expensive sewing machine. I did actually buy a little cheap machine for the kids to learn how to sew mm. on. And it's not going to last them very long. Um, but this one, if because you'd, you'd be amazed actually, the number of people that I speak to or that you know messaging and email mm. in that have ten-year-olds that are dressmaking. Oh yes, or I they're know. quilting, yeah. and they're, they're really impressive. Um, so by the time that ten-year-old is sixteen, or maybe studying needlecraft at school, if yeah. they do that, they've still got a really good. He or she's still going to be using the same. Yeah. same My same grandson machine. is fascinated by it, and he's six. So I think after Christmas we'll start him off slowly doing something. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that with my oldest granddaughter, she's five. Um, my son sent a picture of a dress that she'd made for one of her Barbie dolls mm. out of paper and sellotape. And he says, I think it's about time you started teaching her to sew. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how to start, you know, because they, they, don't, they don't have any preconceived ideas about it, do they? They no. just want to make something. Yeah. Whereas we just faff around for hours at times. I know I do, because yeah, I quilt, especially choosing fabric and things. Whereas the, the youngsters, they just straight in, they don't think twice yeah. about it. Yeah. And it's a wonderful mm. craft to encourage kids to mm. do. Because it, sewing's more than a craft. It's a necessity. It is, I think. You're taking yeah. up, you're repairing, you're mending, you're mm -hmm. letting in, you're, you're replacing zips, yeah. you're saving yourself a lot of money. And that's mm. just that's not being creative. No, it's that's not. It's just doing basics. And if that's all you want for this machine, something like this is perfect for it. Just turning yeah. up a pair of trousers, running up a cushion cover or yeah. basic curtains, or even not basic curtains, just running up curtains. Yeah. You know, starting off dressmaking and bag making, just to see how you go and how you're going to enjoy yeah. it. One, one of my neighbours' um, little girls came round, um, I think she's, she's about 10 or 11, um, came and knocked on the door a few weeks ago and she said, um, she, I've got a problem with my sewing machine and all the thread had knotted up underneath mm. it. So I went round and had a look and she'd actually got the tension on zero, so that, that's yeah. what it was. Mm. Um, but she, s she sent me a picture of what she'd actually been making mm. and she'd been making, she'd been making over her bedroom basically. Yeah. 
uh, cushion covers, throws. They mm. they really looked uh, you know amazing. Yeah. They do. Um, but that's the, the scenario is saying like that, that that same machine that she got, which is a good brand, was is going to be lasting her until she's well. It's going to take them through into their teenage yeah. years. You say if they're doing textiles for GCSEs or yeah. um, A levels, whatever, that, that machine will take them through, and it's portable as well. It's yeah. easy enough to carry, especially with a hard case. Yeah. Oh, if you've got any questions, come and ask them. You know, if there's anything that that we're not covering or, you know, the, the, mm. something that you specifically want to know, will it sew through denim maybe? Um, then come and let us know. You can email us, which is studio at, sewing, studio at sewingstreet.com. Um, or you can come through on Facebook, but it's taken me for a while because it's not working very well at the moment. Um, but, yeah, if you go to the... Um, oh, a cracking machine, both retro and modern at the same time, says oh. Anka. Oh, um, yeah, come, come and ask the question, anything that yeah. you're thinking of. So will it sew through heavier fabrics like denim? It should do. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fold. This is just the felt I always use with a stabiliser on the back. So if I sew it two, how many layers should we go? Should we go four, six? We've got six here. One, two, three. We've got four here. So let's just pop that, pop that down. I'm going to pop the needle in. And... Um, Absolutely no problem whatsoever. <laughs> it's a breeze. It just it doesn't even sound like it's struggling, does it? <laughs> you know, sometimes you get some of the machines, and once you start doing anything more than a couple of layers, you can hear them almost going, "Oh no, I'm not going to make it." Yeah. But that is just straight through, no problem whatsoever. Well, certainly a machine of that kind of yeah. price point, you would expect it to struggle. Yeah, it doesn't at all. You can hear it; it doesn't make any difference to it whatsoever. No. It will just take it through. Well, if it's going to cope with fabric like that, four mm. layers of felt, if you're dressmaking, if you're patchworking, yeah. it's even going making to be a like a coat or something like that with heavier weight fabric, you should yeah. be fine with it. Yeah. Oh, nice. so what are you thinking? Are you going to buy this as a gift for somebody? Is it? Are, are you, is it the first time that you're watching Sewing Street? Maybe and you think that, that I really want to get into this kind of thing. I don't have a machine yet. Um, then this is a, a great starting point. I would always, always, always recommend, no matter what brand you're going for, go for a big one. Yes. Because you get the support and you get the guarantees. You can buy the, if you know, if you need feet and things like that, you can buy the correct ones. Yeah. I've seen so many people when I used to be out and about doing workshops at various venues and they'd bought feet really cheaply and they just don't work properly. They're not yeah. right for the machine. I've seen a lady actually broke her machine using the wrong bobbin and the wrong foot on it. Um, so it's just not worth it. Yeah. It really is. And if you've already got a genome or an Elna, then your bobbins are the same. So you can just yeah. switch them around. You're not having to... Um, go out and buy all new things all the time. So the feet as well, just drop off and on and off. It's just a little button at the back. They just drop off and clip back on again. Same as all the others. The cheap little machine that I bought had got a plastic clip that you force the foot onto. I much prefer the snap No, feet. it's, um, drop that off. It's the metal, it's the foot holder, obviously, which if you're putting a walking foot on or a free motion foot, which you can get these for these machines. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then you just need to take that off. But no, it's metal and they just clip on. Do you know, I think cheap little machine is going to back go back from whence it came. Um, I tell, I'll tell you why I bought it. I couldn't find any other sewing machines. No. It's I didn't want to spend hundreds and hundreds on one. Um, it is. Um, it's just really difficult at the moment trying to get it because it's a worldwide shortage. It's not just the yeah. UK. It's yeah. everywhere. And then, of course, as everybody knows, we're having trouble with the docks at the moment. It's yeah. just then you can't get the hauliers. So it's just been... I should have been here last week with these. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. yes, but we had a bit of a delay. But we've got them all now, which is the main thing. Yeah. So absolutely brand new for yeah. you. Um, we had a question, didn't we? Who's that from? Oh, uh, a message from, from E. Goose. Oh, hello. Hi. Um, loving the show. And it's... Oh, oh, yes, I can um, see, yeah. They say they, uh, it's really nice to see. She's got, um, yeah, she's got it up here, machine. yeah. Oh, you can read that, can I'm, I can see that from here. I've got new glasses. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just no, about. I can see that. Um, added bonus of cheaper servicing. I've now upgraded another mechanical machine with a large throat. Yeah. Happy Christmas. Oh, thank you, and a happy Christmas happy to Happy Christmas you to you as well. Yeah, and it's actually used, it's a similar machine for 20 years. Oh upholstery and everything and that's what I mean it's a good solid machine yeah. if you're just starting out or you're just thinking oh I just want something I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on the machine because I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not yeah. I can guarantee that you will be using this quite a lot yeah and I so said just, just keep it clean and look after it yes Is there any particular kind of maintenance with it it's like with, with all sewing machines just keep it clean you know, make sure that you clean out around the bobbin area, take the stitch plate off and clean between the feed dogs. A lot of people never clean between the feed dogs 
Um, so your fabric won't feed? Your fabric won't <laughs> feed and they're going, it's broken, it's not working. No, no, they'll say, it's the tension. Yeah. And then you just take the top off. I've done it so many times when I used to teach and just take, usually this is very good for doing at the end of this because it's about the right side. Yes. And there's a whole big line of just solid lint that comes out of there yeah. and then miraculously it works really well after that. I use um, yeah. um, a, a paint, not a big paint, but like a little, little paint brush. painting brush yeah. um, and spin it around inside and it's like, you know when you see candy floss at the fair? Yes, and it just catches it all, doesn't it's it? It's so satisfying. Especially if you've been using fluffy fabric. Oh yes. Yes, <laughs> and it's quite nice that, yeah. But you can, the stitch plate will just unscrew and come off um, and you can lift the bobbin case out and just give it a really good clean inside and just look after it. Does it need oil, this one? You don't tend to oil machines. There's a little tiny wick in the bottom here, which is the odd drop occasionally, but these days you don't oil them. I mean, my first machines, you needed an oil tanker behind you half the time because <laughs> it was an industrial, but you're constantly oiling it yeah. all the time. But now, these, you know, they are, it's just like anything else. Just look after it, keep it clean. And it's like, you know, you know yourself when it's not sewing properly and there's nothing you can do. And again, I tend to say, I've said to so many people, if it's not, you think, well, that's not right, it's not so problem. just take it all out and re-thread it and put a new needle in. And 99% yeah. of the time, it works. We yeah. don't know why, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> so with, um, I know with servicing, you can't say you need to have your machine serviced no. at so many intervals, because I, I read somewhere that it's supposed to be after three and a half million stitches. Who's and counting? I lost the will after 10. <laughs> yeah. um, but if I don't have the machine serviced, does that invalidate the warranty? No, no. Have you still had that? No, you still got your service. It's it's for mechanical side yeah. of the warranty. It doesn't cover things like the needle threader and bobbing okay. cases because people can quite easily damage them. Yeah. So, but it is the mechanical side of it. But no, but with them, it's like I mean, just keep it clean and look after it. Yeah. No, it's just keep the case like on when you're not do using anything it. that you buy, basically. Mm. Isn't yeah. It? Whatever you get. Do you know, for your price, uh, not only have you got. A, a fabulous feature pack sewing machine. There's so many things on this machine that I wasn't expecting Jane to say because she only brought it in with her today, so we hadn't seen it before. Um, dropping the feed dogs on a machine of that price, I, I think, is amazing. So you've got lots of features that you don't expect. Even I was going to say little things, but it's quite a big thing having the hard cover as well. There are very many very expensive machines. My machine didn't come with a hard cover, and I spent over a thousand pounds on it. Which one was it? A six six hundred. No, no, mine doesn't. No. no, I've got the yeah, I've got the Elmer mm. equivalent to that, which I've had for many years, and um, I absolutely yeah. love it. The quilting queen, mine is. I've had her for <laughs> many, many years. She sits on the side. She's just set up for free motion at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> and she sits there. Yeah, which is like the predecessor to the seven twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this little one's got a hard cover, and we've split the payments for you. So all you need to pay this year is your eighty three pounds. Um, you don't have to wait until you've paid that for the third payment. You'll get it as soon as you possibly can. Um, and it'll come to you directly from Elna mm -hmm. as well. So hopefully we'll be able to get it to you quite quickly. Yeah. Um, so £83. Oh, right. No. Now, we did mention earlier on, we have a brand new and exclusive. There he is. Um, so we, we're going up a notch now, aren't we? We the are. We're going up to the 580 plus. So it looks like the 680. What's it the does? difference? Um, it's a 7 mil stitch width, the 680 is a, a 9 mil, okay. and it's not got as many features. It's still got things on it like your know, speed control, need lock down, lock stitch, automatic cut. I mean, I can plug it in and we can have a go with it in a minute. Let me move this out of the way first. Um, it also comes with the table, oh, extension right, table nice comes with it. Yeah. Um, the legs are, yeah, I didn't put them on because I'll just leave it in the studio. And it comes again, because these machines, everything sort of tucks away inside the lid now, doesn't it? So this is oh, why they don't have a stitches. hard cover that comes with the semi-rigid canvas cover. Which yeah, is I like that. Yeah. yeah, so it comes with those. So I'm just going to pop these out of the way now before we get too much stuff on here. But again, it's it's lovely. I said, I'd have play with this. I was like, you've still got your little wardrobe here to keep your feet in. <laughs> <laughs> to keep the feet in which is really handy a really nice easy screen to use i'll swap them over in a minute and plug it in um and it's little things on here like you've also you've got your alphabet as well on it oh lovely so it's things like that with them so it's just quite a different machine yeah okay we'll have a talk around it um, yeah i will switch it over just a second lovely well we've split the payments on this one for you again so three payments of 263 pounds um or 
a one-off payment of £789. That's a really good price for what you're getting. Mm. So maybe you're upgrading. Maybe you've already outgrown your mechanical machine. Um, you think, now I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go computerised. Do you know the computerised machines are probably easier to use than your basic machine? Um, so I don't know. If, you, if, if you're learning to sew, if you're an entry leveller, maybe you don't want to spend £800 on a sewing machine but you would be able to use the machine. That's the key thing. So, and the machines, of course, are there to share. So if you have an experienced sewer in your home and a brand new beginner sewer, you don't have to go out and buy a new machine for the brand new beginner sewer. This machine would be perfectly capable um, for a, a beginner sewer to learn on. Mind you, it'd be like learning to drive in a Rolls Royce. You'd never go back to your Mini. <laughs> got the slightly longer throat space on these as oh, well. So, so yeah. quilting larger items, yep. and, you know, dressmaking, yep. curtain making, absolutely perfect. Um, like James just said, it's a heavy machine. I like a heavy machine. To me, if, if I, because I like to put my foot down to the floor and I quite often sew through thick fabrics because I do a lot of bag making. So I, I, I like a heavy machine because it makes it so sturdy. And it's important to have a nice looking machine as well, isn't it? So just going back to um, um, the cars, you wouldn't buy a sports car purely because of its performance if it wasn't very nice looking, would you? <laughs> right, so this time we've got 120 stitches, right? Uh-huh, yep. Yeah. I'm going to pop the lid up now. We have in here as well, I'll get the, I've got the little stylus with this for the pad on the side. Which has, there we go. So we can use that. So yeah, so you've got a good range on here. You've got all the utility stitches, still all the basic ones. Um, straight stitches, you've got ones where you can automatically reverse lock stitch, you've got your stretch stitches, your over edge stitches, different types of buttonholes, a little eyelet, um, you've got the lock stitch and the, and the little space on there if you want to do that. Mode two then brings us all into the more, I would say, is quilting and decorative stitches, of which there uh, are some really nice ones. You've got a really good selection of applique on here. Oh, okay. You've not just got one or maybe two. There's quite a lot. You've also got the little stitches for doing the um, invisible applique. It looks right. like a tiny blind hem, which is a really nice little stitch to use. Lots and lots of decorative stitches that you'd use for quilting on here. Loads of them. And again, just some nice pretty stitches on there. Then you've got the alphabet, which is 7mm alphabet on there as so well. So it's obviously got a memory on there as well? Um, it memorises it, but it won't save it on the machine once right. you switch it off. I'm okay. going to switch us on. There we go. There we are. We should be on there. So you've got the nice straightforward keypad. It's a very similar keypad to the 680 plus. Right. Okay. It works. That's what I like with a lot of these machines. That you know, they're not. You've not got to relearn everything all the time. Um, so the keypad is really straightforward. You've got mode. We're in mode one at the moment, which is the, um, the utility. So if I wanted to stretch stitch, say so we'd go for zero eight. So I literally just pop zero eight in, and, and then that's, that's it. it. It's done. And, and the other thing this has got the features on, which I really like, is if you've been doing something or you've been in a decorative and you want to go back to a straight stitch, you can just touch the bottom here, straight, needle left, zigzag and buttonhole. And it's a, just a really quick return, so you haven't got to keep going through everything, because yeah. mostly we use straight stitches, well, yeah. I do, definitely. Um, so you've got things like that. It's also got the automatic cut on it. Um, if you activate it on here, every time you lock stitch, it will automatically cut for you. Okay. So you haven't got to, you haven't even got to press the scissor button if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't always want it to cut, so you can yeah. take it off if you want to. That's yeah. not a problem. Um, you've got your width and your length. It's a nine millimeter stitch width on here as well. And again, with the straight stitch, because we have got no width on a straight stitch, you've got a lot of neat. It goes up in five mils. This one, so you go from. It's a seven mil machine. Sorry, isn't it? Yeah. So it will go from seven mil down to zero. And it just takes it through. So you have got some really good needle positioning on there. Pop that back so it's in the centre again. It's it's so simple, isn't it? It's as easy it's as using a mobile easy phone. To use, yeah. Yeah. It probably is easier than using a mobile phone. <laughs> mine 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 baffles me, my <laughs> mobile phone most of the time. Apart from the basics. And again, we've got the little storage compartment here. Pop that out with a little tray to keep everything in. The buttonhole foot. And I'll pop through the feet that it comes with as well. So you've got your pack of needles. Can we just see these? No, all the way. There we go. Pack of needles and these. We just tip these out because again, you're getting the extra feet with it. So you have got your satin stitch foot. 
You've got open and closed chairs, so you've got two. They're really lovely for a plique. Right. You've got your blind hem foot, zip foot. The little for your rolled hems on like lingerie or lightweight fabrics. Your a different, it's an over edge foot that one. And you've also got your quarter inch quilting foot with it. I love all the extra feet, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's like a chocolate box moment, isn't it? It is, it? Ooh, yeah. What have we got in there? Yeah. And again, you've got the usual screwdrivers, cleaning brush, quick on pick. And you've got the extra spool cap pieces as well. So you've got the three of them. So you've got the large one, the one that I use with most of the threads that I use on that size cone. And these little ones are great because a lot of us use a really long, sometimes they're on cardboard cones now, like cardboard yeah. cylinders. That's the only one that pops on the other way around. That pops inside and it just holds it and stops that tangling. Yeah. Yeah, so they're really good, handy. So you get two of each with it. So that and your spare spool pin as well. So you've got all the bits and pieces that you need. And going. you've got the speed control on the front, so we can. You've use got it speed control. Yep. Yeah. We've got needle up down. We've got the lock stitch on it. Needle up down. Speed control. Manual reverse. So maybe I need to thread it up. Yeah. Again, I'm going to have to swizzle it round a little bit. All right. I've given in trying to thread these backwards. It doesn't. It never works. <laughs> Don't pop that on. It's the same. They all thread up basically the same. Again, press the foot up. And on the top of the machine, most of the machines you'll find will have a, a solid line and also a dotted line. The dotted line is for the bobbin and the solid line is for threading the needle. And it's basically thread by numbers. So you've got one, two, three, down, up, into number four, across, down, through that way. Through that way, over there, through the side. I pop the press the foot down, um, and hopefully I can move the needle, and that's it. It's threaded. I okay. love a needle thread. Oh, I'd I never do. buy a machine I, without a needle I thread. I couldn't. Needle. No, it's it's terrible. If my, if my needle, I broke my needle thread a while ago. One machine that was sitting there for oh. ages trying to get it in, and, and that's it. It's done. Absolutely done. So I'm going to pull that thread, break it through there. I'm going to. Pinch the bobbin out of the other one for this because I didn't mind a bobbin for that last night. So two seconds. No, I don't. So I think when we're saying about the previous machine and when you look at the kind of stitches and the feet that comes with the machine, you know what it's been designed to cope with. I'm seeing everything on here. Yeah. I'm seeing the patchwork and the applique and the decoration yeah. and the You've embellishments. Got all the decoratives, alphabets, everything, a nice yeah. range of buttonholes. Um, the bobbins, it's just the standard, the drop in that we normally just sits around and it's got the easy. The easy thread here, so it's round to take it off and done. My machine doesn't have that. And when well, it automatically picks it up. Sometimes if I'm free machining, I don't do that and I'll just pull the thread up as normal. But you've got the option there. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, drop the feed dog. The feed dogs drop on the side here. Let me swizzle back round again on this piece here. That's easy, so you don't have to take the accessory side. compartment off. Yep, yeah, so it's that's down, back up again. Amazing. And it's done, so it's really easy to do. The accessory box does come off, so you've got the free arm box. Obviously, you've got the table as well that goes with it. Should we see it in action? We should. Pop this on here. Pop it down. Remember, this is exclusive to us at Sewing Street for 30 days. Yep. And um, it's quite a limited stock on them as well. I, I was just thinking, you know, after the 30 days, you probably still won't be able to get hold of it anywhere anyway. No, it's it's lim very <laughs> limited. So it says bead control. You've got tortoise in the hand. It's about halfway. And again, you've got the ability on these to sew, to sew without the foot pedal so you've got your stop start button yeah always stops with the needle down except when you're doing buttonholes when it stops up um scissors it's lovely and quiet and it's quite straightforward to put the sequences together as well okay so if i want to go on to mode two which is the decorative and quilting so i'm into mode two let's come down here it also tells us what foot to use it's telling me the f foot so i'd better change it take that one off and pop this one on. There we go, and that's on. It's as easy as that to change the feet. So we're still on a seven mil. So if you've got a, a machine already, say you've got the five fifty or something, you can change the feet over. Not oh, all of them, you? most of them. This one, I'm pretty certain. Say I haven't had the spec sheets yet, but the predecessor it was a category C, which okay. is my machine at home that I've got. And um, the walking foot, you've got to get a specific category C walking foot. It's about three feet, which is different. Right. But they're easily obtainable, there's no, there's no difference in price or anything, it's just a slightly different. 
Uh, but I know, I just suppose if a foot's one, because it's one of my favourite feet. <laughs> I know the walking foot and the free motion foot slightly different, but you just make sure you get the right ones. Right. Um, so when we're coming into here now with the decoratives, so if I want, what should we put together on this one? Oh, I think we'll have a little kitten and some little hearts. So on these, I literally just need to go 86 memory. 87. Have you chosen a kitten memory. because you've just got a new kitten? I have. Just, have you seen my, you haven't seen my new kitten, have you? No. Oh, he's mad. He's so naughty. He's a little ginger and white one. <laughs> and he's, he's banned from going anywhere near the Christmas tree because he just hurls himself halfway up it. He's about 14 weeks old. Yeah. He's very sweet, but he's very naughty. What's, what, what kind is he? Is he a kind? <laughs> he's Tom, he's a little, little boy. He's just oh. ginger, ginger oh. and white. So, yeah, he's very naughty. Very naughty. <laughs> But he's lovely though. Um, so again, we've selected those. If I want to continually sew that as a new pattern, I can. But if I don't, then I will just pop a lock stitch on, which is number 89. So it literally is just key the number in and memory. And then pop the presser foot down and off we go. And it will just sew those two stitches for me. And okay. then lock off and cut. Yeah. Very intuitive, isn't it? They are so easy to use, yeah. yeah. Even putting, you know, alphabets and things, and it's just a number, memory, number, memory. And you can track back through if you want to. to um. <laughs> you weren't even looking at what you were doing then? No, we don't need to. There we go. So we've got a little kitten, some little hearts, but that you just you can just make up so many different patterns with the stitches that are on here yeah. as well. It's, it's, yeah, it's great just to play with. Yeah. Really nice machine. Well, it makes everything you're making kind of bespoke, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, morning Brenda in Kentucky, um, glows a bit behind but loving the, loving the snipper thingy moustache order one. <laughs> that was the early bird from earlier on. Don't trim your moustaches with it though, it could, it could blunt them. Um, if you've got any questions for Jane then you can email us which is studio at sewingstreet.com or you can come through on Facebook. A bit slow on Facebook today, I don't know why but it's not refreshing so I'm not, not keeping up to date with all mm. of your messages as they come through I'm afraid but send the yeah. message on there anyway because I, I think cat's on the ball in the gallery. So it, and it's important, you know, you're spending a lot of money here basically. I know it's an investment and it's going to last you a long, long time, but if there's anything at the back of your mind that you're thinking, well, actually, I mm. want to do this with the machine or I'm not sure about that, just come and ask. Yeah. And, and to be honest, Jane, the, the customer service at Elna is excellent, isn't they it? They are, yes. And if it's some queries, just come straight through to me as well. Yeah. So, yeah, something that they, they can't sort out. So, yeah. based in um, Stockport? Stockport, yeah. In Cheshire, so you've got a British-based yeah. company. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're very nice people. There isn't anybody from Elna stroke Janome that I talk about behind the back. So just very nice people. <laughs> We're a very small team and we all work very hard. So, yeah. And I mean, the girls, I must say, while I'm on here, take a chance to say the girls in sales have been fabulous. They're actually working today. So if anything comes through from you over the weekend, they can get them out tomorrow. Oh, for no, you. I, nobody's working here over the weekend. No. <laughs> they, they are. The girls are in there. I was speaking to one of them this morning. So all the, the sales girls have been fabulous. Yeah, really, really gone the extra mile to make sure the stock's going out for people. No, oh, well done. Yeah. Merry Christmas, girls. It's all appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Um, You've also got a top foot pressure on this one. As oh, well. lovely. Okay. So, yeah. so, so when would you use that? So not all machines have got that. So what, what's it actually no, for? No, it's. I, t I don't use it very often. I tend to use it maybe sometimes for applique and things like. That. It just takes off some of the pressure that's coming down on it. So maybe if I've got like really thick like faux fur and things like that, yeah. you might just have a little tweak with it. To yeah. be honest, I forget about it. Mm. That, that's one feature machine that I that very rarely use unless. I'm sewing through very fine fabrics and thinking, mm. oh, this is it's a bit, yeah. stitches are a little bit yeah. long. Um, because it, it's not automatically the first thing you think about. No, no, but very thick fabric or very yeah, fine, fine fabric, fabric can make it difference. It's ideal yeah, for doing that. It really it, it is fine. Um, tension on the top, auto tension. I very seldom touch the tension on no, the machine. There's absolutely yeah. no point. Years ago, you were forever turning it to try and get it right. But now, they're so good. Yeah. You just don't need to do it. Shearing elastic and gathering, the only times really I'd, mm. I'd touch that. Yeah. But yeah, because I was saying, in fact, I said a few times, people blame ten tension for everything. They do. And any kind of knotting of thread or tight stitches, oh, yeah. with the tension up, down, it's, up, down. And they're up, messing with it. I'm thinking, just rethread your machine. Yeah. And people don't realise if it's knotting on the back, it's the top threading that's a problem, it's vice versa. Yeah. And it's very seldom the bobbin that's a problem. Um, and again, if you want to do different sorts of stitching, I do some quite thick threads and things. Get another bobbin case so you can alter the tension on the one bobbin case. Keep, okay. keep your everyday sewing one as is. Um, 
But if you want to do, as my daughter calls it, weird things, <laughs> get a spare one. You can tweak the tension screw on it then without worrying about getting it back exactly where it was. I've got a spare case. Because it doesn't have a use. dial on it, does it? No. So I've, I've never adjusted the tension no. in the bobbin. Some people do, the... and then that can cause you problems. Just get a spare one and then yeah. keep one particularly for your sewing and then just a spare one for doing anything that's a bit bit offbeat yeah that's a yeah, good idea it really mm. is and they're very easy to change as well i say the, the tops just um we've had a question about the pattern stitches and decorative yeah. stitches can we reduce the stitch size on those? you can reduce the stitch size yeah it's worth having a play with the stitch sizes on these um some stitches look better smaller and some don't and it's just personal choice as with most things so if i want to go back here now i'm going to go back to mode back on here three four five down here mode two again so what should we select one that might to sort of illustrate it better um we'll try 81 81 so if i do a seven mil and again if you just want one pattern repeat just press the lock stitch when you start sewing that's the same for all the machines that, that's a nice idea as well because you would never you know if you're doing something like a scallop stitch yeah. you'll never stop right on no, the edge of that no. scallop no, you, need, you really do need to alter it. So that's the little, my little heart. I'm going to put one. What should we go next to it? If I go down, down to six, I think. So sometimes they look really nice, and sometimes you're thinking, oh no, I prefer it full size. Yeah. But it, you've got that option to do it. And that's, that's quite important as well because the when you see the diagram of the stitch, it doesn't. I mean, that's a diagram. It doesn't look exactly the same when yeah. you stitch it out, but it gives you an idea of the size of the stitch mm. as well, because those diagrams are tiny, and some yeah. of those stitches might be a little bit bigger. Yeah, so I've gone so. six. You can alter the, um, the length as well, but I'll just leave it for now. Is this for yourself a sampler? Yes, it's worth having a fold. I always say to people, just get a fold and just go through the stitches, alter the sizes, use some yeah. different threads to see how it works, yeah. and write on them so you know what's yes. what. Even if it goes wrong, then hopefully you won't do it again. But that's not a guarantee. Yeah, so you can see there we've got the little... It's gone down one mil. Can okay. you move to your left a little bit? To my left. There that's we it. Go. Then we, then we so can come can right see, in. That's a seven mil and that's a six mil. So it still looks lovely on the six mil. Um, and you can get lots of different... Um, attachments to go with the machines as well so that's really nice to sew on ribbons and things like that okay doc. um oh margaret lovely sunny day in bedford just pitch black when i leave well, and when you get here in the morning mm. like most of us so it's nice to know that it's sunny uh valerie says how much is it how much <laughs> is it she says i can't see because the word live is covering it um 789 pounds valerie um, or you can order on split pay, which is £263. Where's the live then? I can't see a live no, on the got screen. Live, no, we haven't got live, no. Oh, oh, you're right. Oh, yes. Oh, we can't do anything about that, can we? Not unless we're not live. <laughs> 789 yeah. um, Oh, we've, we've had a question about satin stitches. Yeah. yeah, we've got satin stitches, haven't we? We have. We've got some satin stitches on here. These ones up here, satin stitches, I'll go on to 33. 33, there we go. And you've also Joe, got... Joe's, Joe's come in, bear with him. He's <laughs> manoeuvring around and zooming in. So we've got satin stitches come up on here. Then. Here we These go. These ones here, along the top. Uh, Feel. Yeah, but you can, if you just want a straight line, and you don't particularly want that, you can obviously just use a zigzag. Close it down, narrow yes. it, widen it, which is what we all did for many, many years. We didn't have inbuilt satin stitches for a very long time. So. And can you join those together in a sequence if you wanted to? You could do. So if I put, let's, we've got 33, so let's just put memory. Um, 37. Memory. I'm going to, I always stop and think. No, 37, I'm going to have to do memory first. So you can actually mirror image some of these. Oh, I was going to ask you about that because sometimes so with, um, them, yeah. with with the different styles of, of satin mm -hmm. stitches, I wouldn't necessarily put them together. But mirror imaging the scalloped edge looks quite nice, memory, doesn't it? Yeah. Or if you do one row one way and then another row yeah, in the, the opposite way, and it like makes circles. That's better. Hooray. She's worked at last. 
I'll just pop these on here. Put three or four together. So you can, you, you know, you've got the option to, to do lots and lots of different stitches. And say a sampler folder is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Because some things, and the satin stitches look fabulous with variegated threads as well. Oh, yeah. They do look really nice. I'll just press. Oh, no, sorry. Wrong one. It's talking and not paying attention. <laughs> Morag. She fell asleep. That's not very good. <laughs> Oh, you're allowed. You've probably been up all night. Yeah. <laughs> We've got someone here. Let's just pop this on. Um, where am I going to go? I don't think I'd admit that, Morag. <laughs> <laughs> Neither would I, definitely. <laughs> Mind you, I had a little nap in the 10 o'clock hour, to be honest. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody say anything? No, <laughs> no they'll no. be fine. They'll be good here. So it is just playing with them, with the stitches. So I didn't save that one, so it's only done me one. But you can, again, with the scallops, they're really nice to use on um, on decorative edges, bits and pieces like that. And again, you can alter the density, the length, the yeah. width. So and you, you can, can cut really, around those. You can. So um, that's nice on napkins and things, things like that. Things like that, it? yeah. And, and again, just write down what your settings are on there, yeah. because I guarantee you won't remember. Well, I never remember anyway. <laughs> um, and they are, there's just so much you can do. So versatile, there's so much you can do with it. Can we have a look at the alphabet? We can. So alphabet, we're going to go into mode three, that one. Um, and then I just do the letters I always do, because I know the numbers for these after far too many years. So it's memory, memory. With the alphabet, um, again, you, it will stop. You've got spaces, you can put spaces in as well if you're doing quilt labels right. or names yeah. or name tags, anything like that, so you can do those as well. And it will automatically stop when it's done the sequence for you. So if you're, um, oh, now then we're getting down to the last 20 of the, if we haven't even got that many left now. Um, if you're, I mean, you wouldn't buy a machine like this just to put labels in school clothes. Oh, no. But it's nice to have that feature, It's got it? the option to do it, yeah. haven't you, yeah. Or, or if you're labeling nice, quilts. Yeah. Yes, yeah. do your quilt labels on there. So it's a little ABC, it's a seven mil, you've got upper and lower case as well. Um, so you can pop the spaces in. You've also got some little symbols almost on the bottom here that you can get in, like a little star, a little heart, um, equals, plus, percentage even. Oh. So we'll do that. But you can then combine it with, I'm pretty certain we can do it on this one. Say so I didn't get these till really late, so I haven't had a chance to play with them properly. So we'll put little... I put some labels once. A friend of mine was um, got married. Yeah, and uh, they had very expensive Italian shirts, and he yeah. wanted them embroidered with the names of the um, the guys who had important jobs to do, like the groom and the ushers, and yes. and mm -hmm. father of the bride, but didn't want it embroidered onto the shirts because they yeah. were very expensive Italian shirts. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually, we put ribbon on the cuffs of the shirt and embroidered the names onto the ribbon so they yeah. could take it off. And the ribbon was the same colour as the bridesmaids' dresses, yes. so it all coordinated. It all ties in, yeah. Yeah. I know people who bought machines like this and the, the big ones purely to do a family wedding because it's cheaper to do it that way. Well, you, you can monogram all the napkins yeah, individually. Really Imagine how much it. that would yeah. cost if you paid somebody yeah. to do it. Yeah, it does. And then you've still got your lovely sewing machine at the end. <laughs> yes. So I'll pop this in. I've popped a little, a little couple of bits in here. So I'm going to put in now, I want to pop in the lock stitch because if I'm coming out, um, if I'm coming out of the alphabets and pop it and using decorative stitches in there, then it will just carry on going the same. Whereas once you're in the alphabet, right. it, it won't do that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to clear that one. So we're going to memorize. So what mode are you on for this I'm one? I'm in two. I popped it into mode three still. Right. So we've got back on the alphabet. So let me just see if I've done it properly. I haven't been paying attention. We're talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. More rag was asleep. So. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be good. <laughs> And again, you've got the little line that goes under each one so you know which part of it you're embroidering. Yes. I would say always check your spelling. You can go back <laughs> through it. I think we've all had um, incidents where you've done something and you're suddenly halfway through and you know, I've missed a letter out or I've done something wrong. So that literally there is where I've just popped the little leaves on at the front and just popped the ABC on afterwards. So you can, you know, you can combine the decorative stitches with the alphabets. Yeah. 
there you can. It's, it's so. Much I, don't, I think that's so nice, particularly if you're if you're sewing gifts, but if you're sewing for children, they yes. love their names on something. Of course don't they, they do. Yes. Yeah. I've just spent the last few days putting names on towels. Have you? <laughs> yeah, embroidery, yeah, with the embroidery machine, yeah. I've got, I've been, I haven't, I haven't had time to hand make Christmas presents mm. this year. We're only buying for the kids anyway. Um, but I have handmade all of the gift packaging. So they've yes. got boxes and, and zip pouches yes, and, and drawstring bags. But I want to label them. Mm. So I thought I'd, I'd sew can, out, yes, sew out the names on the labels. Them out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do. And the children, they love things like that to keep, to put all their bits and pieces in. Yeah. Don't they? I have a yeah. grandson who's fascinated with stationery. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> if that's good or bad, but... <laughs> so he's got lots of bits and pieces that he keeps it in. Yeah. Yeah. I think, how old is he? He's six. Oh, yes. Yeah. Six. Going on about 40. Most <laughs> <laughs> the time, as they are at that age, aren't they? <laughs> so, again, with these, all these, where you've got the big foot lift at the back, you've also, on all the machines, you've got the extra high foot lift, which we often forget about. Yeah. Which is really handy if you're putting, like, a heavy quilt or a coat or something underneath it, or, like, say you were doing a wedding dress or something like that, you've got that lift to just get it smoothly underneath without yeah. dragging and catching on anything, trying to, you know, force it under to start to start doing it. So it is, it's a lovely all-round machine. Uh, bobbin winding is quite straightforward. Again, it's just across. The bobbin comes on here, press stop start, I'll put the foot pedal and off you go and it's done. And the little piece here, I don't know if we can see it, we can get there, there's a little piece there. Run away. Yeah, he's there, almost. That is actually a thread cutter. Oh, is it? Yes. Don't wind your bobbin thread through it when you're winding your bobbin, so you'll just cut <laughs> it as soon as you start winding. That's actually thread cut. It saves you having that huge, either finding the scissors or pulling it over to the other side to cut it. So that's a little thread cutter there for you. You've got the spare spool pin, so you can do the twin needles, or if you want to use it upright, some of the spools prefer that. So there's just, it's got everything you need on there. Everything has got a little storage place as well. The little stylus goes in the top. And again, we've got the little wardrobe here. We've got the pivot pin as well. Oh, so you can the pivot pin. Yep, so you can save the circles. You can also get the circular attachments for these, which I know, think most people know it's one of my favourites. I love <laughs> the circular attachment. Um, so you can get that for these as well. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you've got some in stock. I don't, I don't know if you've got any of those in stock. We, oh, we do. Oh, no, we do. Oh, oh, here we go. We do. As if by magic. <laughs> no. I just happen to have one here about. Is that the right one? Let's have a look. Yes, it is the right one. Yep, lovely. Yep. Um, so you can make some... Uh, you can sew some quite large circles with this one, can't you? Yes, you can. And with those as well, you need to check the three different ones and all the machines. And if you can get in and see how the easy set bobbin is on these with the little piece on the end. Right. That is the one for these. It's... I don't know what your part number is. I know what ours is. Ours, I remember ours because it ends in 007. <laughs> so that's the way I remember it. But um, it goes by, on the back of the packet, there's actually a little picture of the... where the... Um, yeah. bobbin cover is so it goes by that so that's so the one take the plastic bobbin case off and this and that sits in that and then it in screws in into, into here and it's really firm and that will fit all the machines that have got the this sort of easy set bobbin on it okay so all of them um and that's just i love the but again attachment. if you're not sure drop us an email and we'll pass it on to Jane and, and you'll we'll be able get to the right answer. numbers. Yeah, the right say all the, the dropping, you know, the easy set bobbins, this where you take your thread line and it will automatically cut with the piece on the end. That's the right one for those. Yeah. Okay. And they're just so nice. You can have so much fun with them. <laughs> I have seen some really impressive um, uh, projects that you've been sending in when we've featured this before. They're quilting in circles. Yeah, I've done table space. runners. I've got a, a wall hanging halfway through because you can use them to do things like reverse applique as well with the circles yeah. and overlapping circles. You can pop the straight stitch, trim back, and then use a decorative stitch to cover the edges. Oh, nice I think most people know I absolutely love those. It's <laughs> I think it's my favourite attachment. Is it? Circular. Hmm. Because it's so versatile. Yeah. Because you can do little arcs with it, everything. You don't have to do a whole circle. It's really nice on quilts, doing just half circles in corners and things like that. Ooh, pop it on your order. Put it on your Christmas to... list quickly. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the sewing machine, though, th those are the two new sewing machines that we've got for you in the show. In the next hour, we're going to be looking at one of your favourites, and in fact, one of our demonstrators' favourites here on the channel as well, which is the, um, the 680 Plus, which has been out of stock, actually, since the 12th of October. Oh. 
So, oh, and that's when we launched the split paint. long? Yeah. yeah. It yeah. did. It was split paint sold out instantly, didn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I know some of them's a couple of ladies who I must say thank you so much. I've been very patiently waiting. Their orders will have gone out already. There's two okay. or three ladies who just missed out on that, who were waiting for them. I well, spoke if, to. if you missed out previously, we've got it coming up next. Yes. Um, anything that you are ordering, please check out your baskets. We're going to have a quick break and be back to you within a couple of minutes. So that's an ideal time to go and place your order. Have a look at everything else that we've got available for you on our website, which is sewingstreet.com. Another coffee time? See you again in a couple of minutes. <laughs> if you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, my name's Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns, which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday, simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Have you heard about Yarn Lane? TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Right now then, this, this is the hour that it seems that everybody's been waiting for. Yes, the Elna 680 Plus is back in stock as from today and on split payments as well. You haven't seen it since October the 12th and we can split those payments over five months for you. So one payment now, that's, that's the last payment for this year and then January, February, March, April next year, then it's all paid for, done and dusted. This is one of our most, this is our most popular sewing machine. Um, and it's favoured not just by many of our customers and viewers out there, but by the designers that actually come into the studio as well. When they're asked which machine they want to use, this is the one that most of them go for, whether we have stock or whether we don't. Um, so if you wanted to order right now, yeah, we'll, we'll get it to you as quickly as we possibly can. Um, it's £219.80 on split pay, or you can pay all in one go if you wanted to, and that's £1,099. So Jane, why, why do people love this machine so much? What makes it so special? It's just a nice machine. <laughs> everybody <laughs> loves it. I can remember when I first ever came in when it was sewing quarter and doing the staff training and everybody just fell in love with it instantly. Yeah. It's just such a nice machine to use. It's got so much on it. 
it's just yeah <laughs> it's so close. we've got 170 stitches which is more than yes it's more it's also done. a nine millimeter stitch width so you've got the wider stitch width right you've got the slightly wider throat so i can do bigger letters well. with it you can yes we'll look at those in a bit um the screen is very similar yeah the one we've just been using but obviously there's more features so again I haven't had a chance to look at this before we started, so I'm hoping it's all, it's all present and correct. Um, so brand new spanking machine, all mm. nicely cleaned by cat this morning, Aww. sanitised and hosed down. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm looking, so it's, it's lots of little things and I will actually, I'm going to unthread this because it's, it's on with the um, spill cap, I'm going to take this out. It's on with a little spill cap pressed in, which is what a lot of people do. Um, and I've just seen this is where these little ones come in handy. Okay. Because they just that that they're designed to just pop in the end here. Right. And that holds it for you. With the smaller one, you tend if you're not careful, you will get the thread caught around it. So, but that's what the little grey ones are for. Okay. Specifically for. So we'll thread it up again in a minute. So we have to do it. Yeah. So it's just I don't know if it's got all the feet. I'm hoping it is. If not, <laughs> I've got the book here. It comes with the extension table as well. Right standard and the semi-rigid red cover which is very similar to the 580 and again we've got the little wardrobe so this seems to have the, some of the feet in the wardrobe here and they just come forward it's really handy to get the feet in and out so you're not fiddling around trying to get them in they just come <laughs> out so i love this feature on here <laughs> oh i love that and you know it's, it's, it may be a little wardrobe but it, it's like it's got narnia at the back of it it has there's just so much and it's just such a nice tidy way of storing everything and again because you've got the little diagram and the letter for the feet on the front you know exactly what you've got where yep and again you've got the pivot pin um and it comes with i'm trying to see where we've got, I don't think we've got all the feet for this to be honest. Um, I've got the little plates off the um, convertible free motion foot, but I can't see the convertible free motion foot anywhere. Okay, so it's a little clip for the tables. So I can run through, it's not going to be in there, no. So I can run through the feet that come with it. Right. Just I'll use the manual. So obviously you've got your standard presser foot, which we get with all of them. You've got the little rolled hem foot, which we saw before in the last machine. Um, you've got zip foot, you've got the satin stitch foot and the open toe satin stitch foot, you've got the blind hem foot, you've got the over edge foot, the quarter inch seam foot, you've got your free motion darning foot and you've also got the convertible free motion quilting foot. I don't know if they can, if they can pick it up with the, um, with the overhead camera because that is such a nice foot and it's, it's like £49 to buy on its own really? and it really is a lovely foot. We've got little plates here but the foot's not here. Um, if you can pick it up it's um it's this one is that the yeah. one that comes with the um like the dish shaped one as well with the quarter it does, inch markings yeah. on it yeah so you've got the you've got the round circular one which isn't here and then you've got the other two you've got the open toe and the closed toe what i love about this is you can actually alter the height of your work oh, right. so there's a little spring on the back so if you've got a really heavy quilt you can take it up so it's not dragging on it or if you do oh. something really quite quite slim, then you can lower it down so it's not bouncing everywhere. And it doesn't bounce, it glides. It's a really, really nice one to use. Oh, thank you. As if by magic. <laughs> <laughs> we have some feet. So it's that one. It's that one. But you've got the little spring on here. So what we can actually do, I'll turn that around. So what you can actually do, you can alter this and it takes the foot up and down. I didn't know that's what that was for. Yeah. Every day's a school day. It is. Yeah. And to change the bottom plate, it literally is. There's a little screw on the back here. And you just unscrew it and just pop the other one on. Right. So it's a really, really nice foot, that, for quilting. But you've got the, um, the, the, the free motion foot that we're The free motion foot, the standard well. one. Yeah. I'm not sure which one belongs where on here. This, we've got the closed toe on this one, so it's this one. Right. Okay. Yeah. We have a selection now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell them off later. <laughs> so, but that is a really nice foot to have with it. Um, you've also got the quilting bar as well, which is quite overlooked actually. Yeah. That's really handy for doing cross hatching or just evenly spacing your, your patterns if you're doing a pattern on something. Yeah. Just really even. The, the trick though is to watch the little bar, not the needle. Yes. I think we've all done it, and then suddenly you get halfway down and you've just gone a little bit wobbly. Um, the buttonhole foot is the lovely one with the plate on the bottom with a stabiliser plate which is absolutely great and that will actually come it's already in the storage box when you get your machine so we okay. haven't forgotten to put it in 
Um, so the, the plate's for thicker fabrics, The plate fabrics, is. Isn't it? If you've got thicker fabrics, or say you're trying to go over a seam, or even if you've got a really fine fabric, because it sandwiches it in between, it's feeding it all through. We are, and it's, it's on the back, so you're feeding it all through without the drag on it. So that's really handy. And again, it's a standard buttonhole foot where you pop your button in the back. But you've also got the option to alter it a little bit. So you make it a bit shorter or a bit longer with this foot as well. You've got the little, the little screws on here, so you can t use this little screw and just move the red line. So you've got that little bit more manoeuvrability with it. Yeah. Okay. You do the other one, but that's quite nice. Now, with the stitches on the machine, do we have a cat? Do we have a cat? I hope so. I'll be most disappointed if we don't. Um, I can't actually see the cat, no. Oh man, we've got lots of other things. We've got a little car, we've got a helicopter, house. I can't see a kitten on this Ooh. one, no. Oh. We've, we've had a couple of questions, or a couple of requests on Facebook from people wanting to see that cat that you stitched out. Oh, where is it? I've so just put this somewhere. I will find it in a minute. <laughs> oh, here it is. Here we go. I've just put everything behind me. So he's only very tiny, but he's a little kitten on here. Where is this one? So this is on 580. Yeah, it's so even no, got whiskers. No cat on this one. <laughs> <laughs> he's even got little oh. whiskers, so yeah. He's very lovely. sweet. But there are, there's lots of lovely patterns on here. And again, we can combine them in quite a similar way. Well, and, and any more requests, do come and let us know. <laughs> Just want your name stitched out. Yeah, we could do that. Let's pop this back on and pop the little one on. I'm just going to pop this around towards me to thread it. Right. So that we can. Have you got a knee lifter on this one as well? Um, yes, you do have an e-lift. I'll finish off game three. We're losing, we're, we're losing track, aren't we? You've also got the walking <laughs> foot with it, a quarter-inch foot. You right. all your quilting, so all your quilting feet are with it as well. Okay. So that is really nice. Again, standard Jeremy Bobbins. You've also got the button sewing foot, which is a little blue one. Is it in the little house here? No, I don't know where that one is, so it'll be around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get my hands on this one before I came on just to make sure everything was with it, but it's, they're all, they're, they'll all be with the machine. The tops, you've got the spare spool pin needles, obviously the little lint brush cleaner, screwdriver, quick on pick knee lift. Um, again, the same rigid cover. You've also got with this one, you've got your needle plate for your straight stitches. Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah. So I like that feature. I'm not sure. I'll have to turn it around a minute and have a look and see if it's in there. And it's the easy change needle plate as well. It's just little things like this, I think, that just make it such a beautiful machine yeah. to use. Because your needle plate, it just changes here. You just press that. There's a little button here. Because I'm always a little bit wary when I'm cleaning um, inside my machine that I'm going to lose those two little screws. Yes. We've put them somewhere really safe. Yes. yes. And wherever you put them really safe, they roll onto the floor. Anyway. Yes, and then you're just crawling around looking for them. <laughs> You've also got the option on this to lock the machine out. So it's not going to do anything. Just let me pop the... Are you unplugged? I'm unplugged. I haven't plugged in yet. Too but even, even locking this, I, I don't tend to lift the presser foot up. Um, I, I, I lift it up to pull the fabric over it, but it's always down. Mm. Um, I don't know whether that's a good habit or a bad habit. It's a bad habit when the dog sits on the foot pedal. Yes, yes, Particularly when I'm why. not in the room. Is somebody's using my machine? I oh, know, it's gone off on its own. Yeah. This is why this little key here is fabulous. Because we can just press that and it's locked the machine out. Nothing is going to work on it. So it's a really a handy idea. little feature yeah. to do it. So, But again, the needle so, plate. So you need to use that with your kitten? Yes, <laughs> nor the grandson actually. <laughs> the kitten hasn't found the sewing room yet, thankfully. Ooh. I'm sure he will eventually. He's only just discovered upstairs. So. Oh, what's his name? He's just, yeah, you're going to laugh now. He's called the Ginger Ninja, because that's exactly <laughs> what he is. <laughs> he just sort of stuck, and I just can't rename him now because it's stuck with him. Yeah, I'll have to find a picture for you, and we'll just stick it on Facebook or somewhere, because he's very, very sweet. I remember when, um, when my eldest lad was little, we, we had, I think he was three years old, when, I mean, he's nearly 40 now, um, when we had cats, but he, he wanted to call one of the cats Battle Cat, yeah. and the other one Cringer. I said, right, we're not having cats called Battle Cat and Cringer. When he was grown up mm. and he had a cat of his own, called it Cringer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah but this one, he just sort of stuck because he's a bit of a ninja when he gets going. He um, launches himself off everything. <laughs> but it's a very easy on here to change a stitch plate. It's just literally press that and it pops out. So we can I'm take that out from the side. So it just lifts out. So that's the, that's the standard stitch plate that we've got here. Right. The straight stitch plate lives actually in here with a little space for it. Oh, okay. It's not it, living there at the moment. 
Um, so what's the benefit of a straight stitch plate? It's not, if you didn't really find fabric, sometimes we've all had it, it takes it down in that little slot with the feed where this will stop that. Yeah, and again, it will, the machine knows when we've changed it, so it will grey out all the stitches that you can't use with it. So you're not going to damage the machine. Because the straight stitch will only have one hole for the needle to yeah, go up and down. Yeah, one in the middle, and it's got the little one on the side as well for your quarter inch. So you've still got a little bit of movement on the quarter oh, inch. Oh, okay. Yeah. You've still got some movement on there, but it's going to grey everything out. It won't let you select any stitches that are going to damage the machine, which is really handy. But they're so easy to change. I can probably see this better with the circular as well. That is the... Um, that's how your bobbin needs to look for that particular one that we had before. All oh, right. With this on with the easy thread on the side. Okay. Yeah. And again, it's really easy for cleaning now because that's out, so I can just pop the bobbin out, um, pop the bobbin case out, have a really good clean around in there. And if it's locked out, you're not going to accidentally set your yeah. fingers while it's on. And then just pop it all back together again. You do need to be quite firm with them, popping them back in. So it's in, a slight angle, firm press in the middle, and it clips back in again. Finish. So we'll pop that back on again. I'm actually going to thread this up now, so I'm just going to swivel it round a little bit towards me, so that I can. Um, Shirley's asking if I order the 680 plus, will I get it before Christmas? We can't guarantee it. No. I'm afraid. You, I mean, you, you, you're doing your best, aren't We're you? We're doing basically? our best. The girls say the girls are working today. It's when the orders get to us because we're dispatching tomorrow. And the carriers have said if we can dispatch it, if they can pick it tomorrow, it will. But I can't guarantee when the orders are going to come through to us. Yeah. We are actually closed, you know, in general, from Christmas Eve until the 4th of January. So there'll be nothing dispatched in between there. Okay. So, so no, can't guarantee, Shirley, I'm afraid. If, if you're lucky, you should be able to get it. Yeah. But, um, but if not, it'll be straight out as soon as we get back. So yeah. it's to look forward to in the new year. Yeah. So I'm just going to thread this. Again, they all thread the same. So pop it down that way. Through there. I do love these needle threaders as well, where we've got the um, little piece that pops. So it goes through the little, the little shape there. It goes over the top of the number seven here. So it goes round over the top and it just oh. sits in there. For a long time, I was taking it underneath, and it was one of my retailers, and they went, oh, What are you doing? And I went, <laughs> Do the needle. Oh, I didn't realise that, which is terrible, really. Um, and then again, straight down and threaded. And that's it. That's so simple. They really are. So I don't know what we did before we had needle threaders. I really don't. A lot of licking, squinting. Yeah. yeah. And you always used to stick your tongue out. Thread yeah, for some reason. Is that concentration? It's a bit like when you're going through a tight gap in the car and you sort of breathe in. And <laughs> <go like this. laughs> no reason. Or getting on the weighing scales and you <laughs> just breathe in. You can lose at least half a stone oh, that way. So it doesn't work ever, though. <laughs> Um, so right, so with this one, again, we've got a very similar screen. We've got more modes on this. We've got six modes. So you, again, you've got your mode one, which is basic, all your utility stitches, buttonholes. You can sew the buttons on with this machine as well. You've got a lovely load of applique, satin stitches. I want to come back to those in a minute because there's an extra feature on this machine with the satin stitches. Oh. Um, and then you've got mode two, which is I use most top row for quilting. Zero one on here, the serpent sign stitch is fabulous for quilting because it's just like a long oh, wavy yes. stitch. So if you're not confident about sewing straight lines, it's perfect. That's a good idea. Absolutely perfect for you. Um, so you've got some really, I mean, if you do crazy patchwork, a lot of these look really nice as well. Again, we've got all the decoratives. Um, we've got mode three is the seven mil alphabet and that's upper and lower case. All right. So that's both. Whereas mode six is the nine mil alphabet and that is upper case only with the numbers. Okay. So that's the difference with it. But I'm going to I'm going to go back to the satin stitches now, because I know I'll forget otherwise. On this one, I'm going to go for 77. That's it. So we've got that. Again, it's telling me the F foot, so I want to change the foot, actually. You do, it is worth popping the F foot on when it tells you. I think I've said this so many times, that um, underneath the F foot, there's a little groove, there's a little, little indent, and that allows those heavier stitches to move through more freely okay. so you get a better stitch quality. With, um, there we go, pop that on. Um, Eric is asking if it's a low shank machine. This one is oh, easy to tell you, it's a high shank. Right. The easiest way to tell your shanks is with your finger will go through one side or flat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And because I look at so many machines, you sort of get the visual after a while as well. You're thinking, oh, that's a high shank. Yeah. Or a low shank, so it will. So we're on there, so we've got that. With the satin stitches on here, I'm going to start off. Okay. I've got 
got the scissors on. We do, we've got the automatic cut on this one again, um, and we've also got the the ability on these now. So that's the standard length. So if I go into this one, there's a little elongation here, and I want to go into length two, length three. You can go up to five times the original length, and what it does, it elongates that stitch but keeps the density and the tension correct. So it doesn't this, just stretch the stitch out? No, no. It's fabulous with variegated threads. Oh. It looks really fabulous with them. And again, you can combine these. So I'm going to pop that on in a minute. So we've got, that's the standard and that's the double. And it will go up to five times the original length. I think stitch number three is about right for me, but we all vary. And it's, but again, you can combine these in a pattern sequence if you want yeah. to. There's lots you can do. Again, we can pop the automatic cut on again. We're there, so the little scissors are active now. So that's with the satin stitches. Um, again, we've got mirror image, twin needle safety setting. So if I touch that, and I'm pretty certain that was on the fiber, that's flashing, it's telling me I can't use. This works with the standard 2 mil twin needle that comes with the machine. If you're doing with a wide needle, twin needle, always check it first. I just wind it through because it's an expensive break if you yeah. break your needle. Um, some of the stitches on these, I'm trying to think which ones it would do it with on here. Let's try 67. Yeah, it's done it with this one, so I'm going to take that off, which is quite easy. So I've taken it on this one. You can see the width is 9 mil and the length is 2.5 on here, which is not going to work with a twin needle. But if you touch a twin needle safety, it drops it to 3 mil wide. So it knows oh. it's going to work. So you can still use the stitch? You can still use the stitch with yeah. a twin needle because the machine is automatically compensated for the widths of it. So, so if, you, if you didn't use that function and you chose that stitch by accident, your needle was swinging onto going to the break, front and break It's going to break your needle or your foot or both, yeah. And maybe even damage the bobbin case yeah. as well. So, yeah. It's a nice little feature on that. And it's one of those you don't use that often. I don't use it very often, so you tend to forget about it sometimes. Yeah. So that's a nice little feature. The other one I really like on these as well, which is great, is a little, it's on quite a few of the machines, a little triangle with line. It's a start over function or back to beginning. All right. So we've all done it. You've gone to the corner of something and pivoted and you're thinking, right, where's my needle going now? So if you press that, you know it's going to start at the beginning of the stitch again. It's oh. worth spending some time with your applique. Yeah. It's brilliant for cornering on applique so long as you just have a little practice first with it. So you That's get a, a new really one nice for me as yeah. well. Yeah, I'm thinking you find this on your machine. Is it? It is, yes. You must explore more. Yeah. And use a straight stitch. I think most of us do, though. <laughs> we tend not to, don't we? You just sort of, yeah. you go on there, you do what you need to do, and then you go again. Yeah. Um, without spending the time. It's why I love doing workshops, I and mean, you're probably the same, because you learn so much off the ladies and gents who come. Yes. Because you've got time to play and explore, whereas at home you just basically yeah. doing what you need to do and again we've got the same feature on this on the bottom so we can go back to straight stitch left zigzag or buttonhole so it saves you just scrolling through and scro scrolling through everything all the time to get back to where you were i'm going to pop an alphabet on which is mode three i think that's what i love because the screen is very similar yes i'm going to do the same one memory it's so quick to do these so I'm going to do that, and then this is a seven mil uppercase, and then just show the comparison with the nine mil because you wouldn't think it would make it's going to be a vast amount of difference, but it does. It's surprising right. the difference that you get with it. Turn that down a little bit. I don't normally go fast. So if I do exactly the same now, but if we can go back to straight mode six is that one, and do exactly the same. Pop that down a little bit further down and just go again. And it just makes a two millimetre difference, but it makes a huge difference on the size. So, would, would that be the same for any stitch? Can I have a seven mil zigzag stitch and a nine mil zigzag yep. stitch? You can go nine mils the maximum, but you can go right down with it. Okay. Yeah. So, say it's just you've got the stitch, but there's so many different permutations of them yeah. that you could be there forever. So, that is the difference between a seven and a nine. I haven't caught that, but we'll do that in a minute. So you can really see the size difference with the alphabet. Should I turn it round so I'm the right way up? That would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's a big difference though, you isn't don't it? Think, you don't realise the difference it makes. Yeah. I know the first time I ever saw the light mill, I'm thinking, man, it's just not going to be that much bigger, but it is, it's huge. So most machines will be seven mil, won't they? Yeah. Once you're coming up to this, it starts nine mil, and everything above this is a yeah. nine mil machine then. Oh, okay. So is mine so. nine mil as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Neither's <laughs> mine. <laughs> I think the 720s, isn't it, the new one? I haven't played with that really, I haven't had time. The 720? Mm. I'm pretty certain that's a 9mm. Is it? Mm. I don't know. It is, the new one is, yes. Mm. I've got so many same machines at home, I've not physically got room for any more. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two. I'm not telling you how many I've got, it's quite a lot. <laughs> But say with the alphabets, and again, it's brilliant for doing your name tapes. Um, I've like grabbed some book bags and things like that. With the large one, it's just more visible, and it yeah. just takes seconds to do. Yeah, it really does. Just pop them on, and then you, in theory, they come home with the same things they went with. It, it is, is nine mil on the seven twenty. It is. I thought it was. Yeah, I thought I'll just um, be, be doubly careful. And it's remembering when you get the feet and accessories for these as well. You're into category D. Oh, okay. For, for oh, the nine mil, all the nine mil feet are category D. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, Mary says, oh, hi, Mary. She says Hello. it's fantastic for lettering quilt labels. She says, a nice, nice machine, Debbie, she says. Nice machine. It is a lovely machine, this one. We do love this one. It's just got so many features on it and there's so many different ways that you can use it. Yeah. So for whatever you're doing, it's got something on there that can do it for you. Um, we actually got this back in stock yesterday. Didn't show it. Mentioned it, 10% of the stock sold out already. Mm. Um, it's so popular. Yeah. yeah. It is. And we've been waiting for this for quite a long time. Well, you said October. Yeah, yeah. October the 12th. We've it's it's it. quite the ultimate, though, isn't it? I can't. There's, I mean, I love, I love my machine, but there are a lot of things that the machine hasn't got when I start seeing machines like mm. this. I can't think of anything else you'd want to add to this one. We can upgrade you. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, one we've got stock. I, just, I feel like I'm being unfaithful to my machine. Yeah. It's terrible, isn't it? Mine sits there in the corner because I've got the big embroidery machine out at the moment. I'm just going, I'll be back soon. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But, but it is, it's a lovely machine. It's just got so many features. Say so you've got the speed control we used to, um, auto cut, need look down, lock stitch, manual reverse. A lot of these ones as well. Does it do it on this one? I don't think it does. It's just, it's just it's just going through the number of people I see when I do exhibitions and everything who don't realise that on these you've got the, the features go, oh, I'm fed up of having to hold the reverse button to go backwards and I'm going, but you've got an automatic reverse on your machine, which is zero two. In fact it's one of the things I ended up sort of putting into my demonstrations when I do the machines now because so many people don't realise they've actually got it. I'm going to slow it down a little bit and I don't know if the camera's on there. So it will automatically, maybe not that slow. So it will go back automatically for you and then come forward. And then when you get to the end of the seam, just press and let go and it'll automatically do it again. That's such a good and idea. And it just saves you so much thinking, oh gosh, I haven't done it. I'm going to have to turn around and go back and do it again. Yeah. And or, it just or on the other extreme, pressing the reverse button for too long so yeah. it reverses too many stitches. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you sew a pocket on something mm. and you just want to reverse just right a tiny little scene. bit. Yeah. Because if you go too much, it's, it's it just a lot. Yeah. But that's just enough on there. It just literally is that extra little it's three stitches. So it's just little features like that, yeah. which are on a lot of these machines, computerised ones, that we don't explore enough, do we? We're all guilty. Yeah, we're all very guilty of it. So again, um, you've got the mirror image on here, so I'm gonna pop together my favourite little sequence, which is the mode do. There we go, and it is my favourite one, this. I'm sorry I'm quicker than the machine. And Mary says they've got the same problem in the States. Trying to find out, uh, trying to find um, sewing machines everywhere seems to yeah. be sold out. Yeah, you just can't get them mm. at all at the minute. It's just been, it's been, it's just been, yeah, it's been great because so many, we've got so many new people sewing under yeah. horrible circumstances. But equally, we just can't get sewing machines quickly yeah. enough. Yeah. So it's the same with ovens. Is it? Yes. Oh, all right then. <laughs> It's taken months to get my new kitchen. I haven't got a new oven. Can't Don't get you. one for love no money. Oh, it's building supplies as well. Mm. Yeah. It's building supplies. Uh, bikes, push bikes is another one. Everybody started cycling really? again, haven't they? Yeah, my daughter ended up buying a second hand one because she just couldn't get one. I think it was like an eight month wait for one. Crazy, so isn't it? She did. Skirting board we can't get hold of. Oh, it's no. 
I mean, forget toilet rolls, they're in abundance <laughs> these days. Yeah, toilet rolls are past the fine now. <laughs> you can't. But it is a lot of the building supplies as well, yeah. Yeah, I've just got se several yeah. pallets of roof tiles on my front garden at the moment because they can't get them after these have gone. But it's, it's so... Uh, it's amazing, actually, isn't it? When you think in this kind of situation, the first things we're going to run out of, you wouldn't think, well, we're sewing machines, ovens, I think because so materials. many people thinking, you know, I'm, I'm at home, I've got to stay at home, and even not just working at home, whatever, you've got more time, you can't go, you can't go out shopping like we used to, mm. really, can we, or to restaurants and places like that. So the sewing machine comes out. Yeah. And they start, and people, you, I think you rekindle your love of sewing then, yeah. don't you, and crafting, it's, yeah. yeah. So who was it who bought hers yesterday? Julie, congratulations. Congratulations. You, you are going to love it. Lots of fun with it. I'm <laughs> going to start this with my little favourite sequence. So yeah, it is. I say it's just been quite difficult trying to get the stock yeah. back in. I just thank everybody for being so patient with us. Um, and I think we're having the ports are having problems now as well, aren't they? Mm. So it's good. It, was, uh, it is the same for everything, same with, and the ports particularly, that, that was something I didn't think about. I had a, a fabric range out a couple of months ago, mm. and apparently it had been from Britain to Denmark about four times before they yes. let it in the country. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it is, and then when it gets in the country, there's not always the hauliers available to yeah. take it wherever, so it's just very difficult for everything yeah. at the moment. Because they're, they're busy hauling sewing machines around the Yes, country. that's what it is. <laughs> But that's my favourite little sequence on these. I use this so much. It's such a lovely little sequence. You've just got the little scissors, cotton reel and needles. So you can just pop. It's just so easy to pop everything together. Yeah. And just do them and use those. Yeah, like those. You said about rekindling mm. the love of sewing as well. I, I, for a while, actually, we've had so many messages from people saying, I'm coming back to sewing. Mm. And I think now, particularly, there's so many people that learned to sew a long time ago. Things are so different now. I mean, yes. machines weren't like this. Oh, gosh, I no, they weren't. I used to hate sewing at school. Oh, I did. I, I dropped it. We always had scary stuff. sewing teachers as well, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I certainly did. Yeah. They did. They, they, they were scary back in those days. The number of people that say, you know, I, it, it put me off. It did. I was it wrapped pick. over the knuckles of the ruler. Yeah, constantly on pick everything. <laughs> but, thank came. but they have, they've come on so far now and they make yeah. it a pleasure to sew. Yeah. And it's like everything, once you sort of are using a machine at this level, you wonder why. It's like everything, isn't it? You think, oh gosh, I wish I'd done that years ago. Yeah. I would never have one without an automatic cut on it. I've had it on my machine for probably nearly 20 years now. And I would never contemplate not having it. It's quite a shock to the system when I haven't got it now. <laughs> and it's just little things that you, you take for granted, yeah. isn't it? That you just think, oh, no, that's nice. I'm used to that. And, and these aren't things that take away the skill of sewing. No, not at all. They just help to give you a more professional finish, make it easier. And they make it easier for you. You're not, it's like buttonholes. I used to, making four-step buttonholes originally, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I don't like doing this. I'd practice and they'd be perfect. But the minute I went to do it on whatever I was making, I'd mess it up. Yeah. Whereas with these buttonholes now, you don't. Because yeah. you're going to get the same every single time yeah. with them. So, yeah, there's lots of little things, a lot of features on these that, uh, that make it really nice for us. Um, I'm trying to think, we've, we've, had a, we've had a question, what are the white plastic bits for? From who is that, sorry? A collector in Kent, what are the white plastic bits? Which one? Don't know which white plastic bits you these, mean. These. Is it those ones? Is it these? The spool holders. The spool, spool, spool caps. caps. So they go on the end of the spool. They go on to hold the spool in place oh, here. So we've place. got the little grey one on at the moment. Okay, if, they, if that's not what you meant, collector in Kent, come back just, and yeah, just let message. us know and we'll go through it. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to think, all the bits and pieces on here, we've got so many things that we can do. So I'm going through some of the stitches as well. Um, well, you've got the little dotted squares like this. That's the space. So if you want to space out your stitches, you can. Um, lock stitch. As a rule of thumb, I always sort of go with, if you've got a lock stitch in the mode that you're using and you're putting the sequence together, make sure you pop the lock stitch on the end because that will stop it continually going, unless yeah. you want it to make a continual new pattern. So they will go things like that. The stitches on here, it shows us the only stitches that we can do with a straight stitch needle plate on there. So it's quite quite a limited amount, but then it just goes there. It just protects the machine then so it won't let you do anything that you shouldn't with it. Um, let me have a little, a little look through. You've also got your piecing stitch here, which 
a lot of us forget about, I certainly do. Um, on the piecing stitch for patchwork, you've got a quarter inch and a seven mil, because a lot of the stuff's metric now. All right. Quite a lot of the new, newer stuff is metric. Oh. Yeah. The piecing, so seven mils the equivalent. I'm personally, I'm still a quarter of an inch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, go from, I can't visualise millimetres at all. No, I'm not very good in millimetres, but I buy, I buy fabric in metres. Yes, that makes we get sense. a little bit more, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you buy it in metres and then measure it in inches. It's yeah, a bit course, odd, isn't yeah. it? It's, I've it's got like friends multilingual. Who, don't, who don't understand why we chop it up and sew it back together again. <laughs> it's because we can. <laughs> So you've got those, so your piecing stitches, you've got a quarter inch and a seven mil. Um, and the stretch stitch here, this one's zero nine. I actually use it if I want some, some like top stitching that's really going to pop out, because it does you a triple stitch. So let's go back onto here, I'll go back onto zero nine, back here. I like a triple stitch if I'm um, turning up jeans. Mm, I say I love it if I'm top stitching, doing something decorative, mm. because it does that triple stitch so it pops out a lot more yeah. than you would with a single straight stitch. It's just a bit more of a feature. I think it up a little bit and keep it going. Oh, the, the plastic bit is Annie Kench, is that, that is what she meant. Um, but you've got the different sizes to fit the different You've got three different size sizes, of reels. yeah. So, and again, just make sure that you sort of coordinate them with your, with your reel size. I tend to use a lot of this size reels. Yeah. So that's the one for those. It stops okay. the thread getting jammed and caught. And if you're using the fatter ones, then there's a bigger one. And that for it. Oh, I'm stealing it now. That's not good, is it? The short. Um, I said the little grey ones are ideal for that one that I just showed you that we've got on here now. But we can see here where you've got the heavier stitch now. And it does make a massive difference yeah. for decorative. I yeah. just like little zip up bags with different stitches on. And in between each one, I've used that in metallics just to. Oh, that's nice. Just idea. Fit it up. Yeah. 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 So it's just this, it's play with it again. It's like all your machines, make yourself a folder. Yes. Get some bits and pieces going with it. And yeah. Just have a look. Um, we've been asked how, how many layers of fabric it'll sew through. Oh, gosh. <laughs> how many would you like to sew through? I, um, I, do, I just. Two, I can't, th unless you're. I can't unless you're doing you bags. To. So I've got yeah. one, two, or three, the, four. I've got um, five there. The seam on jeans. Where yes, you've something got really heavy. And one, then two, make three, again. Four, four. But then again, so if you do that, make sure you use your jeans needles or your top yeah. stitch needles so you are using the correct needle for the fabric that you're sewing. If you're sewing a lot of layers, I would tend to use a heavier needle. Yes. With those. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I think we've got a blue tip in, which is our standard general all purpose. So I've got extra layers here. I've got five. So I'm going to pop the needle in. Oh, no, I don't want it actually on. Pop it back onto there. There we go. Pop that in and start. And again, it's not even straining on here. It's just going through really, really easily. Um, Iona, hi Iona. Um, she says, will the machine sew through two layers of bosal and fabric easily? Like the bags Debbie makes, had problems with my machine sewing these together. Easy. I've used bosal with it and never had any problems. No. I've sewn all kinds of things. Yeah with it but it's just gone through there so easily stitch is fine on the back as well it's not distorted and it's just gone straight through that's five yeah. layers that's felt with a stabilizer on the back as well we've got five layers of felt and five layers of stabilizer <laughs> and it just you can hear the machines not even straining no at all it's just going through it so that is good they are it's a really robust machine it's such a good all-round machine I think that's why it's so popular yeah and it's fast as well, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to go at full speed if you don't want to. No. I, I like to. I tend to, if I'm doing curtains or something with a long run of straight stitching, I'll go fast. Yeah. But normally I'm about half speed. I always think if you're doing a decorative stitch, that machine's doing a lot of work, isn't it? It's going backwards, forwards, side to side. So about half, half speed and make sure you've got the right foot on as well. Yes. Because that does make a difference and you don't always, especially if you do like going a little faster than normal. <laughs> Oh, everything's sewn fast. Oh, no. <laughs> no. It is, but it's, it's just a really good all-round machine with lots of features on it, and you get all the accessories you need. Yeah. So if you're a quilter, you've got all your quilting feet with you. You haven't got to start going out and adding on. And it can get quite expensive when you start doing that. They, you know, they start mounting up with the big quilting feet sometimes. So when they're all with the machine, yeah, it's great. Um, Vanessa wanted to know if we're going to be featuring the 570 today. Not today. 
Vanessa, but if you have a look on YouTube, um, if you go to the, oh, we've had a few about that actually. Um, if you go to the, go to YouTube, put in Sewing Street, click on the Sewing Street icon, and then go to videos, and you'll have um, a search bar. So if you just put in 570, it should take you to the, the videos that we have that feature that sewing mm. machine. That's a very popular machine as well, isn't it? I bought it for my daughter. Yeah. And uh, I want one for myself as well, but I couldn't get hold of one, so no. I pinched hers back off. That's her. fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it is. It's just been so difficult. And they sell out so quickly, the yeah. 570s, when we get them. Yeah, yeah, they really do disappear. Very, and the 560s. As well. well, all of them, the 550s, 60s and 70s, they're really nice little range of machines. There's, there's something for everybody, isn't there? There is, yeah. Bringers. Yeah, yeah. We, we start off, say, from the 320 coming up to this um, and the 720 as well. I mean, I love those machines. I've yeah. had, I think I true to those originally because I used to have industrial machines and they're the closest really domestic that you're going to get to industrial so but they are lovely there's just something about I don't know what it is with them <laughs> it's a bit like these <laughs> everybody likes uh, and again all the other thing on these as well you can open the end if you put in for cleaning so uh, what, would, what would you need to do to clean that Sometimes I, a bit worried about occasionally I things. wouldn't interfere with it, but it's just looking. And sometimes I can't always see if I've got the thread in the take-up lever properly, which is why I tend to open it mostly. Especially okay. if I've got a metallic or a bit of a tricky thread, I just need to make sure that it's actually dipped right down the front. Because if it doesn't click into the front of the take-up lever, it can jump out occasionally. And some metallics I have trouble with normally, they will slip out if you're not careful. Okay. And do it. So it's just handy to have a look. I wouldn't mess around in there too much, but it's just, you know, a bit of dust every now and then. Um, yeah. And sometimes, you know, so I think, oh, well, you know, I need to have a look and see how this is working a little bit better down the bottom where I'm threading it. So there are different reasons that you'd open it and have a look. And pop that too. You've also, we forget with these as well, the, the lighting that we've got, the extra lighting under here. You don't realise until you haven't got it what yes. a difference it makes. Yeah. It does make a massive difference with the exactly. lighting. Exactly. So it's got two bulbs under there, hasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. They've yeah, got lighting under. Oh, and it's none one near the needle. That's three. Yep. Oh. So and it's all the nice daylight LED lighting, so it's nice and bright. My old machine's got a yellow light in, and if I've got it sat next to this, I'm thinking, how did we ever see? Yeah. And also, it picks the colours up better with these as well. And here we are trying to sell you daylight lamps today. Don't no, need it with this one, do I've you? I've got one of those as well. <laughs> it helps me see even better. And I've got the light bulb in the sewing room is a daylight one as oh, well. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to that age where I need all the help I can get with, <laughs> with daylight. But um, I'm trying to, let me just have a little spin round and see. I did bring some larger felts with me, so I'm going to steal the little pivot pin, I think, because we haven't done that for Ooh. ages. Let's have, a pull. Let's have a little go with that, as long as I don't throw it on the floor. Um, you've got, in the casing, you've got two different holes here that that will sit in. Let me just find out of my little bag down here, some more. So let's have a slightly slightly larger one here. I'm not going to do massive ones. So again, you've got the two holes here. So you don't have to change the foot or anything on this, do no, you? No, I've got the correct foot on. I don't think, I think I'll need to bring it a little bit. I'm trying to think, I should have probably brought a bigger piece of felt, but I'm a bit limited because I haven't been to the office for so long. I'm a bit limited on what I've got left at home at the moment. <laughs> So I'm going to go, I'm just going to literally pop a zigzag on, I think, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, and again, I don't rush too much with these. But you can see the pin, we'll just take it round. <laughs> you know, it's the, it's like using a, a compass, isn't it? It's well, such a simple idea. It is. Well, years ago, it'd be an upside down drawing pin and masking tape, and it used to come <laughs> off the machine, and you'd get all oh sorts gosh, of issues yes. with it. I don't know if we're going to get right around the full circle, because I am a little bit short on felts at the moment at home. <laughs> I'm into the office for a year now, I don't think. Really? Mm. Yeah. Would well, like carry on, do you think? Pardon? Would like carry on? I think you'll have yeah, to go I back think to the we office. might just about make it. I'll just dive in and stop it quickly if we don't. I think we'll go around here. And it is, you, you know, you can do your lettering on there as well. Just do a little arc with the lettering. Oh, you don't yes. have to do the whole... I'll, I'll pop this in and then we'll have a little... I'll move the pin a little bit and we'll... Um, I'll do a little bit of lettering. So you can do, you know, so the, the possibilities are endless once yeah. you start thinking outside. And again, with the big circular attachment as well. 
you can make coasters with personal messages on it. I made everybody had Chris, Christmas present coasters last year. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take this out a little bit, pop that back in again, pop that back in again, and come on to. I'm going to go on to mode six. Our producer's having a moment. Oh, lettering in circles. <laughs> lettering in circles. <laughs> Never mind. Right, what, what should we spell? What should we have on here? Well, I'm just going to put Christmas on there. I was, was going to say, let's do something festive. Yeah, let's go festive. So we go 13. Um, I have to look on these now. 18. So it's just looking at the numbers under and memory. Joe Director says there's no L. Ah, uh ha, -huh, ha. Uh -huh. Very funny, very funny, Joe. See what we have to put up with. Oh, no. You can't get the staff anymore, can you? 19 memory. S is 29, memory, T is 13, memory, A is 11, memory, and oh, 29 again. Have you got a holly leaf as well we can stick in there? I haven't, no. Oh, well, I, I don't know, Jane, no cats, like no oh, holly no, leaves. What kind of machine it? is this? That's terrible. So, we're going for that. If you want to check your spelling, which I would advise, <laughs> actually, just let's make sure I've memorised that. You can use these little arrows here. If you can see, if I move it back round again, you can use these to go back through and it will take you back through. Ah. So, you can double check that you've spelt it correctly <laughs> before you start sewing. So, should we go now? I'm going to have to do it. Oh, I haven't put the presser foot down, so it won't let me do anything, which is a really nice feature. <laughs> is this going to be 9 mil? Yes, I'll put it in the 9 okay. mil. Yeah. So you could personalise, if, you, if you're, you know, you're doing the presents for coasters and things like that, you could put people's names on them. Yeah. And the year, yeah. everything like that. So it's, it's just got, there's so many possibilities with it. And I've used these where I've used a circular attachment to make coasters and I've done the straight stitch round, then cut it back and then just set it to zigzag around the edge. So it covers the edge, so you've got a really nice neat edge. Nice idea. Yeah, there's just so many different things that you can do with them. Put me back in here. Really so, again, if you've got any questions, can you email them? <laughs> <laughs> Because my iPad's, my iPad's not charging it's all, now. It's all having a moment this morning. It, it, all yeah. the technology. Oh, maybe that is doing something. Studio at SewingStreet.com. I'm going to time left though. We've got about what, 15 minutes. So on the show. there you go. Questions. You've got your Christmas set on a little arc. Oh yes. So, so that could just carry on all. The, it could carry on all the way around if you wanted it to. Um, Can't guarantee that your letters are going to meet accurately there. No, it's quite <laughs> handy to put little little symbols in between sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes it is practice to say with the attachment you can you've got a lot more manoeuvrability. The little pen pin is great, but you've got the two little pre-done holes for it. But say with that one you can just jiggle it a little bit. I'm always quite impressed when they meet correctly. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say, if you're using the circular attachment and you're doing quite a few circles, make sure that you start and finish in different places all the time. Yes. So your eyes are idea. instantly drawn to where you have, because it doesn't always meet, but it's usually pretty much there. And I tend to just leave some long tail ends and I'll thread it through to the back and you can tweak it around a little bit like that. <laughs> so it's really important not to start finishing the same place all the time, or you will automatically... Yeah. Nobody else might ever see it, but automatically, every time you look at it, you're thinking, oh, gosh, I wish I hadn't yes. done that. But it's just endless things that you can do with it. Yeah, it really is. There's just so much more than there is. So it's kind of it. any kind of... No, it's done. No. Oh, maybe. Oh. oh, we've got a bit of charge going Coming on. Back probably to take 20 again. minutes to charge up. Yeah. Um, if you've got the machine already, how are you getting on with it? It would have been a while ago since you ordered mm. it, but um, yeah, it'd be nice to know what you've been making, what did you think. And so, as uh, I, I think I'm right in saying, it's the most popular. Sewing it machine is, that yes, it's definitely your most popular sewing machine here. And when I used to get out and about to shows, I see so many ladies and guys as well who've got this machine. Yeah, yeah. Already, and they were saying they absolutely love it because yeah. it's just so versatile. And so you've got everything with it. You don't have to start going out thinking, no, I haven't got a free motion foot, or I haven't got a quarter inch foot, or I haven't got this that or the other with it so you can just start sewing and that's it it's good to go and this is the machine that John Scott's got yes it right. is no, I, right, did, there you go. I did get him to purchase one a while ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is 
it's just such a nice it's a good all-round machine you've got the extra thread space you've got really good lighting you've got the table with it you've got all the extras you've got the straight stitch plate so it's just got so many extra features with it you've got the say the seven and the nine mil alphabet two yeah. different alphabets so they are really good and i can see you've got some of my favorite feet there as well the free motion quilt, those little quarter clear view oh, quilting ones. Yes. I love those. Yes, you said yeah. before you love these. Is that the right one? Yeah. There, because you've got, the the you've got the little guides with them. Oh, yes. So you can see on the top of that packet that's on your left, you've got the 9mm on it. So that is the category D. It's on the top of the Janome. It's got 9mm right. in gold. Oh, yeah. So that is the, the one for these machines. You've got in the ditch and quarter inch with them and also if, when you get the packet if you open the card up there's all the instructions inside because it goes down to an eighth of an inch as well and the foot is oh. marked really clearly it's for stopping a quarter inch from the corner you don't have to use the guide because i know some ladies don't like the guide on the feet so they really are one of those little feet that i think you need to have one yeah. of those <laughs> really nice. so if i'm not sure what category my machine is if i've gotten home already can we, can we just give you a bell and ask yeah of course you can yeah yeah <laughs> We like to do that. So that's the Clavy Quilting Foot and Guide set. Yes. And then we've got the one for, for the B and the C. Yeah. So that would be for the 560s, 50s, 60s, 70s and all those. They are, I think it's just such a nice foot. I like the clear view on it as well. I like to be able to see through. And these just clip onto the back. They just a little they? screw on the top there because okay. they're nice new ones, those, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so I didn't want to take so it out. Allowed to take oh, them to pieces. It just clips on there. So it just screws in under the little screw and it's really easy to fit. And they just use a two-in-one foot, they're so versatile. And a lot of people like them and do toy making as well because you've got that eighth of an inch seam marking on it. Oh. So it's just really handy. So just one of those little feet that's really nice. Yes. So some little gizmos you get and you're thinking, well, it's, it's okay, but those really are one of those things that's worth having, definitely. So pop it on your order, no extra yeah. cost. We were having a chat about bobbins earlier on. We were. Oh, you've still got some of the super duper ones. The red, they, yeah. They're exclusive. Yes. You can't get those anywhere else. Oh, I didn't know that. No, oh. you can't get them anywhere else. You know I mean, it's 25. They're red, the standard Janome bobbin, so they'll get your Janomes or your Elners. Yeah. Yeah. And, and any nice Janome or Elner machine. Yeah. Except for the, it's the HD9, is, is the other one, which if you've got that, you yeah, this is a very different machine. It's a straight stitch machine. But no, all the others are fine. We're all the same. And you've got 25 in here all together. And for your fifteen pounds, and they're the red. They are. So they were special. They were special, yeah. special ones, and in a little case as well. That's really handy as well. Um, I was saying in the um, the tool show previously, the one thing I don't like about sewing is winding the bobbin up. I know, and I hate it. What, one of my pet hates when I used to teach is people who've got six colours on one bobbin. And I'm thinking, oh, oh no, don't no. just get some more bobbins because you don't want to throw your thread away, obviously. But if you've got plenty of bobbins, I've got loads. And so you just pop it in and they've always got spare ones yeah. as well. And you can just go back to it and use it when you want. But if you're winding different colours on a bobbin, at some point you're going to have to take them off. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got three or four colours, the one that you want is going to be the first one that you of can't get to. Of course it is. Yeah. You've got to, to take them off. But that is really <laughs> handy because it's a nice little case as well. It's, yes. Again, it's a nice little gift, isn't it? Lovely. Yeah. Um, and only fifteen pounds. Um, doesn't look like we're going to have very, very many of those left for very much longer. Um, if you're purchasing your sewing machine, then definitely put those onto your order. It's only an extra fifteen pounds. Oh, I think we might. I think we might be back in business. Um, we have needles for you as well. So the purple tip needles. What? what what's the purple tip? They're magic. <laughs> <laughs> These are the Harry Potter needles. They, they certainly are. They are. They're a slight cobra flare on the tip. Um, and they just, if you've got anything tricky or difficult, a lot of the people who make bags and the heavier stuff absolutely love purple tip needles. Oh, really? Yeah. Right, must, must try those yes, as well. Have try some. Another yeah. one for the list. Yeah. They and really are brilliant. The blue is the general all purpose needle. Yeah. Um, apparently, we need some more of these for our machine, Jane. We're running out. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, and we need some overlocking needles as well. I'll have to drop some in. Yeah, lovely, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> right just, just get the, the shopping list in. Drop that in while I think yeah. about it. Yes, yeah. we've, we've only I, got one I didn't bring my big bag today because normally I've got some in there I could have left, but I'll drop some in in the week. <laughs> But we they are safe. But say the purple needles are fabulous. I do quite a bit of computerised machine embroidery and I was doing some really heavy stuff and it, it was okay. 
but I thought the quality's not quite what it should be and I changed to one of those and it was just, it made such a difference. I didn't realise how important um, using the right needle was until it recently, is. to be honest, because when I mean, mum, mum taught me to sew, mm. I don't even know what that needle was. And I'm or sure it had been, been there. 10 years. Uh, only 10 years. I've had people <laughs> go, I've had it for 30 years, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. As it goes bang, bang, bang <laughs> yeah. through the fabric. Yeah, But um, it is, especially if you're doing stretchy fabrics yeah. and things like that, you need your ballpoint, your stretch needles. That, but the way that the needles have been designed, mm. the, the, having the right needle, it's not a gimmick. No, it isn't, no. They're, no. they're, they're very, I mean, they're you, can't, quite specific, you can't see yeah. without looking under magnifying glass, no. but the size of the eye, the shape mm. of the point, yeah. um, the way that it's got a groove down the front to help the thread yeah, to help go, it go through. through. There's and, yeah. a lot gone into these. There is. I say, the blue tip, the ones I use, tend to use for general sewing. I don't know if you've got any red tip ones there as well. I know you stock them. Yeah, and important to change a needle. Yes, it is. It's a bit like changing the blade in your rotary cutter. Yes. You'll struggle along thinking, oh, it's okay. Then you put your new blade in. You think, ooh, I should have done that a long time yes. ago. Yes, yes, we're yeah. all guilty of doing that. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a bit of power now, but I can't find where we are. Do this every time, don't I? So I don't know if no. you've left any messages or not, don't I? We're on there somewhere. Oh, you're yeah. having a chat amongst yourselves about fabrics, are <laughs> you? you? You just carry on. More yeah, eggs drop to sleep again. Yeah. And, yeah. What have we got there? Purple tip needles. <laughs> He's gonna look, yeah. We're going on purples again, aren't they? Oh, and they're just a pack of bobbins. Just yeah. a pack of bobbins. Well, we've just got special ones. Well have yeah, special the special ones. ones. Yeah. Yes, we'll have definitely. But yeah, say, so say the them. purple tips are great. If you're doing like bags and things like that, they are really brilliant for that. I have to give those a try. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, Carol's asked if Janome needles will fit her brother in I wouldn't like to commit myself to that one. Um, probably be better they're, asking brother. Yeah, they're pretty standard. Same machine needles are pretty standard, but I would always just what your uh, manufacturer recommends yeah. to go with that. Yeah, yeah, it's the same as feet. I always recommend people to get the right feet for their yes. machine. Don't start switching around different brands of feet because they don't always work the same. No, I, I, I found that to my detriment. Mm. After having used over the years so many different sewing machines you tend to build up a collection of feet from different machines yeah um and i've I lost the zipper foot I still mm. lost the zip, zipper foot for my machine mm. i thought i've got one somewhere broken needle straight away because yeah. then the holes aren't necessarily differently right yeah. and it's worthwhile if you've got different brands of machines make sure you keep the feet separately yeah. or i you know put a little tiny blob of nail varnish or something That's on the different idea. ones so I keep all my old needles because I use them when I'm doing card and things like that. And they're in an old needle, a, a, you know, an empty needle, little box. We just put some nail varnish on it so you know you've already used them. That's a good idea. Yeah. And then if you break them when you're doing card, because card blunts needles really, really yeah. quickly and things like that. So they get another lease of life. <laughs> 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 then you can, really them, then you can throw them away. Yeah. It's just little things like that because we're all sewers and crafters and none of us like throwing, throwing things away necessarily, do we? We yeah. all like to get the most that we can out of everything. Yeah, particularly yeah. in this day and age yeah. as well. We're so very, very so. conscious of wastage yeah. these days, aren't we? Yeah, so it is. But there are, say, but say purple tip needles are the way forward. <laughs> I love them. On my shopping list then? Yes. Mm. But just take those home. They'll never notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jane says. Jane said I can take those. <laughs> oh, Kat says I will notice. Yeah. Can't get away with anything. No, I know. But I will drop you some other like, locker needles in in the week. Yeah, yeah I, I did. It took me ages to try and thread the needle on that when I was using it in, in the previous show. I hadn't mm -hmm. got a needle in it. You hadn't got a needle no, in that, it? That no, that was the problem. Well, that could have been, yeah, that would have been a slight <laughs> issue. And again, with your needle threading, sometimes you're thinking it's not quite going. Do needle up, needle down, and that will set the needle in the right place. Yeah. That's on all the machines with that feature, it will do it. Because sometimes, you've, you've inadvertently, you might have turned the, the wheel a little bit and moved it. So just make sure you're doing that yeah. so it's in the right place. So, okay, so we've got maybe two or three minutes left. Mm -hmm. So, r right at the end of the show, while well, we've still got some stock left, can you give us a very brief overview? Well, why is this machine so popular and so special? It's a beautiful machine. It's well designed. It's got packed full of features and it comes with all the accessories that you're going to need with it. So, you've got your 9mm and your 7mm stitches on, well, your 9mm, 7mm alphabet, 9mm decoratives, but again, you can alter the size on them quite easily. It comes with a nice extension table. It's got all your quilting feet. It's got the buttonhole attachment with the stabiliser plate with it. It's very, very user friendly on the screen. And it's just got so many features with it that yeah. people absolutely love. 
and you know and a simple machine to use it is it's very straightforward to yeah. use this screen is so easy to you know when you get it if you're not sure just do a couple of little basics on it and just have a little practice and i always say to people until you put your foot on the pedal or press the go nothing's going to happen you can just play with the screen yeah um, you do get the foot pedal with it i tend to use a foot pedal when i'm working at home but never when i'm doing this and again with the speed control i can have it on full but i can still control it as normal with the foot pedal so you can still slow it down with the foot pedal if you want to and then speed up again whereas if you've got it on half you can put your foot to the floor and it won't go any faster this is absolutely brilliant if you've got children like you say who want to learn to sew yeah. Because you've got the stop start and the speed control. You haven't got to worry about them reaching the foot pedal yeah. or just racing off when they do start. So you can slow it right down. Although I will warn you, they do tend to start edging it up very quickly for, <laughs> for more speed. But it's just little features like that. The automatic cut, I, would, I wouldn't be without that now. And just the whole variety of stitches. You've got the straight stitch needle plate, again, which is another lovely feature with these. If you're doing a lot of quilting or even soft furnishings, it's a really good feature. And you find fabrics as well. Yeah. So it's just and, and Joe, if you want um, some advice, so you want to talk to other like-minded people who have already got the machine, if you go to our Sewing Street fans page on Facebook and just ask the question, who's got this machine? Can I have an honest review? And you know mm. what? You are going to get an honest mm. review on that page. Um, and I can guarantee that they're going to be 100% positive from it. Yeah. When are you back is. again, Jane? Do you know? I don't know. I haven't got a clue. When they invite me. <laughs> After <laughs> Christmas, probably. Well, when we get so. more stock. <laughs> well, yes. Well, we have to see, yeah. Because I think we've got, say, the 720. I think there's some air threads back in as well. But again, they are oh. limited numbers, yeah. I know some have already gone. So I think once they go back in stock, they just yeah. go, oh, I've been waiting for that. I'll just get that now. And I think that is the thing at the moment with the stock situation, with yeah. everything. So we do our best to get as much as we can for you. But it's sometimes it's circumstances that we have got absolutely yeah. no control over. That happens. I say I should have been here last week with these, but we got delayed a week. So I was panic on Friday, thinking, "Oh gosh, please, please turn up <laughs> well, to drive to Manchester and get them. Otherwise, if they're coming late." So yeah, but they are. They're, they're such a lovely machine. They've always been the most popular machine. Yeah, always. I'm, I'm not surprised. It's a good price that. for the machine as well, and you're getting a lot of features. And even better, remember when you can split the cost into three. Um, so if you have missed out before, if you are in two, be in two minds when you've paid your first payment and this is going to be on its way to you um, because it, when, when, when they go, as you've seen, we sold out of this on the 12th of October and couldn't get it back again, um, it could go the same way again and yeah. that's not kind of pushing you into buying something. That's just being honest about yeah. what's happening with it. 20% um, of our stock has now sold out of this yeah. one. I know well. a lot of ladies and gents have been waiting for this to come back into stock. Yeah. But as I say, we are closed at, at Genomi HQ from Christmas Eve till the 4th. So, so if uh, anybody that places their order now, we can't guarantee you'll get it for Christmas, no. but we can guarantee it's going to be sent out. Yeah, we Before will Christmas. say, it was, I can't, we can't do anything until the orders physically arrive. With us. Say mm. the girls from the sales office were actually working today to try and process the orders that came in yesterday if yeah. they come through to us I don't know if they have or not so it's just one of those yeah. if we possibly can and we get the orders we would our utmost to get them out but we can't guarantee it okay. unfortunately well I've had a very uh, enjoyable and informative yes it's been lovely to see you I haven't seen you for ages I know yeah, yeah. I was going to say come back on a Sunday ne next Sunday is the only Sunday I'm not going to be here I think um, I, I took the day off or I swapped the day for a Monday so that I could spend the day with my family not going to happen no. now, is it? <laughs> but no. thank you. I'd You're very welcome. Yeah. Oh, we'll see you again okay. soon. You now. will, yeah. So, um, yeah, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I know it's Friday, isn't it? It's less than a week till Christmas. Um, show we have a look what's coming up tomorrow. Well, there we go. We have... Um, cast oh, I can't... The thing is, the screen's sideways and the light shines on it. Cassini Quilt with Wendy Orlando. Tula Pink Overload at 9 o'clock. Wendy's Puff Cushion at 10 o'clock. Workroom Tools at 11. And that's followed at 12 o'clock by Yarn Yen. Oh, Baby Blankets with, <laughs> with Baby Orlando. Oh, why does it always go wrong at this time of day? <laughs> um, so I'll see you again um, next Monday. Not on Sunday next week. So you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. You enjoy the rest of your week. You have a most wonderful Christmas and your Boxing Day. And whether you're Skyping or you're having a FaceTime Christmas or you're Zooming the rest of the family. And if you're on your own, don't forget that you can join us here on Sewing Street as well. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>